Did I make a post about this? I'll see. Oh, good. Okay, well, I'm unmuted. You guys are unmuted. YouTube says we're live. Comments are rolling, so we'll just make sure people can hear me, which it's usually like less than a minute delay, and then they let me know. How Video do I see what sound is great so far. Look at that. From a reputable man, also a moderator. <laughs> How do we see where the comments are on this thing? Uh, you can like you can uh, open up another web browser and watch it live, and then like oh, pop okay. out the comments and mute or close the video. Oh, okay. You didn't do that, did you? I always do. I just heard a repeat of ourselves. That's because there's a delay in the broadcast. Oh, okay. Yeah, and you're hearing us oh, previously. Yeah, this is too confusing oh. to look at this. <laughs> You should see what's <laughs> on my screen. I'll send you a picture. Okay, now we uh, I lost the software that we're using. I don't know where it is. I have like 1,300 things open on this video computer. Video is it. Well, your video should improve. I mean, sometimes because it's like instantaneous streaming, YouTube starts you off as standard def. Like they have that whole algorithm that computes, you know, video stability and quality. And sometimes it's just a jackass and you have to click high definition anyway. All right, kids. I mean, I think everybody knows the drill that's tuning in, but we're going to introduce Devin, uh, HCR Innovations, race car wire guy, YouTube extraordinaire, too... race car. Is that better? That's better. Yeah, it's better. Okay. The front light. And then uh, we got Joe Simpson, Tempest Racing, uh, fabricator tuner, uh, likes to watch Bob Ross in his spare time to relax. <laughs> Don't we all? Yes. All right. Yes. So we, very much, yeah. Did you want to, if you guys didn't know, uh, Joe has an entire online class course that you can go on and learn about Holly. And Devin has a wiring business that you can drop off your car and get it wired. Uh, you can buy stuff off of their webpage. And then also Devin does classes in person with Pete Harrell. Am I say that right? Yep. Is that how you say his last name? I think so. Yeah, that's what it looks like anyway. <laughs> Harold? Harold? Yeah. yeah. So you guys do in-person classes with like methanol cars and cool things like that. Yep. So, yep. And then uh, we do, and then I do like another class at my shop here, which is just like kind of like a basic intro, you know, how to turn on your computer. It's not that basic, but you know what I mean? Yeah. You know, just how to, how to kind of work our way uh, around um, Holly Software. Yeah, bottom up kind of yeah. thing. And yep. uh, Devin won what was it sick week drag week there's so many um, excuse my ignorance six summer it was the six last summer. one we just did yeah and that's it when was, you were on yeah. a pro yeah we were on a 28 pro bracket it was the um it's like out in the middle of nowhere so like there's states that i didn't even know people lived in like iowa there's people there uh <laughs> the only I, reason no I know what iowa is is because slipknot is from there Oh, well, I didn't even know. And the only but, uh, reason they're so mad is because there's nothing there. I think I'm yeah. totally wrong. I'm making all that up. It might be real. It might be wrong. They have a song called Iowa, so I made that yeah. story up. <laughs> the uh, No, we, we did Six Summer. It started off in like, um, shit, in Illinois. Yeah, Illinois. And then went to Wisconsin and then went to Iowa and then back to Illinois. It was like, I think it was right around like 875 miles, five Jeez. days. Yeah. Uh, we went uh, best mile an hour at 218.5. Flying. And, and uh, best ET is 674. The last thing I've seen in person that went that fast was Matt Lyle's probe at Nopi yeah. Nationals in like 2004. I remember that. It yeah. went like 224 or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep, and now we got cars out there today that are driving around going that fast. Yeah, they, well, and everyone was like, thing. "How's that physically possible to go 224 here now?" Uh, how, Joe, would you ask you ask what gear? Yeah, what were your gear? Like, how miserable is it driving it when you're you're driving to and from the tracks? Uh, it's not bad. It's got a close ratio of three speed. So, like, first gear is 177, but the rear gear is a 340. So, uh, okay. when you drive it on the road, it's got a 29 inch tall tire. Um, oh, your road tires taller. Yeah. It's not terrible. Yeah. Um, it's like 29 and a half, 30 inches. So it's really not too bad. Like even with the trailer, it's, it's not too terrible, but, um, the converter is real tight. You know what I mean? Like it's, yeah. you know, it, what's like well, a comfortable know, cruising speed. 
Oh, uh, like 54 to 56 miles an hour is pretty much where you want to be. And it's yeah. not because the engine and all that stuff isn't happy. It's because you're in a Fox body pulling an 1800 pound trailer. Yeah. And 70, um, 70 isn't on the menu. <laughs> oh, you can go 70. It's just that you won't want to. That's what I like, mean. Yeah. Yeah. It's like very white knuckle. And that's uh, like when you're like, I want to get the uh, shitty fish at a diner. And they're like, no, you don't. No, you don't. No, <laughs> no. no. The tilapia. Yesterday's yeah. tilapia <laughs> in the microwave, yeah. please. It's uh yeah. So like pulling out from a stop sign ain't bad. You know, hills aren't bad. It's just, you know, with, with like my car, you just kind of have to be um, not in a rush, you know? So um but it does well, yeah, you don't have trailer brakes or anything and your trailer was like two-thirds of the way to your vehicle i think yeah the the, the trailer weighed 1850 there's no trailer brakes and the car weighs like 2950 without a driver so then you put like 600 pounds or 550 pounds of like full-size grown men in it now you're up to like 36 or 3500 pounds it's just a lot to get moving you know what i mean for like a sports it's essentially a tractor trailer. You have to plan out your goes and stops with some thought. Yeah, it's uh, the the worst part about it, honestly, is like the manual steering and then trying to back in somewhere. Well, like, have you ever cool. driven like a yeah. have you ever driven like a friggin' lawnmower with a little mini trailer on it? Yeah, <laughs> actually, all the time. <laughs> right. Well, it's difficult to do, but you can turn real easy. So, like, it's now like my Kia. Yourself, yeah, like now, put yourself in a Mustang and try to do that. It sucks. Yeah. Yeah, so, with a spool. I mean, I have a Kia yeah. Soul and I have that. Well, both of my Kias have hitches. And I've always, I think since 2006, had a trailer for my Kias. Actually, yeah. back then I had a Ford Taurus and I would tow my Booza and my 636 to like Atco and stuff like that. And oh, then I, I got the Kia. That well. What's that? Yeah. I remember that. But yeah, my 636 and my I bought a Gen 1 that I someone crashed into a wall and I bought from A1 Towing. Like with uh, most of the parts in a five gallon bucket. Yep. Yep. I remember that. I remember I remember the pictures of that with the five gallon bucket. That was a long time ago. <laughs> I bought so. a frame from a guy in Philly with no VIN. Imagine that. You're shitting me. No, yeah. My frame <laughs> was so the neck was ripped off the top of my frame. Cause the forks hit and it just peeled the top of the frame open like this. Really? Yeah, I was like, man, that was a hell of a hit. Sorry, yeah, that would be cool. I want to do that in my Fairmont when it stops being such a expletive deleted to me. Uh, well, I have I'll tell a you power this. steering uh, column, a power column. Well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I think that the uh, the drag and drive stuff, I think, is, is, in my opinion, the coolest type of racing you can do. And um, you know what I mean? Like, because like you spend all this money on these cars and then you never get to use them. You know, no, exactly. I always, I rant about that on my soapbox. I'm like, cool yeah. car. It's like uh, having a Porsche when you are one of those idiots that drinks wine and waxes it, <laughs> stares but, at it. That's cool. It's cool. It's a car that doesn't move. It's a good idea. Yeah. My, my hope is that it grows uh, exponentially in the near future. Like I like the drag and drive stuff. The people are really cool. Um, the uh the community of it is like like the mindset of it's like a lot different than like what i'm used to so that's why it's exciting for me because i'm used to like uh you know everything's on the line every single pass you make you know what i mean and it's really stressful and people you know get hot-headed and tempers and blah 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 with drag and drive people are like well man i guess we could probably make another pass but i really wanted to get to the hotel and drink some beer before like it got dark from what I can tell, it looks like all the drag and drive guys are actually enjoying themselves and having fun. And then the competitive racing is like everyone is spending a whole bunch of money to be completely miserable. Yes. And, you know, hate their lives for the entire weekend. And then Monday they talk about what a great time they had when they didn't have any fun at all. Right, 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 right. right. I've it's... still never made it to one of the drag and drive things. I really want to kind of go to one and check it out. I don't even know how you do it. Like, how do you watch something like that without driving around the country looking like an idiot in some crappy car that you don't care about? Dude, it's uh, it, like, I mean, I've always wanted to do Drag Week for years. I've signed up. I missed out like four or five years in a row. Um, and uh, from like a shoulder injury and then like I almost died in a hospital and then the car broke and a whole bunch of shit. But when we finally went to Sick Week and actually like made it, you know, past day zero, um, which was earlier this year in February, like we had a blast. Like we were in Florida. We had an absolute blast. 
And I said, man, we're going to do these as many of these as we can that like I can afford to go to, you know what I mean? Like I'm going to do as much of this as I can, uh, that I can afford to do because um, I've been at racetracks for a long time. And like, I go to like deal. That, that's what, I mean, you know, it's the same deal, you know, like our lives are race cars, right. People's hobbies. And, um, and sometimes like right now I've got friends that are at the racetrack right now and I was, they wanted me to come and blah, blah, blah. And we were going to take my car, but I was like, no, we're doing this. I'm thankful that we're doing this instead of that because it's like 118% humidity outside. So like, I don't even want to go outside, but, um, but the, uh, but you go and it's like, you, you go and make some test hits and whatnot, but then like the egos get rolling around and it sucks with drag and drive shit. It's like, people make fun of it and they say like, it's just test in tune. It's like glorified test in tune, which uh, I've never heard anybody say that. Have. And I would call them, uh, <laughs> expletives. Yeah. It, well, it's a common, that's a common sentiment amongst like, the the hardcore racer oh guy. you say why does your car suck well you know to me it's like you, you can call it um you know glorified testing tune all you want but why don't you compete in it why don't you show up and make everybody look dumb then right <laughs> if it's right. that easy yeah that's what i would say well, it's it's way harder type of racing than anything else that we've ever done you know um i don't think there's anything more difficult uh, obviously some of those are more difficult than others like rocky mountain or death valley or or making yeah. you drive your car onto like the only thing more difficult would be if you've watched old school top gear and right. they did that stuff where they like had to build a wooden raft to get their car <laughs> past a part of the river to then right. drive more of the adventure that would be the you know that's the only way you could be a jerk and be like well, i i made a raft with Jeremy Clarkson for a shitty old Land Rover. Yeah. And like, to me that, that like the more people that talk like negatively about it or just, they just, they, they have, in my opinion, they have buyer's remorse. Right. Yeah. I, I say this a lot. Like people no, have buyers. Yeah, that's a hundred percent. Right. You know, they have, so like they, they've built like a $200,000 race car that they have to push to the lanes and you then can't they can't take to, it to Wawa. Right. They can't do shit with it. And then they, and then they, uh, then they see people like go out, have a good time and maybe they're not as fast as them and that's okay, but they have to do it for five days in a row. And I think that that's where a lot of the race car community misses the drag and drive world, which is, um, they, the drag and drive stuff, you have to do it like four or five days in a row. You can't just like hail Mary the thing. And then, okay, we'll throw new rods in it tomorrow morning, you know? So it just makes so much more sense to build a car that you can use for more than four seconds at a time and then have to push it everywhere and right. obviously there's a there's a place for that and some of those cars are you know I, I just at the end of the day i just think what the drag and drive stuff just has to be more fun no matter which way you look at it even if it's a full second slower than the guy that's going balls out competitive like uh, going and driving your thing around for a week and trying to be creative and come up with ways to make things work and not overheat and oh yeah uh, I, it's just I don't know if I was going to put something together, it would definitely be for that. Yeah. I mean, like, well, the thing is, is like everybody who's building a race car or who has built a race car, it all started with like a hot rod, like, right. You know what I mean? Like everybody started with like their, this is my car that I drive every day. And they're like, well, I kind of want to make it a little bit faster, you know? Exactly. And, yep. and then the race cars turn into like, the, like at us, like they spiral out of control. And, uh, and then they, they turn into this thing that like, all it is is a money pit that you don't even really enjoy. Now drag and drive kind of like takes the, like it takes the people that were like on their way to ruining their car and stops them. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And then it all, and then it takes other people that have already ruined their car and made them realize that they've ruined their car. And then they step back. You know yeah. what I mean? So to me, I think it's uh, I think it's a pretty cool deal. Um, and the, I'm telling you the man, the, the, the people in it are cool as shit. Like there's just, there's, they're way better to, um, I don't know. Everybody's just so uh, helpful. Everybody wants to help. Everybody wants to be part of something. Um, and the, the thing about like drag and drive stuff is that like, it, it doesn't really matter if you win, right? Like as dumb as that sounds, right? Cause like everybody's yeah. semi-competitive, but it doesn't matter if you win. Like the goal isn't to win. It's to make it through to, the whole thing. Right. Like show up on the last day, like yeah. under your own power, not on a rollback. You know what I mean? Like that's the goal is to just survive it. And like surviving it is the win in its own. So like if 300 people enter, 300 people can win if 300 people make it home or, you know, yeah. make it back to the racetrack that they started at. So that's my buddy, part. my buddy, Mark's like, stop yelling at us, Devin. <laughs> Am I yelling? I'm not yelling. This no, is how he, I'm talking. I know. Yeah. He's, he's feeling attacked is what he means. 
Sorry. he's feeling attacked that he has a trailer queen. And uh, oh. what's funny is uh, Goat Rope Garage, obviously another guy that does YouTube stuff, he must have done a live stream at the same time. And he's like, why is no one watching? And then he's like, oh, you guys are on. <laughs> and then he's like, I'm ending my live stream. <laughs> uh, that's funny. I don't know who he is, but uh, Goat Rope is a pretty good name. Yep. That's a pretty good name. I think he does a bunch of like drag and drive type stuff. That I don't does know. He... I know he does a lot of how to and help and stuff because I've seen a bunch of them. Oh, and, yeah. His uh... videos are just a lot of like HP tuners yeah. type stuff. But I think personally, like he like goes in it goes to a bunch of drag and drive type stuff like that's what he likes to do too oh cool yeah i don't I, I don't know anybody on youtube because like if you noticed i make youtube videos and then i never look at them again you know well, i watch like, the two of you guys' channels and that's the end of it for me for cars <laughs> really i don't yeah. i don't watch much car stuff at all yeah everyone always asks me like did you see you know so-and-so's or you should do videos like this guy or i'm like i don't even know what you're talking about man like I just yeah. turn the camera on and it is what it is. You get what you get. Right. Well, that's so, the way I am. I don't, I'm going to I'm gonna throw Cameron on later to, to ask a question. Okay. Or should I do it now? I don't Cameron, care. can you get on? Can you join now or later? I think I, I got bit cool. by a mosquito uh, that was also a shark. My like whole leg is <laughs> bleeding everywhere. <laughs> One of my friends in here, I tuned his car recently. Andrew Wordinger, he has like a 240 Volvo. Uh, my buddy Tom Weeks just did a certified cage in it, and he just completed a Drag Week event. Oh, cool. I just did a Drag and Drive. It was only a 10.0 class, but I loved it. I averaged 10.7 over four days and 1,600 miles. Matt God, tuned man. it on 93 octane, and I trapped 136 at 3,300 pounds almost every pass. That's like, like, that that's... makes me look good for a pump gas car, huh? That's that, But that's, like, that's awesome. You know what I mean? Like, that, you know... At first, like when I first, like, uh, I'll admit, like I was kind of an asshole, but like at first I was like, man, if you don't go to these drag and drive events and just try to be fucking fast and whatever, it's, it's stupid. Right. But the more and more I've learned is uh, like we put on our own event and the, the favorite class that like for me to watch is the dial your own class. As dumb as that sounds, it's like a dial in class. So it's like, you just pick a number on like whatever. Day Calvin's, one. Mo Calvin's mother did that. And like that's the coolest class to like keep an eye at, keep an eye on, in my opinion, because like our drag and drive event, the winner was point zero zero point zero zero one off their dial Damn. for the week. Yeah, like it was like point zero zero one off their dial or something. It was either point zero zero one or point zero zero zero. No, that's what it was. It was triple zero off of his dial. So he was like on his dial, but we didn't count out to the fourth digit. Like, Damn! Did everybody like give him a hug personally at the end of it, or? Well, no, <laughs> because because everybody else was like they were keeping track of what they were doing, and maybe like there was other people that were like point zero zero two off, and they were like, "There's no way anybody beat me." And then I'm yeah, like, seriously, up here, <laughs> I'm like, I'm like up here, like, oh no, you didn't, you didn't win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this like, guy in, in the ten thousandths or whatever number you were. Yeah, at. it was it was insane. Like how? What was it, and what know? was the combination in that? To to be honest with you, I don't know. If Laura was out here, she would know. I don't, oh, I don't was know. it? Would you know what kind of car it was? I think it was a Mustang. It was like a newer Mustang. Oh, okay. Well, it was a newer Mustang. I don't think there was much done to S550? it. S550. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Should it was. It was a, pretty wild. Should we do a question? You know what you, well, yeah. Sure. Uh, Explore 88 rear end has a speed sensor on the ring gear. Can this be used for a drive shaft speed sensor in Holly software? Yes, I know people that have done it. Honestly, off the top of my head, I can't remember if it's factory hall effect or VR, but it's very easy to get those. There's a company I've used them. You can even buy them in like a five pack, and you can buy them in a twin circuit board. The circuit board's like the size of your pinky nail. And you can basically heat shrink over it in line with the wiring. It's a VR two hall effect conditioner. Hmm. So it takes the wavy boy and makes it a square wave that the Holly Terminator can read. But I know I think it, I think an HP can do yeah. VR sensors directly, and a, yeah. obviously a Dominator can do VR directly. Yeah. But a Terminator cannot, so I hope that answers that guy's question. I don't like VR sensors. I hate them. They're so... Once people realize, they're like, I had to put a resistor on it. Then I had to put another resistor on it. And then I it doesn't read till 40 miles an hour. 
And then you lose like, me. Oh, you yay. lose me with. You lose me with any time I got to solder anything. Yeah. <laughs> you know it's, what I mean? Like I'm not buying it. Yeah. I don't give a shit what this thing does. I'm not soldering anything. Like it don't. It just doesn't happen. It's you know? much easier to get. Home. I'm sure you could find a comparable hall effect that just goes in the same hole right. and gives you right. a real world square wave that actually functions at all speeds. Right. How many set of plug for for newbies? How many sets of spark plugs should you bring to a tuning session? At least one whole set. What fuel? Joe? Oh, yeah. what fuel? Well, that's actually a great question. Sorry. Yeah, I don't do methanol, methanol, methanol assume, cars, let's but assume, let's just assume it's like E85. Yeah, Joe, pump, you got and, a lot pump and ethanol. I mean, at the very least, I want people to bring two spare because uh, I'll move it around and look for spark and everything else. And once we are like at the top, like 800-ish horsepower on a pump ethanol car, I want to look at the back plugs at the very least and make sure that it has faded on power on the dyno and the spark mark is in a safe place. Sometimes I, because I always pull one degree and add one or two percent of fuel in the back seven and eight. So I always, I, I, I like to look at five and seven if I can, because then I can see, you know, if the back is just soft because of the one degree or what. Mm -hmm. So, but that's it's it. a, a little bit more of a budget thing and also a little bit depending on if the, if you're there with the car, because if you can pull plugs while I'm looking through logs and all that, then we can, you know, change plugs more frequently and it depends on the power level and how hard you're pushing it. But I would say between like one and three for like the typical 800 ish horsepower car, uh, some cars are like an absolute total disaster to change plugs on so it, it doesn't make sense to sit there for three days changing plugs 100 percent true um, up and forward so on, on those yeah so sometimes on those we'll just pick maybe like the easiest cylinder or two uh, and sometimes guys just don't have money for multiple sets of plugs so then we'll take like one set and just you know, throw in the back cylinders and you know just do two yeah, and two and two accordingly two. yeah so it, it's kind of depending but i don't know i've seen guys on uh, some of the other stuff that other people do here, you know, some of the big power stuff, especially the nitrous stuff. I mean, I've seen guys go through 15 or 20 sets of plugs in a dyno session, probably a little bit excessive at that point, but yeah. you know, some of these guys, it almost seems like they enjoy spending the money, if that makes sense. So, well, especially if they just went to fuel injection with nitrous, they're used to yeah. burning it up with a carburetor. So they're like, Absolutely. wait, we don't have to put a piston in it every run. So what do we do? <laughs> Let's at least put it's, plugs. In. It's interesting too, because you can do, two cars, similar setup, similar power levels. And one of them, you pull the plugs out and they all like look great and they're easy to read. And then mm -hmm. the next car, you pull the plugs out and they just, you're like, what the hell is this? They just don't, they don't want to like look correct. So then you're like, do I see something? Do I not? And uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so. Uh oh, what is going on? Oh, uh, well, what I was going to, I was going to add to the dyno session thing. Um, I think you. I think Matt muted us. No, he's good. Okay. No, I just. Uh, what happens yeah. is my quick key mutes me on OBS. Oh, okay. It's the easiest way to make it not because I screw myself sometimes by muting both, and then I don't gotcha. remember one and the other. So I only mute OBS. So unfortunately, you guys will hear me like clacking or talking and uh, oh, okay. Jamie. But so okay. yeah, I, I muted them so they wouldn't, you know. But then unfortunately, yeah. it sounds like whatever. You know, you get it now. Uh, well, what I was going to add to the conversation about like changing plugs of the dyno, um, with alcohol cars, uh, we don't really ever chase the plug at the dyno. Like I don't, cause you don't need to, you know, like you usually just don't need to, like, unless it's like some 1200 horsepower, absolute max combination. And you're trying to find every ounce of power. Like to me, I, you know, I mean, Joe, you already know this, but like I leave them fat and like pretty pretty retarded on the dyno and then you know just run them out of turbo until they stop making power and you know um it's uh it's it's not nearly as intimidating and frightening with alcohol as most people think it is yeah. you know so but so like for me like anytime I, and most of what i do like anytime i'm on a dyno is like alcohol like big power alcohol stuff and it's literally like we'll stop it like depending on the car like maybe 1500 2000 2500 horsepower and the, the owner of the car is like, well, should we check plugs? And I'm like, no, that'd be all right. You know what I mean? Because like, 
like we'll pull one plug out and it still looks brand new and they're like oh yeah, oh I mean, that, frequently like people are like, oh yeah, my plugs are pro primarily what I do is Turbo LS, obviously. And when people are like, yeah, my plugs are probably fouled. I'm like, it is so hard to ruin like a modern NGK plug. <laughs> like even yeah. if you are have a swimming pool of fuel yeah. coming out of the pipe, like it's once you get the chamber going, the, it's they pretty much clean up, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, you're not a right. lot of the plug stuff, especially. You might, I don't know, think differently, but a lot of these big, crazy methanol injectors are so notorious for doing stupid things that a lot of the check-in of plugs is just to make sure that the cylinders you know, are cylinder working. seven isn't out to lunch. And right, you know, well, so I mean, not, I usually usually I'm looking at EGTs just to make sure that like we don't have like a ridiculous problem there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, like the EGTs will usually say, uh, "Hey, there's the problem," and then you got to look. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, like if we dump like a you know, like if it goes from like cruising at like 900 uh, degrees and it shoots up to like 1800, I'm like, oh boy, you know, maybe we'll pull that plug out. Something happened there. The big takeaway from this conversation is if you're running methanol, you need EGTs. Yes. <laughs> and it's, yeah, and they're not necessarily for tuning. They're just for diagnostic. Yeah. Yeah. I like to, I like when you fire the car up and you look at the EGTs and just make sure all of them are lit. Yeah. You know, like one could be 300 another one could be 700 and people get worried and I'm like, oh, that's fine. It can't be 300 degrees and not on fire. So, like, it's fine. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yep. You know, at idle, it's a disaster. So, uh, most of these big injectors are a total disaster at idle. So, a lot of people try to chase it and they balance it. They have no it. low pulse width resolution. I've watched guys use the dyno and, like, literally they have 50 to 75% correction in, like, one cylinder versus the other. I'm like, might as well just like unplug the injector at that point. Like, <laughs> I did at, at some point, just just accept that it is what it is. Just turn it off. Right. Yeah, make yeah. the trims right. that low load off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's like you can appreciate people trying to be anal, but then sometimes you watch them get to the point where it's it's like not going to work or it's not going to get any better, and it's time to kind of just accept it and move on. Come to terms. Yeah. yeah, sometimes it's it's it can be painful to watch people trying to. Find, well, they never find that balance. If it gets to that point, they never find it. They just continuously chase it. Uh, so, well, you well, you know, it's funny. I got, I got something to add about this, especially about the chasing it and the EGTs and whatnot. Um, I'm working with a guy. I can't say his name, but it's a badass Fox body Mustang with a Noonan motor in it and a pro charger, a big pro charger. Anyway, um, looking at his data, it goes down the racetrack at like two six air fuel, <laughs> two six, right? And uh, when talking to him, he's like, man, I'm a blown alcohol guy. The plug looks brand new still. It's making a lot of power. It's really fast, and it is very fast. Um, he's like, you know, there's no – I ain't I ain't chasing it. And it's like 2.6, 60 pounds of boost and like 26 degrees of timing. I was just about to ask if he had 100 degrees of timing in it. At that yeah, point. yeah, there's still a lot of timing <laughs> in it too, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how do you argue with it? You know, but like yeah. if you were to go – you know, like you, you go onto like a, a Facebook and any a group and you say, you know, my car's going down the racetrack at two, six air fuel and everybody and their brother oh, yeah. would chime in about you're an idiot. You have no idea what you're doing. And it's like, well, get in the other lane next to him. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then have tell him. Tried, tried leaning that one out to see if it picks up. Uh, at this point, the car doesn't need to be leaned out and it doesn't need to pick up. Gotcha. Right. So like that's the easiest way to say it is like. It's the best part about a, overbuilding something or having something that works. Yeah. Yeah. He's, he's probably got, yeah, he's, he's got a, he's, it, he doesn't really need to pick up right now. You know what I mean? So that's awesome. It's, it's not really not something to chase, you know? So, which is pretty cool to know that like, you don't need to like kill yourself over like trying to find every single ounce of power. You know? Well, that, people don't understand. That's where you start tearing stuff up. Like if you want to make 1200 horsepower, don't buy the parts to make 1200 horsepower, buy the parts to make 1600 horsepower. And then you run it right. at 1200 and you have this big buffer and you can leave it fat and under timed and still make right. the power that you want to make. Uh, and it's always when people want like, it's always when people are like, well, my turbo will support like 1300 horsepower. So we should be able to make 1300. It's like, well, now this is when you're going to burn stuff up. Absolutely. Know? And then like the, the small, like class legal turbo stuff where you're like limited, to like a 76 or something. Yep. And you know, then the guys are going to 14 to one compression and oh, yeah. you know, you're kind of, just really going after it. Um, well, and that's the problem with the the social media is that they see like uh, so and so in Ultra Street with a seventy six just went four fifties, right? 
to the eighth. And everyone's like, oh, well, I have this 5-3 and this Chinese 76. There's no reason I can't go 450s to the eighth. 76-65. Right, yeah, yeah. There's no reason that I shouldn't be able to. Meanwhile, that dude that just did it's got $40,000 into an engine. You know what I mean? Yep, the turbo's. uh, $7,500, $7,500, not $750. Right, right, right. right. You know, and it's, it's this big. It, it, right. It's, you know, right. it's, you could put a 120 millimeter compressor wheel in it if you wanted to. Right. It's, it's hysterical when you, when you look at, uh, like when you read some of the shit that people spew and you're like, man, stop trying to, like, I, th- I think what's happening now is that, like a lot of people are building, um, they're punching above their weight class. This is like something I've always said, like people start punching above their weight class. And what I mean by that is everybody has a budget and they want to start to chase some theoretical number, right? So maybe it starts at a thousand horsepower and it turns into 1500, then it turns into 2000 or they chase an ET. Meanwhile, they don't have the budget to do what they want to do. Right. And and that's perfectly acceptable. That's perfectly fine. Right. You just have to come to terms with it. So what happens is they get like 75% of the way through the build and then get pissed off and it's like uh i need to go to social media make a feel bad for me post so that everybody comes in there and gives me the bro don't sell it bro just fucking keep going and like that's like i read that and i'm like this is nauseating like i just it's a hobby stop being a douchebag just i say to people all the time i'm like it's a, like a bad relationship please leave <laughs> Right, 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 Just right. ditch the car and start over with a single cam Civic or something. Right. Like, that just will make you it. so happy. Just do it. Yeah. You are allowed to start over. You are allowed to go backwards. You're allowed to do something uh, other than fucking br- like grill yourself into the ground. What's that right. thing? Uh, buying things I don't need to impress people I hate or whatever. Right. Like all those right. quotes from Fight Club insert here. Yeah. Yep. The other side of, of that, when people start building outside of their budget, is it takes a really long time to start making a dent into the pro- the project. And then it's not fun but, forever. Well, that and the classes continue getting faster. So yep. you're trying to budget to run, you know, 480s, and now you're halfway through the project and that class is going 460s. Yep. And the difference between 460 and 480 is a lot of money. You probably and have 15 grand, yeah. It just keeps keeps going and keeps going and then that, you know, now you got to sell the stuff that you had to upgrade and you're going to get 50 cents on the dollar for what you paid for it even though you haven't used it yep. and then how long do you let that carry on before you just give up and part it out i see it it's 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 kind of almost like depressing to watch sometimes like you watch right. guys that are not eating lunch and you know not doing any like basically throwing their life away so they can try and put this car together and it just it's never going to be finished. And you, like, you know that it's never going to be finished, but right. if you tell them that, then you are just the world's biggest asshole, even though you're like genuinely trying to help. <laughs> right. Like and the, the thing that we deal with the most is that like people will get like that 90% way done with their build. Right. And like they bought everything. And of course they got $5,000 wheels on the car. Right. Holy. Because like you can't, go fast with thousand dollar wheels you have to have the five thousand dollar wheels it's the only way that the car actually runs and the golf uh, cart has to have the matching wheels as well and the matching right of course and... and then they have the big brand new trailer right and um and then they then then it comes time for them to be like well i need to plumb the car and i need to wire the car because those are usually the last two things that people do right usually wiring because everybody's afraid of it yeah. so then they contact us and they're like hey you know i'm interested in having you wire the car I'm like, okay, sounds good. And then we send them over a quote and they're like, well, I've got $15,000 worth of electronics that I bought, right? So it should only cost like $2,500 for you to install all this. No, <laughs> you know what I mean? No, that's not the way it works. So like, and then they, then they cry about like, I've got so much money in the car. Sure. With somebody else, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like you bought it from somebody, like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, what do you want from me? You know what I mean? And Um, And that's not like, I'm not talking bad about anybody. Again, it's just like live within your means. We do cars. Like people think that like, I'm like some arrogant prick who only works on super high end shit. Right. But like, we've done plenty of cars that are like $50,000 total budget cars, like plenty of them. You know what I mean? Like tons of them. And it has nothing to do with like how much somebody's budget is. It's all about if somebody is like, if somebody has a, a smaller budget than the next, I would expect that person with a smaller budget to show up with a car like ready to be wired. You know what I mean? That's the next to- question that I was about to ask you is how much 
how many of the cars that come to you for wiring like have all of the crap mounted already or do you have no. to mount it as well barely ever like barely ever it's very it's very few and far between what and if it is already that, though, because the what if they i have like terrible planning skills sometime and like i'll shoot myself in the foot i'll put something somewhere i think is a good idea and then it ends up being terrible or uh does it you know because if they put stuff in a weird spot and you're like all oh, this wiring is going to be shitty now i'd almost expect you to put everything in the appropriate spot instead of me just from my well, point so of view we do we do it two different ways right or at least i would come i would have that conversation with you <laughs> right so like the, the way we do it is like i tell people like put this stuff where you want it because it's your car Right. Because like, if I put it where I want it and it makes me happy, but then you look in the car and you're like, I hate that. A hundred percent. Now we're now we're now like I'm happy, but you're not. So now I'm not happy either. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So so like I tell people, put it where they want. Right. And if they're like, hey, I don't know how you want this laid out, but I made a couple panels. Perfect. Yeah. You know that's, I mean? that's like the main reason I ask is I figure, you know, somebody's got a dash and switch panel and, you know, the 12 other things. By the right. time you mount all of that, I figure that's got to be two or three thousand dollars minimum to to mount it all. Well, and then I mean, add like that, that on top of the wiring, to like that that it starts adding up really fast. Yeah, like if if people like I'm happiest when people just show up and they're like, "Hey, I got a piece of carbon or a piece of aluminum or a piece of fucking cardboard. I don't give a shit if it's just a piece of cardboard that's sitting there, and I can cut out a piece of carbon or something to make it nice." Um, and it's like, hey, all of it fits there. It's just I didn't want to bolt nothing to it because I'm learning a lot now. You know all of I mean? this makes sense. Stop making so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just you know, if, if if you own the car, you're gonna look at it every day. I'm not like when I'm done with the car, we fire it up. You take it home. You need to be happy with it. You know what I mean? So, and that's what like my focus always is. Is I want to make sure that our customers are happy. And um, sometimes we get them. They show up and they're like, like we got a car in here now, and the guy was cool as shit. So like I'm not mad, but he's like. He's like, uh, yeah, I need this. I need that. He's like rattling off all these parts he needs, right? He says, uh, I said, dude, you need like a, he's like, I want a Pro 600 and I want this dash and I want this smart wire and I need all this shit. And I'm like, you don't have any of this? He's like, no. Nah. I was like, so it's not mounted at all. And he's like, no, I don't even own it. And I was like, okay. He's like, but you know what I do got? I said, what? He goes, a good bit of fucking money. <laughs> so uh can you just get me the shit and then just you do it because i don't know what any of this shit is and i don't want to screw up and that's perfectly fine too i wish he had that conversation with us a month prior it's you know what i mean admirable so, but late yeah. <laughs> right, right. i wish it would have been a month prior but i mean it's like it's okay you know it's it's as long as he understands like we've gotten i've heard things from people that say like oh you charge twenty thousand dollars to wire a car and it's like well first off we've never charged anybody twenty thousand dollars to wire a car when you look at labor, if you can segregate labor from parts, that's usually where the problem lies. Like most people see a bill, like we've had plenty of bills that are $20,000, but there's like $12,000 in parts. It's like, well, what am I supposed to do? You know what I mean? Like, you know, if I, and if we have to get you $12,000 worth of parts, there's a good chance that uh, there's an easy $8,000 in labor wrapped up into that. You know what I mean? So, um, oh, you muted everybody. Joe, I can't hear you. No, we're just uh, Joe like glitched out or something. Did, Did it he? work? Do there I listen? Am there I live now? Yep. It says no yep. audio yep. connected for Joe. Weird. I can, I can hear him, hear him though. Good. Yeah, it's weird. All right. No, you're um, you're like video feed blipped, and we've just been listening. Mm-hmm. Sweet. So. <laughs> um, but yeah, I've I've caught, talked on this on in videos where guys will say you know, whether it's me, someone else, whatever, like he charged me $3,000 to tune my car. Well, you forgot to mention they put new head gaskets on it and, you know, spent 19 hours diagnosing everything and all. He's, he charged you 500 bucks to tune the car. Just right. the rest of that money was for everything else. Like you can't group that all together. That's, that's it's not, not uh, yeah, it's not fair at all. Right. You know, you know who has it like really bad and like, I'm glad that I don't do that. And, um, and it's probably the reason why you don't do it anymore fabricators oh uh, absolutely that's a hundred percent it and going back to even just where you were talking about guys wanting you to mount the stuff we get guys all the time that'd be like i don't know just do whatever you want do it how you do it if it was your car and then you you know you route all the piping and you mount and this here never and, there and, the <laughs> and then they're just like oh well why did you do why'd you do it like that and not like this well you clearly knew what you wanted so why didn't you tell me that ahead of time that would have made this a whole lot easier on both of us 
Well, we I always tell any of our customers that say like, man, just treat it like it was your own car. I warn them like that is the worst thing that you could possibly say to me. Yep. And they say, why? And I'm like, because I'm like the world champion at spending money on useless shit. <laughs> yeah. So do yeah. not tell me this. Like, we're not doing this. You're going to get a hundred thousand dollar bill. Cause I'm going to be like, man, if this is my own car. And I, I always wanted to try all this expensive ass new experimental <laughs> shit. So here we right, go. Right. And then for right. me, there's the element too, of like, if it's my own stuff, I'm going to try, like I do the same thing all day, every day. So if it's my own, I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to mount the dash on the ceiling or like, <laughs> right, you know what right. I mean? Like, I'm just going to try and go out of my way to do something just different. Cause that's what makes it entertaining to me. Right. Right. They're yeah. Like, no, well, it's, uh, it's different. It's, it's difficult to get people to grasp that, that they should just like, just try to uh, plan ahead a little bit and it winds up saving you a ton of money. You know, that's <laughs> 15 minutes later. That's kind of where I, where I was really going with my initial question to you of like, do people mount this stuff? Cause <laughs> It, it you know it it saves you a bunch of money if you just plan ahead yeah. and do it yourself you know what i mean and the other thing that's cool is when people even if they're uncomfortable doing it and the first time you do anything i don't care what it is that you're doing you usually aren't real happy with the outcome but right. you're super pumped that you learned 115 things that you would never do again right and then you get a, a whole new appreciation for when you write somebody a check for the work that they did for you because you're like we used to like Back when all the exhaust and stuff coming out of the hoods, that all started back in like the Honda world, basically. Yep. And we used to do headers and downpipes and all this stuff coming out of the hood. And I hated doing it because people look at it and they're like, it's like a 60 degree bend. You cut it once and there's a hole in the hood. Like, what's that cost? $200? I'm like, you cut that hood and then come back to me and you let me know what you think I should charge for that. Right. And I have one customer and this is, he's been a customer of mine. He used to live like three or four houses down for me. And I've known him since he was like 16 and he's, you know, grown ass man now. And this has happened like 15 different times where he'd get a quote for me on something and like freak out. And then he would go and do it himself. And then he would come back like two years later and be like, dude, that price that you gave me was too cheap. I did it myself and I would have paid you <laughs> two times to not expensive. have to do that again. Wow. He's like, now I get it. Yeah. So yeah. It's, yeah. The shame yeah, is, I, is that he only learned it about that one task. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't learn it about the fact that like you're fair to people. Like I feel like we're very fair to people. Like when we quote people, we don't we've never quoted somebody X amount of dollars and went over our quote in labor ever. Like I'll yeah. eat it. I'll lose money. I don't give a shit. If I tell you it's going to be 70 hours of labor, I don't care if it takes me 120 hours of labor. I'll eat the 50 hours of labor. I told you this is what it was going to be. It is what it is. You know what I mean? Um but typically, like we quote and we try to come in under. So, like if I tell you it's going to be yeah. 70 hours, we try to be done in 60. And the reason being is that if you were happy with paying me for 70 hours and I give you a bill for 60 hours, you're going to be a hell of a lot happier. And now I don't have to have this weird conversation with you about how I have to try to justify the 70 hours I put into your car. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Yep. Um, Absolutely. So, but I mean, overall, like I, I, I know I probably sound like I'm bitching, but overall, our customer base has been pretty good. Like for the most part, um, I can only like recall one customer that I have actually like that we've wired their car for that I fired, like that. I just like, I just refuse, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't, I won't deal with them anymore. So everybody else has been pretty cool. So yeah, that's awesome. What else you got for questions there, Matt? Let me, what's the preferred method of joining wires when you're lengthening or shortening a circuit, either for sensitive sensor circuits or for higher amperage stuff, such as lighting. I hate when people say that because that's two different answers now. So you can't have a preferred method on, you have to explain both of these. Anyway, looking for something less messy and time consuming than solder and shrink. Well, I always do the, I mean, if I have to do ugly stuff, I do the barrels, the non-insulated yeah. non barrels. Yeah. And then if it's like six, like I hid the head, let's, let's give an informational example, ladies and gentlemen. I hid the wiring for the headlights in the front of my Fairmont. So I cut it in the center at staggered. So cut one wire here, cut one wire here, you know, and what a six yep. inch span for six inches or six wires and six inches. And then what happens is you don't have eight of the, first of all, non-insulated barrels that are small and appropriately sized for the wires are barely bigger than the wire itself. So the crimp and the shrink actually isn't that big at all. It looks right. awful when it's 10 of those pink things. <laughs> the red ones that are faded and they're pink from China. 
Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. They're gigantic. Yeah. So you have six 18-gauge wires. It's now, like, larger than a battery, a zero-watt, you know? Right. Anyway, that's, yeah, preferred method for if you're stuck. Otherwise, end-to-end -end with the appropriate terminals. Yeah, I would, uh, my like, if you were to ask me, like, what my suggestion is, is that I'd cut the shit out and I'd run a new wire. That's my answer. Yep. Or but sometimes yes. for what you guys like do, yeah, DTM right. connectors or something, if it makes sense. I was going to say yeah. the same thing. Put a DTM and then run freshies from the yeah. chassis that exists. Yeah, you know, DTM it clean and then right, right, minimize and, then just, and go from like there, or unify. You know, make it easy on one end or the other. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of funny as I was doing all the wiring in the Porsche, I wanted to punch myself in the face repeatedly for not just dumping my car off at your shop, <laughs> like. <laughs> But then I was like, you wouldn't have wanted to touch this. Like, screw wiring street cars. Like, if it's a race car and you can go tail light to headlight, that's so much easier than oh. trying to fight with a street car. Oh, uh, you know, that's funny because, like, we get people that say, well, it's just a street car, so it shouldn't be that expensive. And I'm just like, dude, you're building the more expensive car. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like, we have customers with race cars that are like, you're telling me that I can have a dome light? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. <laughs> and they're like, no way. And I'm like, yeah, you just press that button. And they're like, God damn. And they're thrilled, right? Oh, and yeah. you're like, like we just did like a, a Malibu or whatever. I think it was Malibu. Yeah, it was Malibu. It was G-Body. And uh, I said, what do you want for like lighting? And he's like, what do you mean? Because like there was no front end. Like he didn't show up with the front clip for the car. I said, what do you want for lighting? He's like, oh, just that one little light in the back. <laughs> I said, what do you mean? He's like, that one little light in the back bumper. He's like, that's all we need. He's like, that light's got to be on when it's dark out. I said, do you have headlights? He's like, no. I said, okay. So you press one button, it turns that little light on, and he's happy. Meanwhile, like street cars are like, well, I need flash to pass and high beam, low beam, and then I need my turn signals and hazards, and I need reverse lights, and you know what I mean, like a backup beeper, yeah. and then I did wire up my fucking train or my uh, trailer lights and all this shit. And then like, to make it even worse, you have to like route it through the whole damn car, and there's 1,500 panels and carpet yeah. and. Oh like, yeah. That's stupid Porsche, man. Like getting your hands anywhere is physically impossible. Like I was cut up and bleeding everywhere. And oh yeah, uh, those that older was ones a look really, like a pain in really the ass. bad decision. Well, I think it's the 911 because of the rear engine. Because Jamie's, I haven't worked on her 911. It's rear engine, but the Cayman is extremely easy to work on because it's mid engine, mm -hmm. and it yeah. literally has this. It has like a four by two thing. You can push the seats forward and take like 10 bolts out. And there's this gasketed thing that's oh, yeah, huge. Yeah. And then it's the entire front of the engine as if it was on an engine stand. And hmm. then in the back, it's a giant hatchback. It doesn't have the rear, like the little two inch thing that flips open. <laughs> yeah. The whole glass lifts like an F body. And then another four by two box pulls out so you literally have like these that's two nice. gigantic access so it looks like it's going to be a nightmare the only thing that's annoying is like five under trays yeah right. but that's any new those, car you can get a volkswagen like that. cars are flat bottom so you just yep. take a second and pull some well a lot of the race cars i deal with are flat bottom too yeah so. it just makes <laughs> sense but it's not that it's honestly the cayman is kind of spoiled me because i bet everything else is like joe's all yeah. the other Porsches. I wanted to show people this quick. Uh, one of those unterminate or uh, uninsulated crimpers. This mm -hmm. is some of the best stuff ever. I can link you guys this, and then that's it. Yep. It's tiny. It's the size of the wire. And then what I started doing, you know, when I got into wiring, is you buy a hundred feet of like four mil insulation, and then you have you buy hundred packs of these, and then literally you can connect this stuff all day. Because you don't the use plastic, that adhesive it, line stuff. Yeah, this isn't, but I do have that in there somewhere. Yeah. But I uh, like that stuff. You crimp one of those AutoZone red ones, and you can pull stuff apart. You crimp one of these, and you're gonna like mangle the wiring trying to mm -hmm. rip apart one of these. It has that little pin. I mean, you guys know that yeah. crimps the hell out of these things. It's hard to explain until you've done it. And they're so easy to just hold. It's like a DTM thing. You're like, dink, right. smash. Yeah, we use, a, we use a ratcheting one. It looks like a little T-Rex. It's like a, like a little... It, yeah, I got one for... There was like $100 zillion from Joel at Raceback. It's like yep. yellow handle. Yep, yep. And uh, uh -huh. I, I love... I was pissed off when I bought it, but now that I have it, I, I love using it. 
This oh is yeah, fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like you use that, and it's like it just made it one. You know what I mean? It's like it's like you, you crimp yeah. that thing, and you're like, okay, yeah. well, this is now one piece. You know? Yeah, you can you can like use that same piece of wire to tow your trailer if you needed to. Right. We started crimping um, two gauge battery cables with my uh, with my uh, hose crimper. Oh, that's a very good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I got a forty. The hose crimpers. Cable. How many like uh, fingers does that have? No, it's um, I think it's twelve sided. Twelve. Yeah, that's, I figured it was eight or twelve, something like that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's twelve. I could be wrong. It might be eight. It's it, it's it, whatever it is. It's from Brown and Miller. It's like the yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's uh. Well, you muted it. Oh, um, yeah. No, that little. Oh, that, it was that, when I when I talked to. Yeah, they oh. they're. I'm like people are gonna immediately say I was muted. Oh, um, yeah. The uh, that crimper works really good, but the smallest die that I have will do two gauge. I don't have anything that'll go smaller. You know what I mean? I'd love some. to buy one of those machines, but there's a a shop that does nothing but fittings. They've been there for. The, they're website was made at the same time that like the Civil War was happening. <laughs> They've been there forever. Uh, and they have like they literally only do fittings, and it's like a six thousand square foot warehouse or whatever. So right. it's it's two miles from my house. So I'm like, I oh, just oh yeah, you just go it. over there and have them. Yeah, yeah. It's easier. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, well, I you know we we plumb cars, and um, I've got all the stuff here to like crimp fittings, and like we do it all you know often. But uh, the reality of it is, is that there's no money in it. Absolutely, you don't make, yeah. any, you don't make any money in it. Like you make no money. Like the, the margin. The reason you do that is because when something leaves your shop, it looks badass. Right, okay. right, 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 and it doesn't leak. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like if I'm doing it, it's like okay, it's crimped, it's done, and it doesn't leak. Um, like the margin on uh, the the hose and fittings we use is made. It's made by Brown and Miller. It's like seven and a half percent. Oh Jesus! And I'm not discounting it. Like call me greedy because I made that seven and a half percent. I don't care. I just won't sell it. It's not worth it. You know what I mean? He one of the biggest flaws of this industry as a whole is that if you sell cheap garbage parts, you can make 20, 30%. If mm -hmm. you sell high quality parts, you're making single digit profit margins. Yep. So if you want to make money, you have to sell crap. And yep. like, I would like to hope everyone would kind of like to, I mean, maybe you start there, but you would think everyone would like to kind of work their way up a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, you make like, less you money by working stuff. your way up. Right. You, yeah, like the more expensive it gets, the less money you make. Yeah, it's, it's really weird. And then the, the more pissy people get because everything's more expensive. Right. You're right. Like, I'll sell you this for $3,000 and I'll make $20. Or I'll sell you this for 1000 and I'll make $400. Bucks. Like, right. Yeah. Everybody's going to jump at the $1,000. Like we sell some stuff that's expensive. You know what I mean? Like we're dealers for some stuff that's expensive. And like the margins on all of it is like terrible. It's just yeah. terrible. But like – I can tell you for shocks, right? Like for, for, for like high end shocks, right? Like, so we sell a brand of shocks. Our margins are terrible. Like if, if it's 10%, I don't even think it's 10%, whatever. But I was approached by um, another company. I'm not going to say. And, um, and they were asked if we wanted, if, if we wanted to be a dealer for their shocks. And um, they sent me over the paperwork for it. And I had to, I think I would have had to spend like five or $10,000 to buy in with them, which isn't that bad. Um, and their shocks are wildly popular in the uh, like the not super high end race car world, right? And they're not a bad shock, you know what I mean? And their margins were like thirty percent. Yep. And I was exactly. like, holy shit! Like no exactly wonder everybody and your brother, to. like who's like sitting at home slinging this shit online, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. no wonder, you know? Yep. Um, same thing with like converters. Like I deal with a certain company for torque converters and shit, and. That's all I did. Like that's all, who all, whoever I'll use. And then there's a couple other companies out there that make converters and good, bad, or ugly. It doesn't matter. I'm not judging them, but there, some of their margins, like I talked to some of their dealers, their margins are like pretty damn good. And they're a lot cheaper. And it's like, God dang, how, how are they doing it? Like the, like the, 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 the people I deal with for converters, if we sell a bolt together converter, I, I don't quote me exactly on numbers, but they're like four grand. Right. There's other companies out there that sell like a bolt together converter for like twenty two hundred dollars. Oh wow! You know what I mean? Or twenty four hundred bucks. Like I'm pretty sure Hughes sells like a bolt together converter for like twenty four hundred bucks. And last time I checked, the last time I was told, and I don't know how accurate that was, uh, was a twenty five percent margin on that. So it's like, god dang! Like no wonder, <laughs> like no wonder everybody wants to be a dealer for this company, and now everybody, this is the best. This is the best. 
because y'all are making four or 500 bucks on this shit every time you sling one of these things. Yep. And I make yep. 7% on a $4,000 converter that I sell one, one out of every 20. So, you know, Oh shit. Yeah, it's, it's funny. You got to, uh, you got to make that decision. Do you want to sell nice stuff or do you want to be able to afford to eat dinner tonight? Right. I see Cameron is about to join. He's somewhere in there. <laughs> he's about to be a whirlwind promotion. We hear him. Yeah, he's heavy it breathing. It did this to you guys. It didn't. Uh, Trying to find my. To make the yeah, camera on your work. first start, doing, it bro? doesn't turn the camera on. Probably so people yeah, no. don't accidentally appear naked at work. Mm. My camera didn't work for a solid 10 minutes until I somehow managed to make it work and then it was the wrong camera matt can you post that can you post that can, I, can you post that video that i sent to that group chat to everybody to see to to the youtube chat or something i don't know i don't you know where do you did you put it on youtube or is it a facebook link or something no, i sent it to a facebook messenger for you yeah i don't you. think i can paste it in the in the youtube chat we'd have to put it somewhere and then link them oh okay never mind then you could put That's it on your cool. screen and then share your screen if you have that option. Oh uh, yeah, we could do that. I could maybe I can join the free conference and then no. Nah. It's not a big deal. I just figured since we're waiting for him. Uh... You're heading down the path of breaking everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that, there you go. <laughs> Here, watch this shit. Everybody's wondering about the air jacks. There you go. There they are, full, full up, 15 inches of extension. It can't then, focus that close. There we go. Right. And then I ripped the cord out. Of, I ripped the hose out of it, and uh, it comes slamming down. <laughs> I think it comes slamming down. <laughs> yeah. One yeah, of these days. It. Yeah. Go go go. Well, I had uh, 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 my employee Justin had um, Paul Wall playing. Ooh, there you go. That's... There you go. Yeah. So they work. People were asking about it. They work. That's so. awesome. Yeah, that's you're uh, you're uh, balling out of control with that stuff. Um, I feel like it's a very sensible um, addition to. No, I don't uh, know why more people don't have it. I was saying I've I always said I wanted to put it on like my dailies. Right, like if you got a flat tire, oh yeah, yeah watch just, bloop, just yeah. Well, the, the cool part about building a car and actually finishing it is that once it's a finished car, then you can start doing all the little small cool projects like that. Yeah, you don't you don't have to do it all at the same time and spend seven hundred grand all at once. Like get the car up and running, right, and then do all the little cool stuff in stages. It doesn't hurt as bad. I have yep. a direct question here for Devin. I just got oh, texted boy. by my buddy Derek. Gaskins, who does drifting in a C6 Corvette that's all motor. And he says, okay. can you ask Devin if he would recommend the Delta PAG cooling fan for my Corvette? The fan I have now doesn't pull strong enough, and my car gets warm with the LS3 after just a few laps. So if so, uh, to be 100% upfront and honest, the Delta PAG fans work very, very good through a radiator that Delta PAG wants you to use. Hmm. They... Um, they move a boatload of air. Like if you look at the design of the fan, the fan blade is really narrow and they spin really fast. So they have a bunch of horsepower, but they don't have a lot of torque, right? So they don't do a great job of pulling through a uh, real thick radiator, right? Um, for his application, because it's in a vet uh, and I'm sure it sucks for room because it's a Corvette, um, I would probably try to. Uh, uh, I would probably try to fit a pair of like the uh, 2015 um, Hellcat, like twin 13-inch fans in there. The brushless fans from like the Hellcats hmm. or Chargers hmm. or whatever. They're badass. They are. They're badass, and, and they're like 250 bucks. So this means we That's, need to start rating fans and horsepower and torque numbers. Yeah. So I did this like uh, I did like a 12 fan shootout test, right? Like, and I was making them pull through a three-inch thick radiator. And I uh, had an anemometer on it and like was measuring, you know, uh, CFM. And at a certain distance, we built like a little jig to hold the anemometer above the fan. And um, and then we tested it with like a piece of cardboard a certain amount of inches away from the backside of the radiator to like make it have to pull like a hard vacuum. And when the 
when the Delta Pag fans are like just stood up on their own with nothing in front of them, they kill every other fan on the market. When you put them in front of a radiator that's too thick, they do a terrible job. So if <laughs> so you're going to do Delta really Pag, well, if you have a thinner, they're designed for a thinner radiator, which seems like bullshit, but you're telling me, so I know that you've tried it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so like we just finished up a Monte Carlo, like this green Monte Carlo, which was like literally a, like an unbelievably gorgeous car, right? Yeah, that's and, uh, people should check that out if they don't know about that. That is yeah, something that you should unreal. look at. Uh, but we finished that up, and it had the uh, Delta Pag. Hands up, don't shoot. Uh, we did. Uh, uh, we did. So uh, yeah, we just finished that up, and it had the whole Delta Pag set up in it, and it stays cool. Um, so it's good system. It's just you have to like use it with their designed, what they want. You know what I mean? Like, don't think you're going to slap it on like a three and a half inch thick radiator and it's just going to work. Well, that's a good answer because he probably was just going to buy the fans and be like, these are terrible. Right, right, right. right. Yeah. What's up, Cameron? Hey, Devin. How are you? I'm good. Long day at the shop. Yeah. Um, I was like trying to get on so bad because like you two guys are talking about stuff that I was like, I need, I have, I have, I have questions of my own for this exact topic. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like trying to type, but like the methanol stuff, because that's what I'm on. Do you, at what point do you, do you chase EGTs? Do you care? Like if they're with all within a hundred at wide open, you just ship it and just keep adding boost. Yeah, basically. I mean, if they're like within a hundred degrees or so, you know, as long as you don't like, I mean, everybody knows what the problem holes are. You know what I mean? Like seven and eight on an LS are usually the problem, you know? So Mine are... If they start to run away on you, like start putting fuel to them, you know, they run run away like 150, 200 different than the rest. Yeah. If they just start getting hotter than the rest, like by a lot, you know, okay. You know, 100, 150, then just start putting fuel to those cylinders and just keep running it out of boost. Yeah. Cause I remember you saying that you're like, there's no reason to add timing. You know, if your timing table set up like in a reasonable manner, you don't need to just keep cramming timing until, until you're out of boost. Like, that's something I've never understood about some people that tune cars, right? Like, there's a guy who tunes cars who's the uh, world's greatest at everything ever. And, I know. Uh, I know and, uh, yeah, yeah. So he's the greatest thing that has ever happened to anybody ever for anything. Uh, but, um, like, he, like, he's the of the type that's like, well, you need to find MBT for every single boost number. It's like, why? Why do I need to do that? Yeah, I'm First not always off, about that. Well, the, like the split second is at 10 PSI during a pass. Right. right. Like, like, like when people are like, well, how much more timing should I put in it at nine pounds of boost? And I'm like, I don't know. We let go of the button at 11. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like there's 11 pounds of boost in it on the trans brake. Like who gives a shit? And then they're like, well, at 18 pounds of boost, I have this much timing. It's like, where do you race the car at? Well, 35 pounds of boost. Okay. Who gives a shit? You know what I mean? Like who cares? Like some of the fastest cars that I've ever seen, like, well, have, and I shit you not, like, this is not a joke. And I'm talking about, like, three-second cars in the Pro 275 or RVW or LDR. Some of these cars that I've seen, not all of them, but some of them will have, like, the entire upper right-hand section of the timing table will just be one solid number. Right hand. I've seen them where guys using the dyno, literally the entire timing table will be one value. Or maybe, mm -hmm. like, 100 kPa and below will be one, you know, 35 mm -hmm. or whatever it is. And then the rest of it, the, all of it. You know, zero PSI to 60 PSI will be 12 or whatever number it was. Yep. yep. And then, <laughs> like, that's that's how they tune it. And oh, I shit you not. Like, there's like there's plenty of them that I've seen and, like, I've dealt with. Like, I remember a, a guy I know bought this car. It was a twin turbo big block. He bought the car, like, turnkey. Anyway, he was like, hey, can we, you know, can you help me, like, look over to tune up and whatnot? So, like, I downloaded it from the ECU. And, like, once it made, like, six pounds of boost, it had 25 degrees in it for the entire rest of the map. I was like, oh, we just have 25 degrees in it. Everywhere. And that's it. And it's like, well, I guess it's pretty easy to understand the timing retard numbers when you just know you have to deduct from 25. <laughs> yeah. I actually, I asked one of the guys that, that did that. I'm, I don't remember how I worded it, but not like, why the hell are you doing that? Mm -hmm. But it was like a conversation that happened. And ultimately, the end of the conversation was that exact reason. They're like, yeah. we just want to know, you know, if we do a time-based timing retard or whatever it is, like, we got 20 in it and we can subtract three from that and we know where <laughs> yeah. we're at. Yeah. Like, okay. yeah. And it's a lot easier to remember. 
20. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, um, and if they say, hey, let's put two degrees in it, they're like, oh, we're going to go to 22. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, but I'm telling you, like, I've seen a lot of cars that are like the fat, some of the fastest cars that I've dealt with are like just a flat timing value. And it's because like you can nitpick and like try to, you know, again, like you, you put more timing in it, obviously at lower boost and it'll pick up and blah, blah, blah. But the reality of it is, is that you wanted the thing to lit, lit, light off the turbo or turbos on the, on the uh, trains brake. And when you let go of the button, you're not hanging out at 18 pounds of boost. I mean, unless that's where you're going to race it at. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah like, I was going to say for, for a simple thing there, a lot, a lot of the cars I tune anymore, uh, people will have a big swing and will do like a two pound spring and a four port because a lot of them do mess around on the street and turning it down to 360 to the tire is actually very useful. But in your sure. instance, completely useless. Well, I mean, like, trying to get to max boost as fast as you can get it there. So yeah, right. I remember my buddy, Frank, you know, you know, Frank, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know Frank if Joe's met Frank, but Cameron, uh, I got to introduce Cameron to him like a, a long time ago. And Frank always talks about like shoving 75 pounds on the dome and only, you know, he's like, the turbos are too slow, but stuff like you would never normally hear in the real world. Yeah. Yep. And he's like, yeah, we got to do this because the turbos are slow as hell and blah, blah, blah. And you're like, your brain's like, uh, you're at how many pounds? How many seconds in? Like oh, yeah, three quarters of a like second 40, on seventy-five pounds. What? 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 <laughs> it was like forty on the dome in like a second and a half or something like that. Yeah. Oh, really like, shit. Like, so it, like, it's like we left off motor and it went one teen. I was like, what? Yeah, like we we uh, like with my small like when I had my small block Ford in my my car, we would um, I would let go of the button at seventeen pounds of boost and like forty-four hundred RPM. And uh, we would make it to 52 pounds of boost by 1.0. And and the reason it took till 1.0 is because that's how long it took to get there. <laughs> yeah, it was all in, and you were just waiting on the turbos, right? And the, and the, yeah, and the only reason that uh, it, it was as quick at 1.0 is because we left on 17. If you left on 12, it would take a little bit longer because it had a lot higher of a mountain to climb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is, uh... Is mid threes on methanol like a, a happy place to be for like a thousand ish horsepower LS? Or, and, probably, yeah, I mean, it's probably rich, but yeah, it won't and, hurt. And, it, and like, if you ever were to like lean it out, is what gains are there like hundredths? Is there any reason to like not worth it? If it's out of turbo, that's what I'm going to tell you to start leaning it out. Or okay, so just keep, keep until, until I stop adding dome and it stops mile an hour and don't do anything else. Well, like, the thing that I've never understood, and like Joe, you've heard me preach this before, like when you came down, to, you know, but like you like so your situation is twins, but let's just say it's a single, right? You go and you go online and you do all your research and you call up whoever company and you spend all this money and you buy this turbo, right? And it shows up and you bought the whole fucker, right? You bought the whole fucking thing. Like you paid for the whole thing. It's not like you financed it, it's not Kmart like layaway, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you bought the whole thing and then you only want to use half of it. Well, I mean, like, every every like simple stock bottom end E85 car that I do, we basically, uh, I'll pin, as long as we don't run out of fuel or map sensor, mm -hmm. or uh, Joe had to split, <laughs> something okay. happened there. Uh, I'll, I'll lean on it because, yeah, the turbo will go from, say, 25 horsepower per pound right to, like, 10 or 15. Yeah. And then just use the whole turbo. Yeah, like, I, always, right. I always go right for the top of the boost. Uh, yeah. you know, because that's where, uh, some of the cars, that's all I do. I, we go straight for seeing if the boost controller works, making sure it doesn't misfire, making sure it has some fuel, you know, move quick. Not yeah, I mean, that like, I, not that I doubted you, Devin, but when I was asking you how far my two tens would go, a single set of two tens on methanol. And you're like, I've seen them make 13, 1400. And I was like, well, that's, you know, makes me feel good. Yeah. As and long I, as you run the pressure up, which was what we yeah, did. Yeah. I have, I'm at. 28 pounds of boost mm -hmm. and 111 psi fuel pressure down track it's yeah. 48 percent duty cycle told you i'm like that's awesome i'm like how am i using so when people are like use i got two sets of two tens i'm like are you do you got like a 1000 pump or something like why do you, the, are you the, making are you making 2400 or something the key to it is pressure like the key to its pressure you know yeah. what i mean like, yeah. it, like mechanical pump can overpressurize the fuel system, which is what you want. Um, 
Like my own personal car overruns like fuel pressure delta. Like it goes over one to one. Yes, that's what I just noticed because I'm I'm 80 psi base, mm -hmm. and at 27 it's 111, so 31. Over, yeah, I didn't. Was, right. was it overrunning the regulator at that point? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. huh. That's why VE will start to go down. Uh, yeah, because the RPM of the mechanical pump comes up with the engine mm -hmm. RPM. Oh. Yeah. Has yeah. anybody ever thought to just, or has anybody ever been dumb enough to just put like a big mechanical motor on the front of a mechanical pump? Or is that like, is that like <laughs> a... Oh, an electric motor on the front of one? Yeah, or is or that like, like somebody CRF with a Prius? Somebody with a Prius, you know, charging their car with a generator? Is that like pointless? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, this you put a generator in the trunk. It works. Speaking of things that like will break your mind when you're getting into tuning, uh, one of those times uh, I was at Frank's and he had a, like a, his radial versus world uh, new edge back in the day. And he was showing me how like a VE table can go down sometimes because the mechanical mm -hmm. pump in it, like the numbers are flat because the mechanical fuel feed just keeps coming in so much. The VE starts to look like a disaster because the the pump and the rpm and everything are just injecting more and more yep. you, yeah and i've seen it too unironically on uh on my mustang because i have four walboro 450s and a surge tank <laughs> and when those right. start coming online <laughs> my ve is like dips a little like i had to change when the pumps come on yep. because I would get like a 15 pound spike and then the regulator's like, Whoa, it's like pulling on the reins of the horse. Mm -hmm. It's yep. like, come down. You got like six alternators on the car? <laughs> <laughs> it, honestly, it doesn't have a problem with that. It just, it's funny to see that much fuel flow just crash in. Yeah. Then and if somebody then with totally a 4303 the, borrows your tune, they're like, why am I I can't stand pistons? looking at an ugly ass. Oh. Yeah. It's not terrible. I can't stand I, I looking at an ugly fuel table. I always on. end up doing a custom table for that. Yeah. Well, like, I just moved like, up when it turns them on, so it's not that bad. Uh, it, obviously, it doesn't need it if it's if it's like tripling the amount of flow right there. Right. I can turn it on later and avoid that whole step. But it's just funny to see uh, the numbers like going backwards when all the other pumps come on. Well, like like Joe, like you got the, that that global or that flash drive that you got. Um, it's got global files from like my car, and you can see like VE peaks at like eighty. Yeah, yeah. It's like the max VE is like 79 or 80 percent. It's like, well, what the hell? And you start looking at why, and you're like, oh, it's because it picked up 12 pounds of fuel pressure that it shouldn't have. You know what I mean? It's like, well, that's why. So, yeah. It's just, and it's like, it's because I was an idiot and I bought, well, I wasn't an idiot. I was actually being cheap and I bought a fuel pump that was like way too big for my application. And uh, it wasn't even really being cheap. It's because it was in stock. So I was like, oh, it'll work. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I got a 27 gallon per minute pump that I did not need. You know, so it's just a hog. It just overruns the regulator. So, um, but it's funny that like people will think that they have like finite definitions of like what needs to be certain, right? Like everything has to be exactly this or you know, air fuel has to be exactly this or whatever. It's like, man, for alcohol, it's unbelievably forgiving. Like it's unbelievably forgiving, you know, um, unless you're a certain person in this industry who thinks that you should run everything at, 0.75 lambda, which is not what you do with alcohol, uh, and uh, burn them up. You know what I mean? So he's a, he's the super genius though. So are you seeing any more dongle issues, Devin? Oh my God! Stop it. My I'm I'm about to be on number four. Stop it. Stop Can't it. Miss. No, no, no. Let's, let's not talk about that. Let's, let's please don't ruin my night. <laughs> I'll call I've you got, some, I'll call yeah, you some time. Yeah, no, it's terrible. Um, it's terrible. Yeah. Do so I have anyway. a do I have a shitty battery? Is a is, do I need a better battery or something? No. Is is something unhappy or is just something? no, 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 no? It has nothing to do with your car. It's those. The real it's question awesome. is why doesn't Holly have fuel pressure differential as just one of the standard damn channels in the thing? It would be really nice, wouldn't it? <laughs> what does that mean for the layman, Joe, as a transmission builder, hobbyist tuner? What does that mean, fuel pressure differential? Well, if you got 40 pounds of fuel pressure and you got 10 pounds of boost, you should have 50 pounds of, of fuel pressure. And like basically every other fuel pressure table where it should be. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. So 
Yeah, you know, like a tell ratio you where you're at. Says, if you it says you one should have one. 50 pounds and you don't, and you're off by three, then there should be a channel that lets you know that you're three psi shy of where you're supposed to be. You maybe make uh, one. Like you there's can, a timing table for like actual timing or like the because I learned no, recently. No, so say that, it would say like 0. 0.7. You were looking at a, a 800 horsepower pull and it said 0. 0.7. You're like, oh, where's thirty percent of my fuel pressure? Point set one to one point oh. This is the way I would like to see it. One point oh would mean that you're rising one to one, and then you know, point seven means you're missing thirty percent of your fuel pressure. You could see it right away. You could see a fuel pressure problem right away without yep. going to like zero kPa and boost, and then going, okay, I got sixty four pounds. Okay. Uh, 14 pounds. Okay, it'd be nice to just, he's saying it'd be cool to have a, a ratio table that tells you how far you're off. Or even if it said 100% or 110 or, you know, 70%. It means you're not rising. But not Jim, only you... just to be able to view it, but to be able to use that channel for offsets for other things. Did you, you, know. did you see uh, Did you see the uh, output on that flash drive called FP Delta? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I looked at that. Yeah. yeah. So like, Basically, what I'm after is is what you built should that should just be like a standard channel where you don't have to right to, right to build well, all of that. You're 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 100 correct. You're right uh, because like that's kind of just like my math. I'm like, yeah, that should be right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's it gets you pretty close, but it's not perfect. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's exactly it. Is if if there was such a channel specifically for that, it's going to be 100 percent correct. Right. You know, right. Because it, yeah. it's so easy to input some improper math or, you know, whatever that is. But yeah, um, I did a car Tuesday night that was uh, up top. It, it had solid fuel pressure, but it wasn't going one to one. And you could tell because it had like 68 percent alcohol in it and it said a thousand fifteen pounds an hour and it made 720 to the tire. And then when you investigate, you can see that it's not one to one but it's not falling off. It's one of those PQYs where you have to modify the spring. And if you don't get the base right, you're actually under the base. And then it's it's a thing. Uh, yeah. So yeah. take that off and throw it as far as you can. And put, <laughs> like a fuel pressure regulator is one of those things you don't cheap out on. Like you buy a real fuel pressure regulator. They're not expensive. Right. Like uh, Ironically, I have good luck one. with the $30 ones. So uh, you couldn't pay me to put a $30 fuel pressure regulator on my car. Like, I'd just sell the whole car. I'd be like, I'm oh, sorry, I'm not going to drive it anymore. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I'm uh, just like solder, right? Like just like soldering stuff. Like, I, like I'm out, you know what I mean? I, uh, I'm like terrible about like I do not cheap out when it comes to fuel stuff because it kind of makes the whole thing run, you know? Of all of the things that I've watched people waste money on by like having to come back to the dyno, multiple different times because things weren't right. It's, it's probably a solid 85 to 90% of the time. It's a fuel system related problem. Mm -hmm. And then every now and then you get somebody with just some bad luck or something weird or something like that. But 99 out of a hundred times, it's just cause they like cheaped out on it. Right. And then the other element of it is the way that they, they label these stupid fuel pumps. Like this is oh. a thousand horsepower fuel pump, but sure on gasoline at, 13 psi naturally <laughs> aspirated and people don't they just don't know they don't know any six and a brake specific fuel consumption of 0.75 and right yeah so that, oh, no, that it's a psfc of like 0.25 right yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that's what i meant i'm sorry yeah, yeah, yeah. i yeah. went backwards yeah um you know what uh, go ahead i was gonna say i have a car at my shop right now that's made me grateful that i'm not you guys um and sometimes if I ever doubt like how much I try to prepare for like racing or bringing it to somebody to work on and you just look everywhere, I'm like this uh, it's, I'll send you a picture, Matt, but like a fuel line is on a V band and it's been ran like on a dyno and it's melted to it. He's going to have to redo the fuel lines, like the power steering's leaking wirings everywhere. And it's a transmission I did a few years ago that sold to somebody. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm a night. The trans brake doesn't work. And I'm like, it's probably a wiring problem. I'm like, just bring it to me if you can leave it with me for a week. And he's like, okay. And he did, he's a super nice guy, but it's just like, Man, I, I, I just for a moment, I was like, I'm so glad I'm not a tuner because I'm sure this is what you guys stumble upon every single day where they're like, well, it ran. And it's like, yeah, until the fuel line melts and puts yeah, fuel on, all over the, the header. 
yeah. on the fucking header and then catches the whole thing on fire. And then, then you have to go to Facebook and go, bro, I don't know what happened. I can't catch fucking, a break. Yeah, everybody fucking woe is me. Everybody feel bad for me because I'm a fucking idiot, you know? Uh, yeah, all I they talk, all that they talk about dragon drives earlier. That I, I've seen it. I used to hate on those people. I'll be honest. Like This is like just me maturing. No. I'd see no. those people and I'm like, that does not look fun. Like I remember that roadkill video where Jeff Lutz had it. Like he's like, I heard a chirp, and he like pulled the head off on the side of the highway and put lifters in a big block Chevy. Yeah, and yeah, I was yeah. like, there is nothing fun about that. No, so, like no, I told no, Matt, cool. I'm like, if I ever do one, I'm gonna have like two, three thousand miles on my car with zero issue before I ever dream of doing something like that because. If it's anything more than like a pop tire, I'm like, I'm calling AAA. I'm like, I'm throwing in the towel. Fuck this. I'm not pulling a motor or head or yeah, anything. But if, got, if, you put 3, 000, if you put 3,000 miles on it, then it's all worn out. You got to refresh it before you can go back out. <laughs> it's only a 550 lift cam. Nothing's going to go. Um, well, I, you know, let me tell you. I know what you're I, saying. I, but my, my big block Chevrolet in my motor or my car has gotten the dick kicked out of it. Like it's been like not been, I haven't treated it great. Right. Like the first pass on the car, it revved to 9,300 RPM. First pass on the car. First fucking time. Right? First time. Because onboard air didn't sh make the shift. Oof. And it just went to 9,300. It went 520 <laughs> in first gear. So that was pretty impressive. Jeez. But uh, like 136 or something like that. But um, 9,300. Told the engine builder, he's like, everything all right? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, he's like, well, that ain't bad. <laughs> I was like, okay, you know, okay. Uh, so um, he, uh, he, <sighs> the engine builder's like, just, you know, take it easy on it or whatever, like for the first like couple passes. Anyway, we put 75 runs on it. We put 1,800 miles on it. I bring it to him to have it refreshed, right? And he says, uh, we're putting rods in this thing already? And I said, yeah. I said, uh, I said, what do you mean already? He's like, well, how many runs you got? I said, 75. He goes, oh, we usually put like 200 runs on this thing. I said, oh, okay. I said, well, it's got 1,800 miles. How long are the rods supposed to last? He goes, about 75 runs and 1,800 miles. I said, okay, that's what I thought. He's like, God damn, you really drove this thing that far? I'm like, yeah. <laughs> like a race engine builder is blown away with the idea that we just went 1,800 miles on this engine with aluminum rods. But then, we tell him like, but then I tell him, like, hey, first pass on the brand new engine, we went 9,300 RPM. He's like, oh, that's all right. It's <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, that's fine. But cruising it with uh, like 75 horsepower at times yeah, is unthinkable. Yeah, are you kidding me? You drove this thing for 1,800 miles? Like, what the hell's wrong with you? Like, all your temperatures were good and everything was fine and, and yeah. you didn't beat the shit out of it? Uh, that's terrible. Why would you do that? Yeah, did yeah, you, yeah. Did you sign your eight rods and sell them as merch? Put them in, yeah, no, put them in the boxes. Sure. Yeah, you're missing out, I guess. Missing out, yeah, man. No. Played yourself. Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, I mean, I, I probably could get into the uh, I probably should get into the selling my old shit, but um, I'm a hoarder, I like to keep it. So, <laughs> you know, uh, I got I keep I keep like all this the old bearings out of the motor and everything, you know what I mean? Like, he pulled the bearings apart, he's like, he pulled the motor apart, and he's like, bearings are brand new. I said, okay. He goes, what are you doing with the oil? I said, exactly what you told me to. So here, I'm on a podcast. I'm here to say it, right? Because people won't believe me. And I saw this. This blew up. This was like a really big post on, I think, on Sloppy Mechanics. I swear by, my engine builder got me onto this. And, a, and another engine builder who actually works for probably the, one of the most elite engine shops out there, Noonan Race Engines, um, they got me onto putting a bottle of Lucas oil stabilizer in every oil change. And everybody else says like that bullshit. I'm here to say that I legit put Lucas, a bottle of Lucas in at every oil change. And uh, it's got what bearings need. You know, it just has what bearings need. You know, so, when you uh, said that, you ever see Idiocracy? That's exactly it's what I'm saying. Plants crave. What that's what I knew crave. you were going there. That's, that's exactly what I said. Yeah, electrolytes yeah. what plants crave. Bron yeah. Brondo. Yeah, yeah, thirst mutilator. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly like what I was saying. Water it's, from the toilet? Yeah. It's uh, it's true, though. Like, I put a bottle of Lucas oil stabilizer in it. And like I the honey? Through. The motor honey stuff? 
No, the Lucas Oil. I was going to say Motor Honey, too. Motor Honey is the cheap AutoZone version of Lucas. No, I mean, like, that's what we always call it. Lucas Oil Stable. Like, the thick-ass stuff that you got to, like, put in boiling water to pour it into your engine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. I use that in my diesel truck. So you put it in your race motor, too? Yeah, every oil change. You're not being facetious? I swear to God. Okay, I mean, I'll, I, 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 I I'll do whatever. It gets, it gets eight quarts of straight 58 Schaefer's and one quart of that. I mean, it's thick stuff. It, it can't be bad. I'm, 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 and I'm telling you, like, after all the miles we put on it, uh, whatever, every time we pull it apart, it looks perfect. But you're talking about being hard on motors when I've got my pistons and rods 5.3, and after I left your shop, Devin, uh, it just has, I think, like, Walmart Super Tech, just, like, get it running. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, let's go to the track. And we went to the track, and it went, like, 680 or something like that. And, of course, if it's not anywhere near my old time, I feel like a failure. And I'm like looking at the log later, and I I I just like look let's look at oil pressure, and it was like 37 psi down <laughs> track, and I was like, uh, and I'm like freaking out. I'm like getting on Amazon buying a fuel uh, or an oil filter, you know, cutting tool, yeah. and I'm like I'm like sweating. I'm like texting Jarrett. I'm like, what at what point should I worry? Should I? I'm like sending him pictures of the oil filter. I'm like, do I need to do any? I'm like, is this bad? He goes, that's your first oil change. I'm like, yes. He's like, it's fine. He's like, but but mobile 1550 in it next time and yeah. a, a new you know filter and now it's mid 60s down track and it's yeah. just, just there and i'm okay with it but yeah hard breaking oh yeah 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 it happens i feel like I, that sometimes my my engine builder is like no how do you break them in just go out and make a hit it'll be all right <laughs> just gonna break look at that break. all the time with people on the that want to bring something on the dyno and they you know give me this six page long thing of like their braking procedure i'm like everybody that goes out of the way to break in an engine has pr engine problems like you yep. just you just drive put it like together you put it in the dyno you rip on it and and everything's good drive it I how think, you're gonna like, drive it it's gonna break yeah. now or later whatever it's not 1947 anymore that's what like, i say to people like they're they like are to. you nervous i'm like it's no. not a flat tap it you're fine <laughs> well the way i look at it is like you break them in on the chip you know what i mean so like Get it fired up. Make sure it doesn't leak anything. You know, whatever. Like, do all your normal checks. Make sure it idles good and all that shit. Make sure nothing's leaking. And then, um, you know, put it on the trans brake. You know what I mean? Get it to build some boost, and then um, you're good to go. My buddy mm -hmm. that lives in Canada, because I'm a Crown Vic nerd, and he lives near where they used to build Crown Vics. He said it was. He knew a lot of people that worked at Stap, the St. Thomas assembly plant, and he said it was one guy's job every shift to when they started the car put the gas pedal to the wood for 10 seconds <laughs> and, just bum, 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 bum. and then if it made oil pressure and no funny noises they were like and they just sent it to, i don't know if there's truth yeah. to that it sounds true but as if it still made oil pressure and didn't make funny noises they knew it was good to go so every one of my seven crown vicks that i own some dude put it to the <laughs> well wood. you figure the old people are going to get in and stomp their feet to the ground to rutch in their chair and keep <laughs> the accelerator depressed they can't hear, so. Uh, just they're gonna start the car, <laughs> and they're gonna be like, Muh. "Oh, that was me." Yeah, what was yeah that? and then they don't see that sometimes, and that's how they drive into a Seven Eleven. Right, right, because they pull it in reverse and just bam. Yeah. <laughs> just Metal fucking drop. neutral dropping it. Yeah. Yeah. Boom, off the brake, chief. Yeah. Oh yeah. That's funny. So Matt, you got a list of questions we got. Oh, oh, yeah. Somebody asked one in the comment section about blending injectors, which is, I want to say something about that. When I first got my car wired, when I was dreaming about it, I was like, I want to be able to, I don't know if I saw Garrett do it first or if it was like, a, I just came of it on my own. Um, but I was like, I want to be able to like floor it and go from E85 or 93 to methanol. And then, you know, one variable in that is, if you're making a certain amount of power, you have a really tight converter. So like anything you're doing on the street in a turbo car, I joke, I'm like, my turbo car is not fun to drive on the street in that you can't just floor it and, and it'd be really fun anymore. Like when it was a five, three and twin GT 35s on E85 and the, and the wastegate spring was 18 PSI. That was fun as hell because you floored it and it just made 18 pounds. It made like seven, 800 horsepower instantly, but now it's not as fun. But right. uh, my opinion on blending, is it's not 
really for many setups or really it's used it's not useful at all in my opinion if you've got 16 injectors just cruise on eight go to the track on the e85 or 93 when you get to the track put a belt on change the tune and put it on alcohol that's my opinion and thoughts on blending it you know, there's no reason to did load. you hook up that key yet no i'm going to though <laughs> My my view on blending the fuels is um, if it's on 93, it's going to waste the plug. So I don't want to blend the fuels because it'll ruin the spark plug. If it's sitting there idling on 93, it's going to ruin the spark plug. So like when it switches over to methanol and you make a pass and like you lean on it hard and you go down the racetrack and then you come back and you're idling around on 93 again, you have no idea if like you heard anything via the plug or because anything. it's the plug's so cold for the horsepower that a 93 can't really ignite with it is that why like something like that he just and needs the mix yeah well i mean well it ruins the plug like a methanol look, plug, look you put a, a gas brain... plug and a meth plug they don't look yeah. anywhere remotely close to the same right, yeah, that's that, what I mean. like, okay i got you, you. carbon on the plug you're like where'd this come from it's like, like coming it's to a crime scene that somebody threw a bunch of bleach on the ground you're like oh right. i can't see anything here Right. So like to me, like blending fuel, like it doesn't, it doesn't work out that well. So okay. I just, I'm, I'm an advocate for just like put the pump gas tune up in it and then put the race gas or put the, now, like I just did a car for a guy, uh, 300 ZX, really cool little setup. Um, those cars are tiny. Uh, but anyway, we just finished that one up and we blended pump gas to race gas. No problem. I don't care about that because it's like both gasoline. Yeah, that's a different that's a different ballgame. The 16 injectors and blending, that's just like a new kind of trendy thing, I think. Sounds I get, sexy. I get so many emails of people asking about doing that. And what's funny is that everyone asking about doing that hasn't done it yet. Right. They like want to do it and want to know if it's possible. I do it all the time. Yeah, I mean... And it, it's it's doable, but then it's just um, shitty. It, that and it, it's weird. Like you would think, like sixteen injectors blending. You're talking like a dominator at that point, and mm -hmm. you would think you're kind of at that point dealing with like higher end stuff. But it seems yeah. like more often than not, for whatever reason, they want to blend stuff to like use less parts and save money. It's like right. they're doing it for the wrong reason. Right, right, right. right. It's kind of like a weird, kind of like a weird dynamic that I haven't really figured out how to navigate yet. Like, can you do you know, it? I've, yes, but I feel like we need to have an hour long conversation to figure out what you're really trying to do here. Right. And and make sure that it's going to make sense. Did I tell you what I did shortly after getting my car wired, Devin? <laughs> Rewired um, it? <laughs> no. No. That's usually uh, what most people do. They wire, realize everything that they didn't know. And then they do it again. No, he brought it. He brought it to me, and I wired it. Oh, you wired it. I didn't know that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. I take back my statement. That was uh, inappropriate. Yeah, no, I, I had, I had my buddy help me mount it, and we did. It, my car was apart for two years, and I was like, I'm just gonna have Devin wire it because I hate my wiring, and uh, I'm just gonna spend it and make it how exactly how I want it. But I don't know how. I must have been like showing somebody like my injector wiring, and like check that out. Look, they unplug, and then like I did that. And then Matt was down because we were going to PRI and uh, we like, we drove it and I was like, man, it's got a freaking misfire. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? And like, I, I'm like, let's look at the EGTs. That's why I got these. And uh, the number one, the number one was just way colder than the rest. And I'm like, what the fuck? And I'm like, I'm like, all right, let's, let's move coils. And I moved coils, didn't change anything. And I'm like, let's move plug wires or let's, let's, you know, let's check continuity on plug wires. Let's move plugs. And I'm like, okay. And I'm like, it can't be injectors. Um, and I'm like, maybe a rocker arms off or something like that. So I pulled the valve covers off and I'm like, that's all normal. And I'm like, what the fuck? I'm like, this is not making any, any sense. We were and ruining I, our own night. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm doing a compression check. <laughs> it was like check. literally before we were going to hibachi or something. Yeah. And, and we're like, my, let's, my let's like, we're fix waiting. this and I'm like, before we think about this the whole time. At I'm like, my, my plug is 300 degrees colder. No, and the strangest thing about it is when you started it up, they were all good. It was like 300, 400. Yeah. 500 and then it went 600 oh, yeah. and stopped now, there yeah. and then the rest were 900 and i'm like what on earth is going on and then i'm like let's change fuel system so i switched from e85 to methanol does the exact same thing and i'm like how the fuck is this happening there's no way i've got two bad injectors on the same hole what are the chances of that um long story longer 
I start unplugging. I start unplugging them one at a time. Well, it's on the ethanol tune, and I'm like, I fucking smell methanol. Mm -hmm. I switched the two plugins. And I labeled them like set A, set uh -huh. A. Oh, you did. Yeah, there's so a label. After, after the fact, what I did is I put a green like highlighter mark on all of the <laughs> methanol injectors on the top. So like at a glance, I can go, okay, all the methanol injectors mm -hmm. are plugged into the methanol injectors. Yeah. That's one of those mistakes you only make once, though. One you didn't time. need you didn't need the green stuff. You would have figured that out instantly the next go around. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. So, yep. but yeah, I was like, that's what I did. So basically, we made a full pull one time on because yeah the whole the, what was funny was when i was on the methanol tune the ethanol residual fuel pressure kept dropping little by little because it was firing the ethanol so we made like a full pull on methanol fuel load on an ethanol injector with diminishing fuel pressure right. and, then I, and then i was like oh well that's it i just nuked my motor and then did another compression check and i was like okay we're good like don't yeah. ever do that again yeah like an idiot and that's why I label them. But I mean, you have to be able to read. Yeah, so, you do. Yeah, and reading's for rich people, you know. <laughs> no, you know, we ain't doing that around what here. What is it? You talk like a fag. <laughs> <laughs> you, quoting idiocracy again. Not trying to get. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> Why does he talk like that? Yeah. Um, but, be un. Matt, you said you had something—a question from the where someone. Yeah, there is uh, <clears throat> there's a whole bunch of them here. Uh, well, here's a, I'll just read one before I proofread anymore. Uh, I'm proofreading and skipping to find a better one, and that's not working out. Uh, <laughs> I have an S10 with a 5.3 and a 75mm turbo. I cannot get it to build more than 6 pounds of boost on the brake. I have 18 pounds on the dome, but it will go... But, it will go higher than six pounds. I think he means it won't go higher than six pounds. I would say, like, how high is your converter? And then what's your turbine? And then a whole bunch of other things there. Has he tried, to, sure? has he tried to go up in? Uh, has he tried to go up in um, in RPM? Yeah, I mean that's. I'm sure it's just an RPM threshold. Like making your turbo hot side smaller. If it's like a double overhead three inch garbage can fire. Uh, you can, you can make it like a 190 hot side if it has a small turbine and you would see significant gains. A lot of the people that say they can't make enough boost, I think have poor hot sides because eights for eight could light a off shelf S 475 with the largest T six at like 3,500. I could, I, I lifted one time and it was cresting 20 pounds at 3,500. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I was RPM or converter from what I found. Spit my guts out of this thing on the two step in my garage, but uh, but yeah, it's I had a custom converter from Jake's and he fucking nailed it. Right. And I remember the... Ronnie Forrester folded rods that one time. Yeah, Matt. he did it. Yeah, he loaded a bass tune in a micro squirt and like, grabbed it and it hit like bop, 20... bop, bop, yeah. he just stared at it and it was like cracking the two step in the high twenties and it went blah it spit on out in his driveway. <laughs> no, he like... didn't do it. You were like you were like, check your compression, you folded rods. He's like, You think? And you're like, I do, and he did, and oh, it was like that's, yeah, he didn't it was actually like thirty or forty PSI lower than the rest. He was like, Damn it. <laughs> I'm like, Yeah, that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> one thing I've one thing I've learned is that like a lot of times when people like have a concern about building boost on the trans brake is that they're usually at too low of an RPM, uh, and they usually lied to their converter guy. Yeah, that's what that's I. That's usually too. like the number one thing, right? Like it's funny to me, like when people like they get on Facebook because like this is what everybody does now in racing world is like they saw like Jim Bob just make two thousand horsepower with whatever, so now they call to order their converter from whomever. And they say, oh, well, he's got the same shit I do. Yeah. So this thing's going to make 2,000 horsepower, right? And the converter guy's like, really? Is it now? And they're like, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because so-and-so just made 2,000. Oh, okay. So they built a torque converter that's going to hold 2,000 horsepower at 3,200 pounds. And they put it in the car and they pull it in fucking first gear and it shuts the motor off. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, what happened? What do you mean what happened? The thing's got it by the nuts because it doesn't make shit for power. That's what happened, you know? Um, Diesel low but, stall. <laughs> yeah, and that, and then like like in the LS community, it seems like everybody's like, 
Well, I got 22 degrees and I don't understand why it doesn't. And it's like, what do you mean? My favorite is everyone's like, yeah, I built a custom table of Yanks 40 degrees of timing. I'm like, well, now the motor makes 75 horsepower. Right, right. <laughs> Yeah. Right, congratulations. And you cannot climb the converter because you literally have swapped your shit with a Biggs and Stratton. Right. <laughs> it just can't. Like, stop. Or they're trying to do everything at 2200 RPM and they don't understand yeah. why. It like do on uh, all those right. stuff that I do, I have no ignition modifiers. I'm just coming up on the trans brake. The converter is doing its job. Unbelievable. Well, when you get into some of the big turbo stuff, you have to. Well, I get that, but these are people with simple combinations that can't light them. Yeah. Well, no you have reason. to ask Facebook for what the solution is. You know what yeah. I mean? Well, and PM then, me. PM me. We'll take yeah. care of you. We'll take care of you. That's a basement dweller who's going to make fucking 40% on some bullshit. We'll then take I'm gonna care of you. Don't yeah. listen to the people that say, we'll take care of you and PM me. Yeah. I never understood like why you have to PM for a price. Just say it. Yeah, I tell everybody. I mean, unless like I can understand like if you're a dealer for something and like you can't advertise below map. Yeah, it's yeah. A, no, you it's can't either. advertise below map. So, like, I understand that. Like, like we don't, we don't advertise anything below map, right? Yeah, we don't. PM means I'm gonna mess with your pricing. It's like going to a dealer and they're like sliding the car price to you. Well, and you're like, what, me, what's the like, price? <laughs> the way we operate is like, are you gonna buy this one item? Then it's this much money. Do you need do you need help to like do a whole bunch of shit? Like you need to buy a whole bunch of shit. Well, then now we have the ability to move a little bit on price on some stuff. But yeah, like, obviously, the parts then, market, the parts market for everybody listening, the aftermarket parts market. Um, if you think that we make a living off of that, you are dead wrong. There is no money in it. There is next to no money in it. Joe, you can attest. <laughs> we spent. This was like a hundred years ago with uh, before Precision turned into like the rock star brand that they are. Precision Turbo did a $50,000 buy in mm -hmm. to get onto their deepest like price level, which I think was like wholesale distributors, what they called it. Yep. And like within three weeks, I could buy everything for like $20 more than what my cost was from other places. So clearly, like they were getting the same discount that I was getting, they were marking up whatever part it was by like $20 and then they were, they were okay with making $20 after doing a $50,000 buy-in. Yep. Like it's, just, it's point. like <laughs> half a percent or something. Like it just like, if you talk to an accountant and you tell them that you're selling somebody something and you're making less than 20% profit margin, they're basically going to tell you that you're going to go out of business in the next six months. Right. You, you but like this industry, <laughs> yeah, this industry works on a far less than a 20% markup unless you're selling you know chinese ebay parts yeah so we kind of talked about that a little bit earlier but yeah this that's why i've just quit selling parts a hundred percent it's just not worth my time because then depend like if you're selling parts in your shop that you're installing that's a different ball game right but if you're just trying to sell parts online for every 100 part like price quotes that you give you're going to get one sale because most of the people asking for a price are, aren't even in the market to really buy. They're like, all right, I'm going to buy this part four years from now. So let me start pricing it out now. Uh, so it, it's the, this the industry only, is terrible. The only that. good thing I can say about like for our business and like what we do is that our customers, um, like we, like I, I'm not exactly known for giving the best deals on anything. Like I'm not, I and mean, it's because I won't because it, I know what takes after the sale. So our customers will, that buy parts from us, they're, they're awesome to me because they understand that like, if they call, I'll help them. Like, well, that's exactly it. Like you, you're in that rare position where you can sell this stuff at map or, you know what, you don't have to sell it $1 over cost because people right. aren't coming to you for, for your price on that product. They're coming for you to help them set it up and make it work. Like we just, where, Three we quarters just, of the people just, on the internet are just trying to sell it, you know, for the cheapest price, and and that's right. how they're making their living. Two totally well, different ball games. It's hard we, to get in the position you're in. It, it is, and I'm grateful for the position that we're in. Like we just sold a whole bunch of parts to a guy, and he got done like installing everything. And he, well, he didn't get done installing. He was about to start installing everything, right? And he's like, "Hey, do you think you can give me a hand with like a startup tune or something, right?" And I was like, "Yeah, just send me like an email with like everything you're going to put in this car." Right. Yep. So we already had a list of like everything that he bought from us. 
And then he sends me a list and he's got like shock travel and he's got tra converter charge and trans main line and all this shit. Right. And he's like, I don't really know what I'm doing with wiring, blah, blah, blah. So like for me, it took like 12 minutes. I made him a, a pin map, like in the software, like built a pin map, shoved it into an Excel spreadsheet, um, built a startup file for it. Like got the firing order for him, all that done. Uh, cam and crank set up, blah, blah, blah. And I shoot him over an email with a startup tune with all the inputs set where they're supposed to be, all the outputs set where they're supposed to be. They're all programmed already, done for them. You know what I mean? And like, I'm, I'm just being honest. Like I can copy and paste the shit from like other tune-ups that I have, you know what I mean? And just import yep. it into, to make it work for him just because I know how to use the software well. And um, I send it over to him and I send him an email and my email is like maybe two paragraphs long. And it's like, Hey, here's an Excel spreadsheet that you can print to make life easier when it comes to wiring it. Here's, you know, whatever, like, this is where this goes, this is where that goes. Um, and then here's the tune up, load it in the computer. Everything's already scaled. It's all done. Put it in the computer. It took me 30 minutes total, right? To like from reading his email to composing something and shipping it off to him. It saves him six weeks. Absolutely. And, and he's like, like the, the and, and he, he, he calls and he says, dude, or he sends an email, like whatever, maybe two and a half months later, which was just, I think like last week. And he, uh, he's like, this motherfucker sounds great. It runs great. It fired right up. He's like, I'm so pumped. I'm like, man, you're welcome. You know what I mean? And he was, and he was appreciative of the fact that he bought everything from us and he paid damn near retail for everything. But like, he at least got a service that helped, you know, back That's in the what day, people need like to understand Steve Morris, when you're trying to... not that long okay. ago, a couple of years ago, made a video about that. Like, don't call for the cheapest thing on price. Don't call for whatever. Don't call. Like, he's like, you're, yeah. you're calling, you're getting an engine from me. I'm giving you support. I'm going to answer the phone. I'm going to give you a startup. I'm going to help you with a problem. He's like, that's what you're paying for. And if you want anything less than that kind of service, go the hell away. Like it right. was basically his video. Yeah. What were you saying, Joe? There's, there's a lot to be said about picking your person, your shop, whatever it is, and buying a majority or a bulk of everything from one place. The biggest thing is that you're going to get a combination of stuff that's going to work together. When mm -hmm. you're called 30 different people for 30 different parts, they might all sell you what they think is the best part for that, you know, that one thing, but that doesn't necessarily mean that all 30 of those parts are going to work together. So if when you get the one package from the one place and then you get that extra service of like setting all that up, like that's, that's where setting like doing all this stuff becomes worthwhile, but it's just become so easy to, to shop around on the internet and you know, you save 20 bucks on this part here and here's this yep. flash sale here. So I'm going to buy this part. And then you just end up with a bunch of parts that might not work. And then when it comes time to install them and set them up and configure everything, you didn't buy much of anything from anybody. So nobody's just going to like do that for you. Right. As, right. as, as to where we're like, yeah, you just, you know, and that's the start of the, the part out. Life happens. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Life's yeah. getting yeah. busy. You know, we got our second or third on the way. And oh, usually it's because like usually the post that I see is like, "This is bullshit." I work so hard, nobody will outwork me, <laughs> right? Uh, and uh, and I just can't make it. And the, the fucking world's so fucking tough, and they're out to get me. And it's because I broke a rocker arm, and I'm just done. So fuck it, we're selling the whole thing. The converter, nobody come over the converter and thing was just the highlight of that. The Dragon guy's store converter that expired from uh, Texas. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that whole the converter killer guy. I mean, yeah, yeah that just nutshells that. That's <laughs> why that was just so huge because yeah. the guy was like, Texas Speed ruined my torque converter. And he had it like outside in the rain. Right. And like, d right. dude, are, like that's an awesome troll. Like you're trolling really well. And he's like, no. And we're like, oh, my goodness, you are <laughs> you need help. <laughs> yeah, but it's too bad you're on sloppy public because we're just going to drag you through mud for six months he yeah he, he was he was impressive i liked him i like that uh uh circle d jakes and everybody were making posts about expiration dates yeah yeah it was pretty good i did enjoy that that um i do like to watch uh uh people um, thrashing bring bring back bullying i'm gonna make shirts <laughs> make bullying that was one of the best again. parts of turbo that was the best part again. of yellow bullet
Like if yes. you ever went on the uh, Yellow Bus, I love best, that place. Does Yellow Bus still get exist? dragged? Yeah, I was there it the does. other day. It does still exist, but it's not nearly as uh, uh, as uh, good as it when it changed owners or something. Yeah. You know, back then, it has never been the same. Well, Everyone the was reality like, ah, is that I'm out. Facebook, Facebook ruined forums, and forums were so much better than Facebook. I yeah. agree. And now we all sound so like we're 96 year olds old. Yeah, yep. We're total forum boomers. Back in my day, you had to make a post, pray to God you worded it right, pray to God that some old timer didn't find the exact thread that you restarted from four years ago and used a search <laughs> function noob and you're like oh, yeah. sorry i'm so sorry oh, please wow. forgive me yeah, that's where i got good at I, I that's where i got good at like prefacing it with like look i know i'm dumb i know everybody <laughs> yeah. here is smarter than me you well, have everybody to dis- appreciates that you, and have to, you know how to, to dis- answer that's how you disarm people first you, you tell them how stupid you are and how you graciously <laughs> and are, are you know come to them humbly for their help and then they're please like, bestow right. me with your knowledge yes. You just, you just, and I learned that in the army when, when I was in for a few years. If you said somebody called it, said something gay, you're like, oh, yeah, I'm gay. I love sucking them. And they're like, you just, <laughs> you just fire it right back, and everybody's like, yep, you can't. You, You're never gonna get them. No. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Um, Big hey, ones. Uh, I love them. Hey. Um, so I have a question. How do you? Uh, how, uh, Joe? This is this one's for you. How well it's for everybody really, it doesn't really matter. How would you handle um uh somebody like you've tuned a car for them and they're on the dyno and everything goes well and they're happy? How do you handle um the the service after the sale? Like maybe maybe give somebody a rundown of like what um uh because I, I feel like people that are watching this are, are like, oh man, these guys are a bunch of bitter assholes and yada yada. And that's not the truth, you know what I mean? Like that that isn't at least for me it isn't. I mean, I'm an asshole, I'm just not that bitter. Um, All of us spend a very significant amount of time helping out a whole bunch of people for absolutely free. Right. So right, you right, can't right. you can't do that and then also just be an asshole. Like right. We all joke right. around and have fun, and every single person that has a job like vents about things that aren't maybe the greatest, and everybody well, deals with situations and things, and we just try and make fun of it. Right. Right. So, like, how do you <laughs> handle somebody who? Um, thinks that you should be maybe you don't deal with this i don't know i do your boundaries with people yeah like like how do like actually cameron's had to learn and do a lot of that recently and i'll be right back i have to take out my trash before i forget and it's 3 a.m and i go to bed and my trash and my makes perfect sense yeah Scroll free. go take your trash out um well, yeah so... you, you, you tuners have to deal with a lot more me i'm just like hey uh, I'm like, if you have any leaks or any questions, there's, you know, there's tech support grouped in that price. I will gladly answer some questions. And sometimes it's something I didn't do. It's you know, three valve forward starts misfiring or, you know, I, I, I build it in the winter and then the summer rolls around and their fuel pumps weak or something like that. But yeah, it's, I, I'm probably, yeah, it's, it's not as applicable to me, but I, I would suggest, you know, any tuner be like, look, like we did this. If the setup has changed, that money is spent. Like we right. need to, we need to start looking at, you know, some more money for labor because time is money. And like, I'll give you a short story. Um, I heard it in a podcast recently, this guy said it was the Texas, one of the Texas speed owners. He said, people that pay the least demand the most. Absolutely, I'll, give you, yeah. I'll give you this story. People all the time come to my shop. Like, I go to six L eighty dumped and I'm like, it is $5,000. I can do it tomorrow. I keep them built in stock. And you have a one year unlimited mile warranty. And those people are like, it's on the way. I'm like, okay. And then I had this new Dodge Dart show up recently where it was a shifter cable was broken and I diagnosed it. And I'm like, I called the dealer. It was supposed to be there one day. And then it took like two or three days, but like two days into it, the girl's like, I need my car back. And I'm like, your shifter cable is broken. And she's like, well, everything works except park. Can you put it back together? And I'm like, I've got like an hour in it already. So you want me to put it back together so you can go drive it? for a day or two until the shifter cable shows up and she's like yeah i'd really appreciate it i'm like i'm like just know that i'm like this is all free at this point because I'm, I'm gonna have like two or three hours in this at this point she's like i, I appreciate it well, that was two weeks ago I called her because i got the shifter cable in she hasn't showed back up so no, it's like not. and i and i just i try to vet out the people that are are i call them uh headaches i'm like i just i can I'm, I'm, my headache detector is pretty good so I just try to vet out the headaches. And also, since I know what headaches are like, I try not to be headaches to people I buy stuff from or 
that provide me services. I was just talking to Pete Nichols today and I'm like, I'm sorry for being needy. He's like, you are my easiest customer by far. And I'm like, well, that makes me feel good that I'm not, uh, cause I don't ever want to get turned down for service cause I'm an asshole. Right. Right. Well, so like what I deal with is that people like, like I fire up a car, get it running whatnot. And then like, like what happens is like a lot of people think that like, Hey, you got my car running, you wired it and everything's great. But like, now I need you as my tuner. Right. So like Joe, like you deal with it, right. You, you run their car on the dyno and everything's great. You know, they're all happy. And then they're like, well, I need you as my tuner. So I need you to be available on like Friday. Thousand dollars for me to show up. Well, no, I mean like they, they don't want you there. They just want you available. So it's, it's kind of funny that you asked this because this is one of the things that I struggled with. And the only solution was for me to make a decision that I, I in, in the direction that I didn't want to make. And I do mostly streetcar stuff. Mm -hmm. And I kind of had to make this decision to steer away from race car stuff with the exception of people that are self-sufficient and people I've known and, you know, those exclusions. But when people contact me for race car stuff, I almost always refer them to, I have different, you know, different people that, for different things. Mm -hmm. I'll always rent them the dyno time, but I can't be available to support them for the racetrack stuff. Cause I'm working Monday through Friday and they're racing Friday through Sunday. And then maybe even sprinkle in a couple of like track rentals and stuff in between there. And that's how you get divorced. Right. Is if, if you are, are working that much, and then the other side of it is there's a lot of people that are significantly more experienced with the racetrack stuff than I am. So I feel like I can't charge to be available on the weekend as much as, you know, say somebody that's been just doing nothing but tuning drag cars for the last 10 years, knows far more than I do. And he's sure. charging $300 per car like on a Saturday, I can't do that. I can't do that for $300. I can't do that for $600. Right. So it, it doesn't make sense for me to charge two or three times more expensive, like to be more, two or three times more expensive than the guy that is better than me. So like the only solution was to just say that I don't do that. I don't um, offer services for that. Is what I say for the racetrack stuff. And, and it's tough because I enjoy it. I like it. I would love to learn more about it, but it's just like a, a time management thing on the, the, you can't work 95 hours a week and, and maintain a normal life. And it, it's not about like just the money itself. I, I don't know. It's just when you know somebody that you can refer somebody to that is cheaper and has far more experience than you, mm -hmm. I feel like it's doing the customer a disservice by, like bringing them on board when it makes far more sense to refer them to the guy that that's what he does. If that makes sense. Makes you right. wish you had more time, but you just don't like, there's a few of my yeah, buddies and, that have cars that, that yeah. I could help them out. Cause Matt's like my best friend. And I'm like, Hey Matt, can you help out with this? But then at that point it's like, I have six of my own projects. Like I don't, yeah. I can't help you with that. Yeah. And I have some people that I help out with and, and some long-term relationship, long-term customers. And we play around here and there, but, like, man, is it's so brutal when you have 75 things that you need to be doing, but you go to the racetrack on a Saturday and you're there for eight hours and they make two passes. Like the whole time that I'm there, I'm like frantically walking up and down the whole track like 700 times because I'm like, we're just sitting here. We're not doing anything like I should be doing this. I should be doing that. And uh, right. And another it, Mopar broke a differential. And then. Yeah. And then like <laughs> we went, we were at my, my daughter's school. And they had like this like parent conference like thing and I had a car at the track and I was remote tuning it. And of course there's like this window of about an hour where I'm doing this thing at my daughter's school and like, sure, sure enough, like that's when they finished a pass. And anytime anybody finishes a pass at the track in their eyes, they're making the next pass in Ten minutes. Three, three minutes, 12 so seconds. Like, you have, you have to do it right then and there. So like we're at a parent teacher conference at my daughter's school and she was like four years old at the time and i'm like literally sitting on this tree that fell down with a laptop in my lap in the <laughs> middle of the woods like tuning this car 
with a hotspot on your phone. Absolutely, one hundred percent. And I, that's when I kind of like made this decision. I'm like, you know, this, this, I love this stuff, and I would love to, at this point. I would rather do it for free because I enjoy doing it with somebody that has like a reasonable, like expectation and schedule, right. than to charge and uh, you know, and have to do that. I felt like such a dipshit. And I'm sure my daughter was looking at me like, what in the hell are you doing? Like, yeah. Uh, and, and then like was... sometimes too, it's like you look at a log and you're like, okay, the car went the fastest it's ever been. Like, what do you want to like, do you want to put one pound of boost in it? Do you want to leave it the same? Like, you don't, you don't always have to make these big wholesale changes. Well, so, everybody needs to run a PB every pass. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Because that's the way it has to work. And if you don't understand that, then you're the wrong guy for the job. That's what I've learned, at least. Like you said, like my biggest gripe with tuning cars um, is the unrealistic expectations. You know what oh, I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like there's some there's some guys out there that have done absolutely amazing things with some very low um, budget stuff. Right. Like the, like like um, like the stock block you know, LS world and the stock bottom end. And I don't, I, I, again, I don't really keep up with all of it. Right. But like a couple people that come to mind, I know Capizzi is like done unbelievably well with like the stock yeah. lock or stock bottom end or whatever, whatever, which, whatever one it is. Right. Yeah. And he's gone like exceptionally fast for what he has. Right. But I know Jonathan, not very well, but I know him well enough to know that he didn't just like, stumble upon a recipe for success he's a smart guy busted. yeah well and he busted his ass to find it right yeah you tested a bunch yeah. of stuff you constantly worked on the car you don't the the big thing that people don't understand with that is you don't just go out and buy these like 17 parts and you put them in your car and now you're going 430s with the stock bottom end right like it's going to take you 10 years of experimenting to get to that point right a buddy so of mine was talking about one of my friends has a a I think the, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, two valve Mustang. It was one of, but now it's a Coyote. But one of my guys that works for me was like, I can't believe he goes so fast. He's always doing this. And he's just talking about like, and he's got some growing up to do. And I was like, he said, he, basically he said he makes it look easy. And I was like, you don't see the up till three at night or in the morning doing shit. You don't, you don't, you don't think you don't see any of that. And I just thought about it. And I, I came up with what I thought was a clever phrase. And I said, it ain't easy making it look easy. No, not at all. And, um, you know, like the, the, the guys that have gotten like, who've like, there's another dude. And I, I, again, I'm terrible with names like some other dude. He's, I think he's like the guy who's done really good with a 4.8. Jack Roberts squirrel tuned. He's in the chat. Oh, is he? Okay. It's um, Jack and another dude with like a firebird or something. We're trading a stock bottom end long block record for a long time. And it yeah. extreme, they were going extremely fast. And well, I, 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 if he's watching, I apologize for not remembering who wow. you are, but I'm shitty at that anyway. So like, don't hold that against me. But I, I like, I remember seeing um, some of the updates. Like, I think I'm friends with him on Facebook or something, or maybe I just see like the YouTube things pop up or something. I don't know. But the dude like kicks his own ass to like accomplish what he's done. Right. So like Capizzi is a guy who's done that. And then the, the, the squirrel guy, a squirrel tuned guy has done it. Um, it's like, I'm just talking about the LS stuff. And it's like, you, you can tell, like, I don't know, when I see like some of the videos, from, like either of these guys, I can tell in their eyes, right? Because like, you can tell in the eyes of despair of like the guys who've done this shit for a long time that they're like, fuck, why do I keep doing this shit? You know what I mean? Like, why yeah. do I do oh, yeah. like making a video? They're like, man, we had such a great time. And like in the back of their head, like, I swear to God, one more and I'm fucking putting a 12 gauge in my mouth. You know what I mean? Like, they, <laughs> like I'm yeah. so close to ending it. Jamie just walked in at a great time. Yeah, Jamie, Jamie just walked. Jamie walked in at a great time. I'm talking about. I got to take a leak. Uh, but like, um, so, well, no. so. Say hi. No, Devin just said I walked in. Yeah, it's perfect time, Devin. I'm like, yeah. perfect, yeah. perfect conversation, Devin. Yeah, exactly. Devin just doing Devin things, and I'm saying That's... Joe Simpson. Look, I'm saying Joe Simpson looks like Steve Burian. Oh Jesus Christ! For a second, he did. <laughs> oh, poor Steve. <laughs> uh, oh God. But uh, but no. Anyway, so like, what I was getting at is like the people with unrealistic expectations are the ones that like just need to be turned off you know what i mean Real like in. 
Well, it's just like I just turn them off. You know what I mean? Like I'm done with them. Like I have people that they'll contact us and they're like, oh, I want to buy. Like The big one that we get a lot is like I want to buy a profiler, like a traction control unit from Davis. The you know? Davis, yeah. Yeah, so like a profiler, like with all the bells and whistles, is thirty five hundred bucks, right? It's a box that's like this big, and it's thirty five hundred dollars, right? It's so like tough to understand the value. When yeah, like dollar per pound is really difficult, right? Like <laughs> really hard, right? Is it so when you're at the giant food store and it's telling you uh, price per pound, it's yeah. difficult to swallow. <laughs> right, right, right. Like this one's tough. You know what I mean? Like the, 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 this one's tough. So like. So we'll get people that call like, you know, I want to buy a profiler and they're like, oh, okay. You want to buy a profiler? What kind of, so when I talk to them, I'm like, what kind of racing are you trying to do and whatnot? And this is where I'm getting at with unreal, unrealistic expectations. They'll say, uh, well, you know, we know prep race. Okay. Well, I think I need a no, I need, I think I need a profiler. Okay. Why? Well, um, you know, we go like six O's on the backside of the racetrack. How fast is everybody else going? Oh, like, uh, you know, five nineties. Okay. Are you close to, you know, well, we should go six O's. Well, has the car ever ran? <laughs> well, no, but I think that we should go six O's and, but I think that the profiles are going to help us. So that's when I'd start telling them like, what are your real expectations? Well, I think we could probably go five fifties. And I'm like, everybody else that does this runs five nineties on the backside of the racetrack. Six O's like the front runners run five ninety six O's. I'm just using generic numbers, so like people in the comments don't hang my balls up and dry about like, oh, we go five seventy. I go five seventies. Right, right. Like I don't Every, want to everybody me. thinks Gravel lane. Control is going to knock a half a second off their time. It doesn't well, matter how five seventies. <laughs> that's what I'm getting at. It's like it's like so they so they call and they're like, well, we're going to go five fifties, and I'm like, well, hold on a second. Well, what? Okay, so you're going to go run five fifties while everybody else runs five nineties, but you're going to fucking change the game. Like you're going to revolutionize this shit. Like why why haven't you fucking revolutionized this shit already? Like what happened? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like why aren't you already fucking killing the game? You know, and they just, well, I just need the profiler. Well, then I'm like, I, now I don't even want to sell it to them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Cause I'm like, well, this is going to be a fucking problem because yeah. they're going to buy this. And then they're going to be like, well, why didn't I just run five fifties? Because hey, I, I just up. spent four grand on this. Why isn't my car any faster? Right. So like the unrealistic expectation people mm -hmm. are like the, probably the, the ones that are the toughest to deal with because they built a car that should run like, like if it's a radio car, let's just say it should run like four eighties. Right. And, and and I've said this before, like six O's in the eighth is a really fast car. Like in the grand scheme of life, it's a fast car. In the grand scheme yeah. of life, um, in in the in the race car world, it's not a very fast car, right? But in the grand scheme of life, if you put like anybody from the fucking grocery store in the <laughs> passenger seat of a of a car that runs six O's in the eighth, there's a good chance they're going to shit themselves. Absolutely. In the passenger seat of that car. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah. no, I just wanted to go buy apples. It's like, well, no, hop <laughs> yeah. in this car and I'm going to make you shit your pants, right? And, <laughs> and they're like, okay. That's a t-shirt right there. Right, right, right. <laughs> hop in. Uh, here's y'all kids like shit and apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's like, so when people get online and they're like, well, if it doesn't run fucking four fifties and get 20 miles a gallon, it ain't shit. And it's like, well, go fuck yourself first off. And secondly, <laughs> You don't have that. Like, you don't have the 450 car that gets 20 miles a gallon. So fuck off, right? Because you don't. Like, the you, typical guy that's commenting and saying that shit online doesn't have it. You know what I mean? But um, I think there's just been such a, a, a stigma put out amongst people that they forget to have fun with this shit. That's All they think where... about is they have to fucking, they have to have this thing that's completely unobtainable. That's what I was going at with the... We're an hour, two hours ago, when we were talking about the Dragon Drive stuff. Like, it's unfortunate to watch so many people spend so much money and dedicate so much time to something that is clearly they're not having any fun with. They're not getting any enjoyment out of it. Right. They're miserable. And it doesn't need to be that way. Like, at, once you're at that point, why are you doing it? Right. Like, right. would you rather have a 480 car that makes you want to? blow your brains out because your whole life is a train wreck to try to maintain that car. Right. Or we had to have a car that's a second slower. You can drive it to the grocery store. You can take your kids around the, you know, to get ice cream in it. You can right. take it to a drag and drive. Like there's so many other things that you can do with it. And it's all budget related. You know, if you, sure. you make $6 million a year, like sure you can afford that 390 car. Sure. But 
if you're making 50 grand a year, like maybe a 460 car isn't what you should be trying to build. Right, right. Well, that's the other thing is that it's like absolutely devastating to people when like that breaks. You that's know what I mean? If, if, yeah, I think I say this once that, a podcast. They're like, well, skipping my mortgage payment this month. They're like, bro. <laughs> people yeah, need like, to understand that you uh, building a car is one cost and maintaining said car and being able to repair it when it breaks is another cost. And the faster that car goes, the more you're going to be leaning on that, essentially that whole second budget. And right. people forget about that. They're like, I have exactly this much money. I'm going to spend every penny of that plus $20,000 more. Yeah, they don't have money for coolant. The first time I need an oil change, I'm going to throw I'm, up. I, I'm just going to have to live in the car because I'm going to lose my house. Right, right. Yeah. And for me, it's like, it's a justifiability thing. Like, I could, you know. Can't pay a tow truck. Like, Jamie's is talking about can't, can't afford to bring it home when it breaks at the track. Like, that's a consideration. <laughs> right, uh, right. Like, yeah. My friend with the Subaru shop, I got to get him on. He's agreed to it. We just haven't lined it up. Uh, he and I, I was like, he said the cost of building your Subaru, he wants to include like a D-Series Civic. <laughs> because you're not going to get your Subaru back and you need something to drive with the 75% downtime you're going to be Anybody that's trying to do any of this stuff to their only car, like, deserves every bit of just terrible experience that they can get. <laughs> like, it's just an absolute common. If you have a car payment on your car, you should really be very strategic on how you choose to modify it. Like, I'm not going to say don't modify it at all, but I've got a I've got a 2022 F450 pickup, right? For sale. Will... For sale. <laughs> Yeah, because my twenty three is gonna be here soon, and uh, and don't and, and people watching don't think it's because I'm fucking rich. It's because I'm I was pretty crafty, and uh, I got into the twenty twenty two for an unbelievably good deal, and I'm gonna get paid a really big chunk of money for my twenty two and get the twenty three. Whatever. I don't are know we still at the point where used trucks are sell for more than new trucks? Yeah, 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 yeah. And you know what? I don't have to justify my position. So if anybody's judging me, go fuck yourself. Yeah. I don't care. So anyway, I have this 2022 F450, right? And I would love to do a couple of things to it, right? And you're probably thinking like, oh, you want to lift it and put it on big roofs. No, I want to lower it because I'm sick and tired of jumping into it, right? Because right? my back hurts and my knees are shot. So I want to lower it, right? And lower uh, trucks are just cooler. Your I knees were shot 15 years ago. <laughs> Right, exactly. So, like, I want to lower it a little bit, but you know what? It will void. It will void my warranty, so I won't do it. Right? It's because I have to drive it every day. Yep. Some people will buy a new car, and maybe they put like I don't know twenty five percent down on it, and they're like, "Oh, we really need to keep up with the Joneses and modify the shit out of this." You know what I mean? So they, whatever. I don't know how they come up with the money, and they start doing some bullshit to the fucking car. And then they're like, man, we got to put a whole standalone EFI system in this 2019 fucking Mustang. Bitch, the bank don't want that Holly Dominator in the car. <laughs> you know what I mean? The bank don't want that. Like, leave it yeah. alone. The bank likes their car the way it was, you know? Pay the son of a bitch off first and then start doing whatever you want to it. And exactly. also, or, more importantly, buy a cheap, like, the older the car, the lighter it is, the faster it's going to go for the, yeah. the least amount of the money. The simpler like, the electronics are, the less nannies yeah, there's, there's there are so many to advantages defeat. Going older. Ford Fairmont. Ford no, Fairmont. Fairmont. Ford <laughs> Fairmont. <laughs> well, the problem is Ford Fairmonts are the same price as the and truck. I, someone fucking them. ruined the price. Excuse me. Someone ruined the price of Ford Fairmonts. <laughs> we should well, have a talk with this guy. So, I, I mean, like, just build an older car. You don't need to build something brand new. And just build something within your budget. You, you know what's funny to me is like guys that have like they're building it, they're in the middle of building a car. They ain't never been faster than like like six eighties in the eighth, right? And they're just online steady talking shit about how they're gonna fucking light the world on fire, right? Yeah. So then they get the car done. This has happened like three times now, like in front of me. This has happened, right? Like right in front of me. I finished the car for them. They build a bad fucking hot rod. I sit them in the car and I make them fire it up and you see their eyes go fucking white. Yep. And you're like, what is wrong with this thing? And it's like, nothing's wrong with it, fucker. You're going to have to hold the pedal down while that sounds way more intimidating. I might so, have even told this story on the last time we did this, but I had a, a customer 
back in the Honda days, and I'd known him long enough, I could consider him a friend, but he wanted 800 horsepower. And at that point, 800 horsepower was like 1800 horsepower now. Right. I was like, dude, you don't need anywhere remotely close to 1800 horse or 800 horsepower. Like, what are you doing? So we built it and made 800. But when I gave it back to him and let him drive it for the first time, I turned it down to 500 mm -hmm. and he drove it and he came back. He is shaking white knuckles. Like he looked like he thought he saw a ghost. I'm yeah. like, see, man, you could, I don't, I don't know what the dollar figure was, but like you could have saved yourself 20 grand by building a 500 horsepower car rather than building this 800 horsepower car. Right. You right. Right. You didn't need that at all. And it's, right. you know, that's street tire front wheel drive stuff. Like anything more than 500 horsepower slows you down. Right. It's, well, it's kind of, I remember this car that we did about two years ago as a nitrous car. And, um, there was a really nice family who uh, who owned, it was uh, the the father and the kid and the, bro the brother right they're like they're all in a racing right they're all in the cars yeah. and they had nice shit you know and um, I think they had like one of them had a Corvette like with twins on it and like another one had like a like a new Corvette you know what I mean another another guy had like a, a maybe a Camaro with like a bunch of nitrous on it or something like a new Camaro but these are like new cars with like rubber bushings and fucking you know what I mean like the factory transmissions and shit. So they decide to go all in and build this fucking nitrous car, this nitrous race car, right? So beautiful car, extremely light. They had it built by a very good chassis shop. They put a um, stock bore space small block in it, right? So it's like 500 cubic inch, right? Because it's like 11 two deck height. It's like absurd, right? Mm -hmm. So they bring it to us. We wire it all up. The kid ain't never been in nothing like this. The father's never been around this. You know what I mean? Like, they don't know what the fuck they're getting into. But their buddy does. Their buddy knows all about this shit, right? So the buddy comes, like, so the father, the kid, and the buddy, they come to, they come to pick the car up, right? So we're in my shop. It usually means the buddy's having a field day just spending the shit out of the dad's money. Do so, well, I don't know what, no, because, like, the dad <laughs> and the son were all about it. Like, this is what they wanted to do, you know? So they come to pick up the car, and, like, we're going over everything, and I'm showing them. And I'm like, uh. And like, and like, you can kind of see like the, we haven't fired the car up yet, but you can kind of see like, like the son is like a little apprehensive, you know, but the son's like 22, 23 years old. So I'm like, oh, well, you know, I get it. Right. So uh, I said, all right, well, why don't you hop in there and, and fire this thing up? You know, he's like, oh, okay. So he hops in there and I'm like kneeling in on the passenger door, like through the passenger door. And I'm like, all right, you know, this button does this. And I'm like giving him the run through of like what everything does and how it works, you know? I said, and this is like a kill switch. It's on the, it's on your, your center console area, like the trans tunnel area. If you have a problem, you just slap that, you know, whatever, it'll shut down the whole car. So it's okay. Okay. So I'm like, all right, just, you know, fucking hold the starter button down until it fires and it'll run, you know? And now this is like a 500 cubic inch small block, right? Like 15 and a half to one compression, fucking zoomies, like nitrous motor. This is not a, this isn't some weak bullshit, right? Yep. It fires up, and I don't. I don't know about you, but like, I don't. I'll never own a nitrous car, but I fucking love a nitrous car, like because they just sound bad. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah, I know what you mean the fifteen to one stuff is. Yeah, they just you get over that thirteen like, mark. It's pretty yeah. wild. Five hundred yeah, cubes and thirteen to one and up is is pretty wild. Yeah, it just sounds like radical, you know. Just so the router fires. small block is is so much more violent in every way than like a, equivalent big block. Right, right, right. So. It fires up and like, this is a, a single throttle body deal. I didn't spend a lot of time getting the tune up right on this thing. I just wanted it to fire up and idle. And he had a tuner that he was going to work with. So I was like, I don't give a shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, um, you know, I, I get it to fire. He, he hits the button and fires up and I'm like, I'm underneath the hood now. And I just kind of like grabbed the throttle just in case it was going to try to die on us. But it didn't. It's sitting there idling and the kid's. Dude, I'm telling you, the fucking eyes are like this. He and his fucking hands are like this on the steering wheel, shaking. We are in my garage. Bro, the car ain't moving. <laughs> yeah. We are in my fucking garage in park, and he's doing this. Holy fuck! And I'm like, huh? <laughs> and I look, and the dad's gone. I'm like, where did he go? He ran away because it's too fucking loud for him, right? And I'm like. Man, I'm a whoop this fucker in front of y'all. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you want to give, you know what I mean? Like, so I just, I fucking wrap the throttle real quick. That you gotta have fun with it. Jackson, at that, point. that thing through the through the lights. <laughs> yeah, he, I fucking, I whoop out real quick, like 3,500 RPM, nothing crazy, right? And a kid reaches down and slaps the e stop. Oh, shit. I'm like, I'm like, all right, okay. 
the buddy's standing there and he's like, that thing sounds like a bad mother. Like he's all amped up. You know what I mean? So I was like, well, what's wrong? And he's like, there's something wrong with it. And the, the guy in the, the driver's seat. And I said, what do you mean? He goes, it's creaking and it sounds like it's falling apart. And I'm like, it is. <laughs> and he says, what do you mean? I said, he's like, it's all brand new. I said, it is. I said, everything, every single second this thing's running, it's costing money. <laughs> and he's like, well, why is it, why is it creaking and rattling? And I said, dude, you built a race car. This ain't your core, your twin turbo Corvette. This is I a said, wooden this, roller coaster, Chief. I said, this is like a 2100 ish pound with you in it race car. Yeah, I was you, like, you got a Coke can with a roll cage. <laughs> right. I was like, remember when y'all were buying all that titanium and carbon fiber? Well, this is what you got. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, this is it. So he, uh, he was scared to death. And, um, I knew right away, like, well, this is going to get sold. You Did know the buddy I mean? end up driving it or did they sell it? They wound up selling it. They He wound up having he wound up having somebody else drive it a few times. And, and to his credit, they did try to get him to drive it and whatnot. He just wasn't comfortable in the car. And yeah. honestly, like, this is something else I'm pretty big on. If, something's, if somebody's not comfortable in a car, I won't ever go to the racetrack with them. I won't ever push them. Unless they want me to come to the racetrack with them and tell, help them try to teach them how to be comfortable in the car. Yeah. I will not work with somebody who is either A, if they are a um, liability, right? Like there was a dude that I wired a car for and uh, he was a fucking basket case and <laughs> he was he was reckless. You know what I mean? Like I thought he was going to kill somebody himself, really, you know? So like I just pulled away from him because he was a problem. But I won't deal with that. And I also will not send somebody down a racetrack to go very fast that they're not comfortable in because like, I don't want it on me. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to be responsible for somebody getting hurt. So, um, but like to their credit, they did try to go to the racetrack and they did try to get him comfortable and, and it just didn't work out. They wound up having somebody else drive the car for him a few times. They raced it. They grudge raced it. They did pretty good, but it just, it was out of their realm. You know what I mean? It's just, yep. and I, I even told them, I said, man, you built a hell of a really nice car and I understand hundred percent why you're selling it. Because it's just over your head. It's just not in your. You know what I mean? You gotta. You gotta step it up. You can't. You can't make that jump. Yeah. Yeah. They went from like that. Yeah. That like six fifty ish. You know, uh, uh, eighth mile car, six eighty ish eighth mile car to like a four thirties nitrous car. Yeah. And it's like, well, that was a bad move. And that's what happens in the Facebook world. Except for now, they have turbos. So like they can start off going like 580 and like work their way up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But this kid unfortunately decided to jump into nitrous where it's like, it's going to run 680s on motor and then you're going to hit it with a bunch of nitrous and it's going to go like fucking 430s. <laughs> and there's really no in between. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a time um, travel button. Right. Right. Like Skip it's either two and a half it's seconds it's off your 680 car. Yeah. It's a. Uh, That'll nitrous blur your is, eyeballs once or twice. Yeah, nitrous is an interesting game. It's not one that I like to play, you know. Yeah. But, I'm kind of uh, surprised you're still running your car quarter mile. I hate quarter mile. Yeah, it went to 18 and a half. Yeah, so for that's, everybody watching, that's a lot a mile an hour. And it's what's not it doing really, the what's it doing the eighth? 176 or something, 178, yeah. you know. For people in that's, the chat, that's, good enough. that's fast. <laughs> Well, I mean, it's just, uh, it's, yeah, it's easy thanks to Thanks for coming like, to my TED Talk. What is, I always it, say to people, because I run into people all the time, uh, I can tell by the way they look or answer when I say like, oh, you know, whatever in the eighth. And then I go, hey, that's a city block. Right. Everybody can right. kind of identify how long a city block is. And I'm like... It takes four seconds to cover a city block at 175 miles an hour. Right. And then they're like, oh, wow, that's extreme. That's like, yeah, wow. Mm -hmm. Well, when we did the, the front wheel drive stuff, I hated eighth mile because our cars didn't even start moving yet. Yeah, yeah, like, they didn't go. From the eighth mile to the quarter mile is, that was our racetrack. Everything else 10 second like, cars that trap 166. Yeah, right. so like, and then it took me a little while to like, reverse engineer the math on what an eighth mile car is and whatnot and then now that like you understand what's going on you're like man eighth mile just makes so much more sense for these cars that are that fast well, they're already winning at that point out the back what's the point of going that fast I and it's agree. just such so much more of a liability like if you crash at 170 that's pretty bad but you crash crash at 220 or 217 or whatever it is like that's a different ball game well you know um 
like I I don't like the cars going that fast. I know that sounds dumb considering like my business and my whole life revolves around fast cars, but um, I don't like the cars going that fast. And the reason being is that um, the race is over at the eighth anyway. You know what I mean? And um, and when they're going that fast, there's more there's more time that you're in the throttle, and there's more time in the shutdown, right? Which means there's more opportunity for failures, not on the engine or whatever, but like a tire blowout at 200. Guess what happens? They're fucked, right? Like, but if like maybe the shoot doesn't come out at 220. Well, fuck me. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. screw it, you know? But if but if you're at a if you're at a long shutdown quarter mile facility and you shut it off at the eighth and the shoot doesn't come out, well, that's okay. You know what I mean? We got that's plenty of time. Exactly why I said like I'm surprised that you're not doing more eighth mile stuff, eighth mile stuff. But I guess the dragon drive stuff, it's is it all quarter mile from what I've seen? Mostly, except for our event. Our event's all eighth mile because I'm not stupid. Well, there you go. That you know what I mean? All like, of my questions right there. That's yeah, why everybody so. should do our eighth mile event, uh, our our dragon drive event. No, well, unfortunately, the uh, there. unfortunately, the majority of the uh, Dragon Drive world is stuck in the quarter mile stuff. Like they're just stuck with it, and I don't really understand why. You know, it kind of is what it is. You know what I mean? I think it's a, it's a like almost like an ET thing. Yeah. You should almost be like once you go for anything to the eighth, you should race race eighth mile. Right. And then anything kind of slower than that, maybe it, I think it makes more sense to go quarter mile. But, you know what's you know what's always been interesting to me, and if there's anybody who's like a chassis guy or something in the chat, go ahead. We we're gonna have Jamie answer a few questions and then oh. s- say something to Joe. They were just asking uh, how many cars you have. That doesn't sound good. I gotta get something to drink anyway. I so think we ahead. have four. <laughs> she has fourteen. I think we have eighteen cars again. Yeah. I gotta cut you off real quick because this is a question I had for you. You clearly like having 175 inexpensive cars. Gun to your head, you had to pick an expensive car and you could only have one. What would it be? Me? She has some expensive Matt. cars. Oh, me? I know she has expensive oh, cars. I'm yeah, talking about I was Matt. Like, Bro, Matt likes what? $300 cars. <laughs> <laughs> if, if I had to get an expensive car? This is going to be good. Yeah. I like those Koenig zigs. I've never even seen one or anything, but I would probably buy like a... Uh, that uh regera or whatever it is it's 2300 horsepower and it's a four seater i probably they buy have that some cool innovation stuff i tuned one of those the christ i forget the model of it it had a like old uh, ccx with the four six in it i, I think so it had a ford the like, ccr and the ccx were the modular he borrowed the modular motor and did a lot of his own stuff to it it sounds about right. It had a uh, like a Ford modular. Like pick the the worst Ford engine that you can think of. Oh. Like that's the ECU that the car was literally like it was a used ECU. Oh, it had like a Crown Vic ECU. That's what it, you're exactly. About. It had like a Crown Vic ECU. SCT, and, like, you had the Diablo sport it. <laughs> it was it was so bad. Like <laughs> no, yeah, that was the first car that the Stig crashed on the racetrack. They built that the R or the X was the higher end model and they removed the rear wing to make it more slippery. And he wow. crashed it into a tire pile. And then he said if it had a wing and whatever, it would be faster. And then Christian von Koenigsegg was like, okay. And he did all the modifications and brought the car back. And it was significantly faster. And they were like, oh, cool. Thanks, professional racing driver. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I'm sure you've seen all their like magnetic valve train stuff oh and yeah whatnot. all of their crazy stuff yeah i remember I was, cool. I was watching a video and they were making fun of that guy and he was like we have the only this and we innovated i'm like well he did shut your mouth <laughs> <laughs> all right i cut you off go back to her questions uh well they asked how many cars am i up to so i think i'm up to 14 we have 18 but i have 14 uh, that's not a problem at all <laughs> no no, I don't see it. Most of them are inside. Oh, here's a better question, though. How many pair of shoes do you have? I collect sneakers. Leave me fuck alone, Devin. <laughs> how, many, how many purses do you have? Oh, not that many. Okay. Well, two out of three, I guess, ain't bad. You know? <laughs> All right. What else was another question? I how are you liking your new storage shop? It's too fucking small. I need a bigger garage. We're, I'm holding that. I'm saving up for the back cave. And what else is on the radar that I'm looking at? I'm actually done. Now that I bought another first gen, I'm good. 
Hey, tell them last. Yeah, last I bought. Car um, you bought. I bought a first gen Eclipse GST. So you are you are uh, reliving your youth. I am. It's the car that got away, and it's stock. Yeah. It is. Stock. Yeah, I should send you a picture of it. It's a hundred percent stock, nineteen ninety Mitsubishi Eclipse. That's mm. weird. What was the price tag on that? Thirty grand. No, it wasn't bad. I was like, go buy that now. I can't believe it's so cheap. Yeah, it was it was it was 56, about six it was 50, about six grand. Yeah, like right around six thousand. And it, the guy Dang, is in the three thousand GTs, Devin. No shit. Yeah, he loves them. No, I don't anymore. <laughs> Sorry to hear about that. <laughs> I've never had one. I never wanted one. But uh, I own that's... I own twenty six of them things. <laughs> so mm. that's, I have nothing on my radar that I 26. want right now. I'm good. But Joe, my question for you is, um, I didn't know that uh, you were friends with Blair. Oh, Blair Peterman? Yes. I'm in the oh, Volkswagen yes. community. So, I mean, I yes, met Blair through uh, one of his good friends. And uh, he he said something about uh, a picture I posted. And I guess he follows Matt. And then he mentioned you. And I didn't know that you came from Volkswagens. Yeah, and then Matt uh, unfortunately. And on the LS swap Porsche. And I'm fucking jealous, so. <laughs> He's like, who's Joe Simpson? And I brought up that as like one of five major selling points for you. Because <laughs> Jamie has two Porsches. I don't really know Blair since I got my driver's license. Oh, that's um, awesome. Matt, turn up your mic. Yeah, yeah we're kind of, I keep, this is, you have to be kind of close to it. I did that in the Hug beginning. The ball, I'm sorry. Matt. Hug yeah, the just, ball. just, yeah, just smash my beard into it. Um, <clears throat> what uh what why do you keep going back to first gen eclipses <laughs> i've only i mean i only had my one white one and i sold it and i shouldn't have i just i was just wondering like don't get me wrong like i really I, i'm very desperate no i shouldn't say very desperate i'm reasonably desperate to have uh my old uh car back my old festiva oh. uh, and like i know laura was talking to you about the one when you had that one for sale it was red though, right? Yeah, bright red. Yeah, bright so like that, red. <laughs> yeah, like that's a, that's a big that's a big turn off for me. If it was white, I'd been, <laughs> if it was white, I'd have been all over it. Or if it was lime green, you know what I mean. But uh, it was white. Or if it, if it, I remember if, yours because it was Steve Liverman's. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we went back and forth with it. Yeah, I'm so happy that I got a video of that vehicle. <laughs> it was so funny because like I went to Vegas. And then, like, I think Josh texted me and was like, hey, I guess we're just going to take your Festiva and go do stuff with it. I was like, okay, I don't care. I had no idea it was even going on. I was, like, in Vegas hammered, like, at a fucking craps table. You know what I mean? I was like, yeah, do whatever you want. I don't give a shit. So nobody can argue with me on this because you'll never change my mind. You need to have, like, your, your nice fancy car that you're proud of, but you will never have more fun with a car than oh, the cheapest piece of crap that you can get your hands on. Yeah. And you try and do whatever it is that you can do. And you can drive 100% full throttle into a 90 degree turn and you just like turn the wheel. That's, that's Miata. Is, yeah. Miata. It might turn. It might not. You might crash it, but you're only going 17 miles oh, an hour because that's as fast as it'll go. So you like, oh, you don't even get hurt. That, that's Miata. the most fun you can have with a car. So I used to get blackout drunk in my Festiva. And uh, you know the like you know this is this is heading in the wrong direction. I, I remember Devin. So yeah, yeah. So like I used to have a problem, right? And I was well, I wasn't really a problem. I was just really good at drinking. Um, and uh, I would get blackout drunk, and then I'd have to drive home. And me and my old roommate would be in the Festiva, and like we were both like two hundred eighty pounds, right? Like in a little Festiva. And you know, like the like on a curb, like where it kind of rolls down, it's like a handicap like wheelchair could roll up into it we would we would rip the festiva as fast as we could and then just jump it like onto the fucking curb and like onto the sidewalks of places and shit we had so much damn fun with that thing See, I got more, I got more drunk fun than a 23,000 horsepower race car oh way more fun i got <laughs> drunk one night parked it in my backyard of where i used to live in copley which you couldn't it wasn't like a driveway to the backyard right like I'm just saying that like it wasn't a driveway to get in the backyard. And uh anyway, we got drunk, like really drunk that night, and then I pulled it around back and I ran over some shit, whatever. And uh and then 
I don't know what happened, but somebody like it turned into like I bet you you can't flip it over, and I was like, oh, oh no, <laughs> I, guess I can. So like I grabbed a hold of it like at the rocker and I flipped it over and landed it on its roof and it just sat there all night. Right? This is like <laughs> so like I wake up the next day. Did you have neighbors that were like could see your yard? Yeah, I like lived like right in the middle of town. Like oh yeah, like oh, it was, awesome. Oh, oh, I was I'm. <laughs> nothing i was a fucking i was a whirling dervish of a problem i'm telling you it was just like nothing but a fucking problem but uh so i wake up and i'm like you know so i'm i'm hung over well not really hung over i'm still drinking josh would be like i think i think he reviewed it that's what josh is like uh i'm gonna hang out with josh and then josh is like we're going to devon's i'm like oh no <laughs> oh no but i always had the most fun like i don't want to hear any shit like it nobody else afterwards but oh yeah. yeah so uh so i wake up and i'm like i'm like you know i walk outside and i see my car is on its roof and i was like oh, i probably did that and then um <laughs> and then there was two cop. there was a cop like two cops sitting in one car like on the road right there like right by my backyard and uh they're like excuse me and i'm like <laughs> Yeah, uh huh. Like still kind of drunk, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, I remember your old. Uh... <laughs> you remember? Where yeah, I used to go live ahead. In the... <laughs> scream it at us. Yeah. Oh, dude. <laughs> I thought you answer. This is how 20, 20, 2003 Devin would answer the phone. And you're like, oh, fuck. you call him, and it would go, it would go quiet, and he'd go, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah. So, uh, the cops like, you have a rough night. I was like, no. Laura Weber, Edward <laughs> Forty Hands. Oh goddamn. Oh, I was the king of Edward Forty Hands. Couldn't I never gotten beat? Black. What was that stuff called? Black ice. Yeah, camo black ice. Oh, yeah. Jeez, I'm throwing up in my mouth. Thinking oh, shut up! You had a blast. Like... Oh, dude. Oh, bad we, had so much, we had so much fun with that stupid car. You know what I mean? So yeah. like, here I am, 40 years old, and I really just want that car back. Like, I don't drink anymore, right? Uh, because like, it's it was it was. I just was too good at it. You know what I mean? So I've retired. Um, but I just want that little car again to have fun with. You know what I mean? I just miss that little car. So the super high dollar expensive shit is boring. That little car was a blast. Yeah, you just, so yeah, you just got the 1G. And now you're thinking about... you. She has someone presenting a, a, a Miata. And it's a good... Presenting. Probably a good move. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, why, why not? She has everything else. Yeah, yeah, they're fun little cars. I just don't fit in them. It's like when people take apart the five three and they take it to the machine shop and they're like, "Doing it right." Well, I'm in there, so she's like, oh, "I don't have a Miata," and someone wants. It. <laughs> with the first gen, also with it being now like we're we're getting older, the cars are getting harder to find. I found a stock one because like in like ten years, I'm not gonna be able to find one. Right, so right. I, might, I need to just hold on to it. And honestly, looking at the car made me giddy as fuck. I was smiling. I was happy. I was driving it. I didn't give a fuck about anything else. Oh, yeah. That's me every time I, I have, see a crown I video. I, I picked it up in New York for her. I borrowed Mitch's truck and trailer and everything, and I went and I got it. And I took Mitch's truck and trailer back, unloaded the car, and then just drove the DSM home. And I have no license plate. I'm doing like 90 on 33 North. And like White Snake is playing on the Jensen radio. And I just videoed it. And I was like, I'm being transported to a time I never existed in. Because I wasn't in the cars. Like, I didn't really know what DSMs were. Like, they were all living it up. And I'm just like, wow, this is a, this is a, I feel like I'm living a, a nice part of someone else's memory. Right here. Did, you, did you break an axle just because you could? I drove it over to Moyers to show him at the tin shop and like and Phil was like yeah, you don't have a plate on this and I was like oh shit <laughs> and I was like I texted the notary and I was like yeah, I don't have a plate so he like presented me like a, a pink slip in in my phone so in case I got pulled over because I didn't even care about a plate I just wanted to drive it so 2001 then. so 2001 you know what I mean like just don't even drive with a plate like I remember those days you know so I learned in Maryland that you should never take the pl plate off of one car and put it on another car uh, because then the cops pull you over at gunpoint. So that was an, a fun night. Wow. So don't do that. Serious? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Like multiple, like three or four police officers all at the same time, like all guns in my face. Oh, that's uh, what were you driving? Yeah. 
that did was you, awesome. Did you scream, I know my rights? I know my rights. What were you driving? Maybe that was. <laughs> Violating my fourth amendment. Oh, what I was driving was 100% why that happened. What was it? It was a, it was Chevy a Caprice. Lexus DS300 with like 5% tint. Like, okay. oh, so you were yeah. 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 no, it was, it was, it was, yeah. we actually, we called that car the drug dealer car. Yeah. yeah, so yeah like, which yeah. car are we going to take? We're going to take the drug dealer car. Mm -hmm. I actually mm -hmm. really liked that car. It was so comfortable. You could 70 miles an hour straight into like a set of three stairs and you wouldn't even feel it. Like, it was <laughs> <laughs> that yeah, car was they, awesome. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's funny. Cause now I'm like, I, I'm, you know, I'm cautious about going over a speed bump with a fucking Mustang. And then like when mm -hmm. I was younger, it'd be like, well, I bet you we could jump that festive <laughs> off my handicap on ramp thing at the curb. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so I had a, actually, Jamie, she probably might even remember I back in the day when in the group uh, messenger chat, Devin of the one G in a video of me driving on the highway with White Snake blaring. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joe. Uh, I say, Jamie, do you remember back in the day when uh, a VW Sport was a thing in Virginia? Yeah. So I actually worked there for a little while till they decided to move to Florida and change their name to 1552 Design. I heard about um, that. But the guy that owned that shop, his name was Brad, and he had, like, he built really cool stuff, like all this, like, wide body, like, Golf 3 and, like, Golf 4 stuff, like, when that was, like, nobody had heard of doing that, and it all looked factory. It was all really awesome stuff, and he had, like, VR6 Turbo when that was, like, new to the world, but he also had this, like, VW Fox wagon that just had, like, coilers on it, big brakes, and, like, a set of wheels on it. And he swore up and down that that was the funnest car that he owned when he had like 50 other cars that were like a thousand percent cooler and more fun. And I always thought he, I was probably like 16 at the time. And I always thought he was like totally full of shit. But the more, the older that I get, I absolutely truly believe that he was being so serious. That like you could go full throttle around any corner. And even if you flipped into a bunch of trees, you weren't going to die. Like it was so slow that you could just beat the hell out of it. And it's so much more fun than, you know, 800 horsepower in a straight line or whatever. I'm getting old. I'm really showing my age tonight. This I should probably. I mean, you should definitely jump get off rid of the 911. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's like the perfect speed. Like it's got an LS2 with basically nothing done to it. And it's more than fat. I feel like an asshole for putting. Like I'm gonna put turbos on it just because that like building a turbo kit is fun to me, but I'm gonna ruin the car. It's gonna to be too fast at that point, and I'm going into this knowing that I'm gonna ruin it, but I'm still gonna do it because I'm that much of an idiot. If any of you guys ever come across like a, a flood car, like an air cooled Porsche, just I'd, I'd love well, just let me. Also, I don't know the numbers. RWB. Whatever they make with the RWB, I yeah, want one someday. Usually. Yeah, yeah nine, six, what nine six four nine six three? You're gonna pay thirty grand for a flood car for one of those. Yeah, I know because they're one hundred and fifty, uh, not flooded. <laughs> thirty grand new, one hundred fifty thousand now. It, when he schedules RWB, I'm gonna take the month off work and hang out and watch RWB. Also, maybe by then they'll have like little earpieces I can put in so I can speak Japanese to uh, what is his name Nakai, so I can talk to him while they yeah. do it. Because that would be it would, that would be annoying having a language barrier and just watching just the entire him, time. Just call him cigarettes, respectively. Yep. <laughs> just bring him the Marlboro soft pack. It's always a soft pack. Those look so cool. They're like shh, like they they shake I, the one out, put in the mouth. I want to know if if the cops helped Devin turn the car back over. Yeah. Oh yeah. Where are we going with that? What did the cops story? say? We 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 somehow that story got cut off. No, they did with, not with help. The, with English. the four of us, I don't know how that could have happened. Uh, no, they didn't help me turn the car back over. Um, they uh, they said, what happened? And I said, I was hammered. And they said, uh, what happened to the car? I said, I flipped it over. And they said, how did you flip it over right there? And I said, by hand. Yeah. Why would they ask you that? You were like, well, a because it was sideways. Drum. It was so <laughs> It was sideways in a backyard that you couldn't really get the car in. So it's not like I was like at a high rate of speed and it just flipped over. I like don't know while how they didn't know who you were. Well, he didn't understand like how did it flip over back there. And I was like, well, it's because I flipped it over. And he said, what do you mean? I said, well, by hand. He's like, oh, well, you should flip it back over. And I was like, well, it's on my property. So it's all right. You know, 
So they're like, well, you need to flip it over. I was like, ah, go fuck yourself, you know? <laughs> and I, uh, I said, I said, I'm, I'm pretty hung over. I'm gonna go back to sleep. And, uh, that's what I did. So then, uh, my roommates decided to take the car they flipped it over and then they drove it around the house and then they parked it on the road and they picked up the back end of the car and like slid the back end of the car, like way out in the middle of the road. So like, it was kind of like sideways up against the curb. Right. And they leaned the seat way back and then they put a newspaper on the steering wheel. Right. This, I mean, you remember who I used to live with, right? So like, this is like, just, I don't, just, I don't remember. Just live with? I have throw to... some names quick. You remember Ken? No. You don't remember Ken? Unless Bobby. they road. I was never in those houses. Uh, oh, except for the geez. one in the cul-de-sac, I think. Well, that was when Wait, Justin and Josh and I lived together. But no, uh, 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 Ken, uh, shit, I can't remember his last name anymore. We lived together for years. Oh, Bobby God. Dorsey. What was that? Pop? You remember Nelson? Uh, I, do, I know who that is. Yeah, so... Uh, <laughs> So they, they did that That's to me, joking. right? They did that to me. So anyway, so then I get up and it's like now like 1130 or so. And, the, and you know, 1130, like noon, right? I walk outside and there's there's cops now looking at my car in the road now, though. So like now it's in the road and like it's on the tires, right? And there's like a newspaper laid up on it. Like I passed out behind the fucking wheel, right? Oh, okay. They staged you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like I wake up and like and we had this psychopath cat. So like I wake up and I walk out like in my underwear and this cat like jumps on my back with its claws out and I'm like fuck. So like I I like go outside and there's these same two cops and I was like fuck man really like did you guys not leave? And they're like no we left and I'm like what's the problem? He's like well you... time has passed. What is going on? Yeah yeah yeah. And he says uh, he says well what were you out driving? It's out in the middle of the road. I said. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, no, I just woke up. Like, I'm still in my underwear. You know what I mean? It's like, it's noon. I'm like, yeah, I was drinking a lot, you know? Not a little, you know what I mean? Like, I fucking went hard at it, you know? I woke up and saw you, decided to go back to sleep, woke up a few hours later, here we are, you know? I heard I saw. And they says, well, how'd the car get here? I said, I have no idea. He said, well, it's flipped over on its roof. I said, yeah, it's not that hard, you know? It's, it's, it really isn't that hard. You pick the thing up and roll it over. Uh, yeah, that was a pretty big disaster. It's like though. a reliant would... Robin with a, with a second wheel up front. Yeah, like it, it was really easy. Like they wanted like license and registration and insurance and all this shit. Like I didn't get any tickets or anything for it. But like, there's my idiot roommates like in the house, like looking out the window, like hey, 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 fucking dickhead, you have to deal with the cops. It's like, how is that funny? Like we could all go to jail because I'm sure we were all in the middle of doing something highly illegal. Like, what do you, do? you know what I mean? Like, what are you doing? Like, what kind of thought process went through your head? And that's why I stopped drinking. You know, one of the reasons. Wait, did you stop drinking? Yeah. 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 Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, a long time ago. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I broke that kid's collarbones at um, uh, whatever it was, like Croc Rock. Sounds or like a start of a good story. Oh, uh, so plural is important there. Mm, I snapped the kid's crying. collarbones and uh -oh. uh, I snapped the kid's collarbones and shit. It doesn't matter. Anyway. After that, I, you know, and I realized, like, you know, it just wasn't for me. So I stopped. You're not missing anything. No, no, no. I mean, like, you know, if we we, we grab a drink or something, when we go on vacation or what, I'm a lot more calm now, though. You know? A lot more <laughs> calm. A nice way to say it, Devin. Nice yes, I'm a lot more calm. I am. A lot more focused. Uh, a lot more calm. You want to hear a funny story? And this is about being older, so this is kind of funny. So I decided that I'm 40 years old and I'm going to prep for, I'm going to go and volunteer to get a colonoscopy. Mm. Right. Butt stuff. Right. Exactly. That's what seeing this is what made me do this. I'm going right? to cry. <laughs> so this is, I'm going to cry today. So this has got nothing to do with cars, but it's I'm going to cry. So, I can feel it in my eyeball. <laughs> So anyway, so I'm like, well, you know, you're 40. And I almost died a couple years ago from a gallbladder, right? And uh, I was in the hospital. Well, you were for a mess, like the last couple, no offense, but like your arm and everything oh, else. Oh, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Then, yeah, yeah. You, you might as well check the tubes. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Like, you never know, you know? 
So, um, so I said, you know, okay, I'm 40. I should probably go and do this now. Right. So, um, I go and do the console and then like, I have a colonoscopy scheduled and, uh, <laughs> and I said, I said, okay, what do I, so I, they get you, they tell you with the cocktail, you got to drink, they give you the instructions, right? If anybody's ever had a colonoscopy done, what you have to drink is rather impressive. Uh, it is rather impressive what happens, right? So I'm up all night and you're just, just straight like killing it. Uh, Joe, I think I sent you a video or an audio. Yep. Yeah, yeah, you, you sent me a video. I, Dude, I, I, the best I part, I saw that video too. Yeah, yeah, The yeah, best yeah. part about the video that you sent is I was taking a shit when I watched it. <laughs> Max crying in the corner, Devin. He's done. <laughs> He's done. So anyway, so I didn't get to finish. I got to tell you what happened, right? So we're up all night. Like, I'm up all night, right? I'm just, just killing it. I'm in the bathroom, just in there, just dying, right? I just, I'm just ready to end it all. You know what I mean? And I wasn't able to eat the entire day prior, right? Like, I'm just not allowed to eat, so which was, like, the worst for me because, like, I don't do well with not eating, you know? Uh, if you couldn't tell. So, uh, so anyway, so, like, all right, I get up. Did you at any point feel like you were turning inside out? Yeah. Oh, dude. I mean, you talk I, – I have, I, have, I have heard of people – like I watch like House, like I watch that movie, like that show House, and like you, you hear about some of the stuff. And they're like, well, maybe this is prolapse. I'm like, well, my ass. Is probably prolapse. <laughs> goatsy, that? goatsy Devin. So anyway, it's a pink so we sock. Uh, it's, it's so, a informal term. So anyway, Laura, Laura's got to drive me to this shit, right? And we go, and this was what day is today? Today's Thursday. This was yesterday. Yeah, so the yesterday morning, right? So we go there, and. uh and I'm all excited because I'm like, it's finally going to end. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just, Spoiler warning. It wasn't the end. <laughs> no. Nah. Long story short, they didn't fucking do it. Oh, man. All that weight cut all for, nothing. for nothing. All that weight cut. Why didn't they do it? Because they said that I took, uh, like, I'm prescribed some pills or whatever, and I was supposed to stop them on last Wednesday and I didn't, and I stopped them on last Thursday. Technicalities, assholes. Right. So there's like these two broads. Oh, my French, right? So these two fucking broads are sitting in this room, and they're telling me like, well, you were supposed to stop taking these pills on Wednesday. And I was like, well, what if I would have just fucking told you I to stop taking them on Wednesday? At least I'm being honest, you know what I mean? And, well, you didn't. And, and I said, well, you're going to be fucking kidding me. And she goes, well, do you want to reschedule it? No. Are you fucking crazy? No, I don't want to do this again. Are you out of your fucking mind? She says, well, we can't. I said, can I just sign a waiver and if I die, I die or whatever? You know what I mean? Like, if I die, I die. You know, just absolve you of whatever kind of bullshit you're going to try to pawn off. You know what I mean? Like, it's all bullshit, you know? And they said, well, your blood pressure could be bad. And I said, like, you just check my blood pressure, you dumb bitch. You know, yeah, it's not me drawing, it's Joe. So... <laughs> Shit, <laughs> so needless to say, I went through one of the shittiest experiences of my life, and they wouldn't even fucking do it. Oh, no. That's the little That's awesome. So do you go for do you go for a round two now? I'm not doing it. I told them when I was there. I said the blood's on your hands, and she just looked at me and I said, if there's anything, I said if there's anything wrong with me and my colon at all ever in my life, just know that when I die, it's your fucking fault because I will never do this shit again. Ever. And she I'll never herself to sleep. I'll just never do it again. And she was just like, Well, sir, we can reschedule. I was like, you can go fuck yourself too. Like, I'm not, you know what I mean? I walked out in the waiting room and Laura's like sitting out in the waiting room. She's like, that was and, quick. And she was like, What the hell? I'm like, Well, they're not fucking doing it. So <laughs> let's fucking go. And like and like and like the whole waiting room's like full of like just you know, geriatrics and fucking, you know what I mean? Just whatever people that are just in really rough shape in life and uh and i'm like because like i'm self-pay right it's i'm self-pay so i turn around to like the woman working at the desk and i'm like are you gonna give me my fucking money back or what you know <laughs> and she has no idea what's going on like, i'm just unloading on her for no reason you know what i mean like it's not her fault at all but she's just catching like 60 percent there <laughs> you know what i mean it's just the first person i see and now she has my money so, like, give me my money, you stupid bit. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just, like, losing it on her. Anyway, 
Yeah. Yeah. That was my day. So we left there and I ate, uh, 12 inch. Yesterday. Yeah. I left it. I ate a 12 inch cheese steak, a 12 inch Italian sub, three cannolis, like three bags of chips. I was just fucking murdering food. <laughs> Have you chanced to fart yet? Oh, it's, oh, <laughs> Laura's in, if she's in the comments, dude, she, I got her from across the room yesterday. He's sitting on a five gallon bucket right now. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was two days ago. Oh, God, damn. it was so good. So, yeah, that's a little fun story. That's part of my life, you know. So Devin's just, cleared out. Just for another fucking, it's just, just another Wednesday over here, you know. You you unloading on that lady reminds me, I, I bought a Crown Vic recently. And uh, I know. And uh, shitting yeah. a lot reminds you of Crown Vicks. Well, no, I'll get there. And uh, I bought it. And it was like it, like it said from like Cobb County, some county east of Atlanta. And uh, it was like Cobb County, Georgia, I think. And I bid on it, and I won it. And I I went down there, and I get there, and it's a bunch of like people from Eastern Asia with uh like wedge trailers, and they're loaded up like totaled cars and i'm like oh this is like a copart lot and i go inside and i'm like i'm like they're gonna jump my car off and drive it out and they're like no it's coming out on forks i was like what and i go you can't fuck it i just looked right at her i go you can't fucking do that and she's like like look at me i'm like i know this isn't your call i'm like you can't fucking do that though like you're gonna fold the drive shaft in half you can't like you're gonna total my car i'm like i I'm like, I didn't know it was going to come out on forks. Like, it's a totaled car. It's a running and driving car that was turned in for, like, you know, mileage. And she's like, that's what we do here. And it's, like, 100 acres of just totaled cars. And I was, like, uh, like panicking because at this point I'm, like, the car is on the ground. And I know it's going to come out on forks and I can't do anything about it. And I'm, like, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm, like. I'm like my brother-in-law's with me, Dylan. I'm, like, I'm, like, they're going to, I'm, like, they're going to bring it out on forks, man. I'm, like, this you can't do that. And, uh. It was the longest forks I've ever seen. They were like 24 foot long forks on the front of like one of those, you know, big caterpillar yeah. things. And luckily the greatest car ever, Crown Victorias, it, it, <laughs> it, it went under, it hit the control arms, the transmission cross member and the rear end. And it just picked it up and I took a video. I'll send you the video, but they just set it down. I was, they were like, what tra trailer is it? I'm like, you're not putting it on the trailer because then you'll ruin my trailer. I'm like, just put it on the ground next to the trailer and I'll load it up myself. Yeah, and, that's uh, fun. But yeah, I was like having a panic attack. I'm like, they're going to bring my brand new car out to me, you know, 20 year old Crown Victoria. I'm like, they're going to bring my car out on forks. Like, why would they do that? That's and funny. then, and then I was like, oh my God, it got put there on forks. It's already been on forks. It's probably been on forks multiple times. I'm like, why are they doing this to me? And it survived perfectly fine. And then I'm used to strapping my race car down, which doesn't have a fuel tank. So we just strapped it down to a trailer and we're coming back through Atlanta and we get through Nashville. And I park my car or park my truck and trailer and I'm going to go get some gas and pee or something like that. And I get out and I just smell gas everywhere. And I was about ready to go, what fucking piece of shit smells like gas? And I see it and there is a stream of fuel coming out of the the fuel tank of the car I just bought. Because when I strapped it down, the, the hook was just rubbing the gas tank the entire time. Because I'm an idiot and I would strap my race car down the same way. But there's a fuel tank there. There's not on my race car. So... I fucking put a hole in a gas tank. But Not yeah. bad. But yeah, then I was like, I got out. I'm like, there's fucking gas pouring out of my gas tank, Dylan. And he's like, what? And I'm like, we need to get out of here. Because all I'm thinking is some dumb fuck just flicking a cigarette. I know it doesn't work like that. But I'm just imagining my car in a borrowed trailer that I just got burning to the ground, trying to unhook my dually from it really quick. And then, uh, but luckily that didn't happen. Thank God. Precious oh. Crown Vic. Oh. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's funny. No, I've got a bunch. The law is the law. Seven. Yeah. <laughs> a white daily driver, the silver race car. Seven more than everybody else. A maroon LX Sport, uh, the black uh, 04 P71 street appearance package, a white. Oh, three parts car. Um, yeah, uh, we could go on. Um, and then another white 99 I just bought. That'll be a race car someday. And then uh, what's the last one? A black and white that I'm putting a diesel motor in. Does, does Missy ever drive any of the Crown Vic? She couldn't care. Well, yeah, now she does because she's driving mine because we just dropped off her passport at uh, I heard the because Squatty Potty hit you guys. 
<laughs> a twenty five hundred just nailed us in the oh rear my end. God, like a truck like this, Joe, <laughs> rear ended <that. laughs> <laughs> It's Devin's Jeez. toilet. Oh no, 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 no. Uh, you can't make you can't make that kind of mess with water. <laughs> that reminds me. It's like that. Shane Gillis and Matt McCusker talking about that hoarding episode where the girl's like pooping into five gallon buckets. Oh, um, good. Yeah, she's like a hoarder, and she's like, I, she's like, she's like, this she one's overflowing, and she's like scooping it up with a cup and pouring it into another five gallon bucket to pour it out. Because uh, her toilet uh, doesn't work. No, that because that's what she likes to do. She likes she prefers okay. a five gallon bucket. Oh, she's like this boy. one's full, and it's like, she's carrying it out. And it's like jiggling and coming up over the top onto the ground. Uh, man that's funny what uh what do you got did you say you had some some other i, I was trying to read through some of the comments but i'm fucking oh squirrel God, brain I'm dead. I'm dead um oh boy one of them is like uh would a sloppy stage 2 cam be too big for an ly6 t56 80 millimeter turbo streetcar i would say that that's fine the best the i mean i don't know what you're expecting but a you know t56 and 80 millimeter depending on exhaust side flavor uh would make more of a difference than anything and you have to have a horsepower expectation but uh i don't know if you're asking for top end or bottom end or middle end or you know we need a can of worms every car question is a can of worms uh you know dependency answer right 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 is Joe eating poo poo ice cream? He's Joe Joe somewhere. Joe might be muting himself, but I don't have him muted. No, he was busy playing uh well, he was drawing. You're a great he, artist. He was Joe. moving his mouth and people thought he was talking and they're telling us he's He's mute. over there chewing food. I wanna get like uh string cheese or something. You want me to go get you string cheese? Um <laughs> I was trying to read so there was something in here somebody was talking oh, my about eyes hurt <laughs> useful uh your poo hurt my eyeballs i mean it is what it is you know what i mean it was it was really bad oh uh, it'll never not be make me cry funny when that stuff is talked about <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it'll never be not uh a three-year-old childish laughter with me I get my kid. I start winding my kid up, and Jamie's like, "Dude, oh, your sound keeps shutting off. Oh, like you can't hear us or what? Oh yeah, he. We lost your mic, Chief. I can. I, well, I don't hear him. Weird. Joe's gone. You guys are right. We we are losing Joe. My sound just keeps shutting off. Yeah. Oh, that's stupid. Damn. Um. Here, type type in the chat and answer everybody. <laughs> That's funny. There was that a... You're going to try to take care of yourself, Devin, and get get health health work done. And everyone and, makes it harder. Well, yeah, that or like I've got this guy that works for me that's in his early 60s, and I, God is my witness, I have never seen anything other than a Mountain Dew or a Marlboro Red hit his lips, and he's gonna make it to probably a hundred, and then. Me, oh, yeah. I'll wake up one day and I'm like, ah, my fucking chest hurts. And then I'll like 99% blockage and have an open heart surgery or something. Jesus. Hey, I just, found, I just found what we were talking about before the conversation got really shitty. <laughs> uh, I was going to ask, uh, you know, people in the group, in the chat and like, you know, whatever, maybe you guys, whatever, about chassis builders, right? So like um, our line of work is, is very, you know, um, pointed, right? So... Um, the, my question was for like the guys who like do fabrication and chassis, how do you guys, um, how do you guys handle when a job goes from, um, what it's supposed to be when a drop off versus, uh, versus what it, what it actually turns into. Right. So like you bring a car in there and then you say, Hey, or a, a guy brings you a car and says, Hey, I want you to do a 25, five or a 25, three chassis in this car. And, um, and then you as the responsible chassis builder would probably assume, are you sure that's all you want to do? Or do you want me to do any of the other little knickknack things? They say, no, you quote them. You got a timeline or whatever it may be. And then you've got a price. And then it turns into build me the whole fucking car. 
how do you guys tolerate? Like, how do you guys deal with that? Like, how do you do, you know what I mean? Like, how do you deal with a timeline? Because like, you don't get paid per week on a job like that. You know, you don't get paid. Um, typically you don't get paid much of anything up front. You usually float the majority of the labor and you have to cover all the parts or a majority of the parts. Um, so my question is, is like, I know we kind of, we have it kind of easy in like what we do because the jobs that we do, we usually turn them out in a couple of weeks and then we get paid and it is what it is. But in the chassis world, it seems as if that's probably the worst, like fabrication and chassis, it seems like that's probably the worst facet of, of race car stuff. And I was just wondering if there was anybody who does this type of stuff full time that's out there um, that had any, uh, you know, any uh, input on it. You know what I mean? One of my good friends does it and I think he wants like half up front and it just, it seems like a train wreck because he's done like a, he did this old suburban where he did like a frame on it mm -hmm. and then it went from, well, I want to put like the double shocks and raise it up and do all this other stuff. And he's like, okay. And he's like, keeps just adjusting that. It would be tough. I, I would never want any part of it that cause I hate getting covered by metal, but yeah, I'm sure it's just like, God trying to keep, like it happens on a small scale to me where I get a job and that I know needs a transmission. And then I'm, I always tell people, I'm like, I'm like up front, this is the price. If it just needs this, if it needs more, I'll call you. And then I'm like, it needs both motor mounts. You need all the U joints. Your transmission cooler lines are bad. Oh, your rear main's bad. You want me to do that? And I always like pepper in, like, I'm not getting rich off this, but I just don't want you to come back to me and go, Hey, it's leaking now. It's like, mm, no, it's leaking before it's leaking this whole time. So, right. Well, the, well, the, what, what I'm getting at though, is that like, what happens is like you quote a job and you say, Hey, this is going to be, let's just say like $10,000. Right. Am and I live now? Yes. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. So like you quote a job and you say, okay, this is going to be like $10,000 or whatever. And then they're like, Oh, okay. Well, I just need you to also like two weeks into it. They're like, Hey, can you make me a fuel cell? Can you mount this? Can you build me a turbo kit? Blah, blah, blah. And like, it doesn't, it's not $10,000 still. And like, they have to know that like the customer has to know that. But like, how do you break that to them? Kind of like what I did with you when I kept adding little things for the wiring and I'm like, just charge me more. I'm sorry. Well, no, but I mean, like, again, like what we do though is like different because like, we're, it's not a super, it's usually not a super long process unless I'm fucked. And, did you Joe know, hear that? Did Joe hear that question? Was he back live? What do you do, Joe? And when, when people. Oh, well, that was like, that scenario is when you realize how terrible everybody is at math. Right. <laughs> One hundred dollars five times does not equal five hundred dollars to anybody ever in that scenario. All they hear is one hundred dollars. Right. Um, and then that's one thing I've always battled, even like <laughs> simplified my life as much as I can. And okay, I just tune cars. So like this car should take four hours. Or let's say worst case scenario, it takes a day. But like somehow that takes six days because you have to rebuild the whole car. But you don't just have to reschedule the next car. You have to reschedule the next 15 cars. It's, it's the wor That's like the worst part about doing all this. And when I was doing fabrication stuff, especially, it was everyone would tell you they wanted something quick and easy so they could like get on the schedule. And then they would add 17 different things. And I don't, I don't know what the solution is there. Like, other than having a 75,000 square foot facility where you can just keep stacking everything on top of each other and hiring yeah, more but, people. And, yeah. But then the work just doesn't ever get done. Right. You know what I mean? Well, that's exactly it. And that's why like people don't understand why take any shop that does like work on cars and like builds cars. There's always that one car in the shop that's been there for four years. And you're like, why is that car still here? Yeah. That and guy made a good video. I saw that one dude walking around making a video and he was talking. I know about exactly what you're talking about. Yep. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they just they don't they don't get it, man. <laughs> yeah. Tell me tell me you don't own your own business without telling me. Yeah, he's a big name. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I'd laugh. He's got to be that funny at all times because some of his stuff is like, man, that's well thought out. I'd love to see him from the hip oh, how, how quick he is. I was muted. What did I say? I can't remember what I said. Jeez. You said I'd love to have Tim McCamus on. Oh, yeah. We'd love to have Tim McCamus on. I said that guy just is uh, 
said just tell it like it is. Obviously, I enjoy those people. I did you see the one video? People. Did you see the one video of him from like the '90s where he was like, he was doing carb or intake something like underneath the car cover. He's like getting interviewed by like ESPN or something like that. Like, what are you doing under there, Tim? And he's like in his race car underneath the car cover. He's like, yeah, we're just working on stuff because he didn't want anybody seeing what he was doing. Yeah. He was just being a super troll. That. It's fucking hilarious. I have been to Atco plenty of times where dudes have a blanket over a G body that's a small block with a carb like anyone cares about the secrets from Mars they're hiding under there. <laughs> Yeah. Well, that's the what you, that's the secret. Cheap. That's what you do when you have nothing to show. Yeah, literally, the car is it. slow, dude. It's, it's like, like the joke about no time racers. Cool. The majority of no time racers, not the three seventies no time racers by Devin, but the majority I, of no yeah. time racers is like their shit's slow. They yeah. don't want you to see it. From Trenton going to Atco. Yeah. <laughs> Fucking Trenton. Oh. Um. <clears throat> well, I, I was just wondering what how how chassis people fabricators like if there was anybody in like yeah, like how know. do you stop that like mission creep is a great uh term for it you know what i mean um you know frank conti said it mission creep which is true that's what it is it's like like and and like most of the time like customers don't understand it like they don't know they're like well it's already there so why wouldn't you just build a turbo kit like oh it's already yeah. there why wouldn't you just fucking five, back grand. It? five grand yeah. five grand five grand you Why should almost just like have the little 20 grand. Oh man, I don't know. Worse, far worse than like the let's add this, let's add this, let's add this. Is if you go into a project and you say my budget is five thousand dollars, but mm -hmm. then you add five thousand dollars several times over the course of six months or a year, mm -hmm. the outcome is so much different than if you just go into the project and say my budget is you know sixty thousand dollars, right? Because you would go about everything so much different. Yep. So you end up spending the same amount of money, but what you get is so much different. So like you, you, if you, I don't know how to, I, I think most people go into, I don't know if it's because they only want to spend five grand or they only have five grand and then they come across them. I like, I don't know how that works. I feel like you should be able to budget that money a little bit better. But if you think you're going to be able to spend more money, like let whoever it is that's building your stuff know what you actually want to spend. I think people try well, to like protect themselves. Like, I only have five grand. Like, let's see how this goes. Like, okay, this went pretty good. Let's like let's add another five grand. But you end up getting so much less for your money by doing it that way. So let, here, I, I got a good I got a good explanation that everybody can relate to that I think is is and hopefully the people that are watching would maybe pick up and learn from something like this. So, um, a while ago, I had a power glide transmission in my car, right, and. The Glide that I bought, I bought it used, and it was supposed to have all this great shit, and it had a good case in it, and whatever. And I ran the, I ran it with the Glide in the car for a little while, and I knew that the Glide kind of sucked as far as, you know, filling a converter and feeding a converter and whatnot. But it, it is what it is, and it was working pretty well at the time. So, um, I had like forty five hundred dollars wrapped up into this Power Glide, right? And I had to, if I wanted to go to a Turbo four hundred. I knew I had to change a few things, right? I was going to have to buy a bell housing for a turbo 400. Excuse me. I was going to have to buy um, a roller tail housing to match my drive shaft. I was going to have to buy the stubby tail housing. So I couldn't just like pick up any random turbo 400 and just slap it in there, right? So I continued to sink more and more money into this power glide to make it live. When really what I should have done was sell it immediately and bought a turbo 400 right away and got out of the power glide and stopped sinking money into it. So it got to the point where I would burn up fluid every weekend in the power glide, right? It smelled like terrible ass. And um, we'd burn up fluid and I'd wind up going through whatever, 60 bucks or 70 bucks of fluid every weekend, right? Like every single time we raced a car, if it had three passes on it, you'd have to throw the fluid away. So, wow. <laughs> so um, needless to say, I had probably $10,000 wrapped up into a power glide. Right. Between all the burnt up fluid and all the upgrades, I bought a four thousand dollar power glide to start with. It didn't have all the best shit that it was supposed to have, because when you buy some stuff secondhand like that, you usually get screwed. Um, and then changing this valve body and this pump and then doing this and that and all this other shit, which I don't know much about transmissions. So I'll just say that I spent a whole bunch of fucking money on a bunch of shit that really sucked for a power glide. Right. I wound up selling that power glide for like five thousand dollars because I had proof 
that it just came from the transmission builder with all the best shit you could fucking buy. I had the baddest power glide you could have. The 158 gear set. Like, I mean, it had all the best shit that you could buy. I sell it for five grand, which is a huge loss, right? Huge, enormous loss. But in the whole time, I was like, well, it's only 500 bucks. Eh, that gear sits $2,000. We'll just shove it in there to be all right. You know what I mean? Ah, eh, that pumps 600 bucks. What I should have done was just sell that raggedy motherfucker, take $5,000 or $4,000, $3,000, whatever, cut my losses and sell it for $3,000 right when I got it, and um, spent five grand and bought a Turbo 400 that was bulletproof. So I think that that kind of lays into like what some people wind up doing is they say, I don't want to buy that $2,000 set of shocks. If they're building a car that justifies the need for a $2,000 shock, right? They say, I don't want to spend $2,000 on those shocks, but I could buy these for a thousand bucks. And he just keeps sinking money into it. And what I mean by keep sinking money into it is going to a racetrack and having subpar results with your shocks that just do not do what they're supposed to do uh, until you eventually have spent three or $4,000 in the form of uh, tires, fuel, diesel, you know what I mean? And your time, right? When you could have just spent the money and bought what you needed to buy, saved yourself money in the long run and uh, uh, been ahead of the game. So I think that kind of plays into what you were saying. It was like, start with 5,000, then add another 5,000, then add another 5,000. Like that example for the transmission thing always like rings in my head. So when it comes time for me to buy something, I'm like, eh, just whatever. If I can afford it, whatever it is, just fucking get it. You know what I mean? If I can't afford it, then I just throw the entire idea out the window. You know, I don't half-ass it. You know what I mean? I'm just like, fuck it. I, yeah. You know, I just don't need that, you know. But the other thing people forget is you don't have to go to the racetrack every weekend. So you shouldn't be. If you take three weekends off to save money and regroup and get the stuff that you need and maintenance what you need to maintenance, and then you go out with what you're supposed to have, you're going to have a far better time. That's not true. <laughs> That's impossible. That is not true. Did you know that every single Friday or Saturday or whatever day of the weekend is a race that somebody somewhere absolutely, no matter what, has to be at? <laughs> Okay. No matter what, doesn't matter. I find you build the car for three stuff. years. Build the car for three years, right? Build the car for three fucking years. Uh, get it fired up. Well, we got to make this race on Friday. I so got listen, seven races lined up. I really need to make, well, no, I really need to make this event on Friday. Do you? You really need to make that event, right? What if, like, we were just waiting on spark plug wires and they don't show up till Monday? Then what would happen? You know what I mean? Well, then you, do you really want to go out with this brand new car? You've never, you've never, it's four seconds faster than anything you've ever driven. Yep. Do you really want to go take it down the racetrack for the first time in front of 20,000 people? Right. No. Or maybe a private track runner would be a better option. Right. right. Or maybe just go to a fucking <laughs> test and tune where it's yeah. low stress and you got a couple friends there and you try to have a good time. You know what I mean? Maybe, right. I have an, maybe you have an answer for this, Devin. I've always wondered. I mean, I, I think I know. Like when you, I eventually want to build like a really fast car. What do people do when they have like a motor that will make 3000? Like, obviously you're not going to go make 3000 horsepower the first time out. Do they just tell their converter guy like, Hey, give me like a weak ass slippery slide stator. So I don't go out there and fold my rods. And then do you go out there with like six or seven staters and do that? Cause and then to transition, you know, me and Matt were talking the other day. It seems like a lot of these cars brand new, like straight off the chassis jig and the fuel tech dyno. And they were at the track and they were like, we need to go 380s right now. And it's like, and then they put it in the wall. And it's like, man, don't you think you would have tried to go a little bit slower the first time out? Like me, it's taken me like 15 passes to go from like a 7.0 to a 570. Well, so so the, the, I guess there's two different ways to look at it, right? It's And, it's, and it depends on the person, okay? So, um and I'll say that I am more inclined to either a agree with or or also want to encourage and help person B. But person A in this uh, situation is either they got a bunch of money and they're an egomaniac, right? Yeah. So anybody who thinks or or the, now granted, now there's plenty of people out there that put together a brand new car that is just replacing their old car that they just had and sold and they've been racing for a really long time at a very high level. And I would expect them to go out and within the first handful of passes go, you know, very fast. You know two what I mean? Different, two different ball games there without even you finishing. I know exactly where you're going with this. And people need to understand the difference between these two scenarios. It's very important. Yeah. 
So, so there's plenty of people out there that have been like racing for a real long time and they go, well, you know, I had the, the car I just sold would go three nineties. Uh, and now we just built this new car. I've been out of the car for three months, right? Maybe over the fucking winter. That's it. Right. And then now their new car goes three eighties. It's like, right. Like they didn't skip a beat. Okay. You know what I mean? Plenty of people in that scenario. And that's fine. If that's what you want to do. Person B in this situation, in my opinion is. They ain't never had shit, usually, right? They've usually never had anything. And the right way to go about it is to be slow and creep your way into it, right? So when you're talking about, like, the torque converter, typically, like, what, like, um, I deal with, I just dealt with this one guy with a, a turbo uh, small block, um, single turbo small block, you know, light car, fast car, you know, whatever. It'll end up running 390s when it's all said and done. Uh, but he ain't never been anywhere close to that. So... He deals with the same converter guy that I deal with. So they built him an 11 inch converter and they put the a loose sloppy stator in it. And um, they, uh, oh, sweet. <clears throat> so he'll, he'll go out, make some, some laps. I think we've been like 60s or 50s with it. Um, on the, in a loose stator, he's comfortable with it. And then we'll make one stator change and be good to go. So you, you said you're more likely to help the person be the guy that isn't arrogant? Yes. Yeah, I don't do you, like the people that are like. I gotta go this fast right away. So, do you, th- do you think those people bring it on themselves, kind of, when they're like? Well, a lot of it's because of social media. Social oh. media is ninety percent of it. You would be absolutely amazed how many guys will build a car that's going to make three thousand thirty five hundred horsepower, and when you make the first dyno pull with the CO two turned off, and you rev it from three thousand to fifty five hundred RPM. And it makes 1,100 horsepower. They're ready to sell the car, or start like, swinging on the tuner. <laughs> well, like this, 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 I spent. It's always, it's always, always, always. I spent this much money. This car should make this much power. I'm like, Give it, it was four pulls. pounds of boost. It's going to take you 50 pounds of boost to make the power you want to make. We got a good ways to go. Mm-hmm. But you would think if you're building a car at that level, you, you would, would kind of understand the process a little bit. You would understand that you're going to baby step like it, it's just weird to me how how that that role plays out and how you got these grown-ass guys that are 60 years old and you're having to explain to them that four pounds of boost and 50 pounds of boost are going to make two completely different power levels and you make the first run on the dyno to make sure that you know nobody forgot to tighten <laughs> all the bolts Wrong. in the car and the thing's not right, just going right. to fall apart so it's it's very interesting. And, and guys like I, I've legitimately watched grown men cry because their car didn't make the power that they thought it was going to make on the dyno. It's yep. wild. It's, you know, a friend of mine said something. Uh, uh, he said, man, I've been racing a really long time and um, I still ain't never been outran by a, uh, by a, a 224X. It's a dyno jet. Mm. Right. He's like, I still, he's like, we go to the racetrack all the time and I've still never been, been, been outran by a 224X. Mm. I've never been outran by a Mustang Dyno. I've never been outran by a mainline or a Dyno Con. And it's like, well, it's true. You know what I mean? Like, you don't, you know, the Dyno's there for a tool and that's what it's there for. And people get so yeah. hung up on how much power it makes. Um, what I find, uh, what I was saying about with the, with the social media being the problem is that, um, Social media has given everybody the ability to have a really loud voice, right? That shouldn't and, matter. <laughs> well, I mean, everybody's like, I, I mean, I'm a free speech person. I want to see everybody talk about whatever the hell they want, whatever, right? And I don't care. And it's, I'm not sitting here saying that they shouldn't be able to talk about it. They should be able to talk about whatever they want. But what happens is people get online and then they start bickering back and forth, like an arguing with people that don't matter. Right, they're completely irrelevant, and then they start to shit talk each other. And I'm building this, and I'm gonna run you over, and blah blah blah. So what they do is they elevate themselves, like and they put themselves way up here on this big fucking pedestal, and they surround themselves with a whole ton of stress, and um, and they think, God dang, I cannot go out here and go too slow. If I don't go fast enough, if I don't beat this guy, my life's gonna end. So if people could just learn to shut the fuck up. Just all you have to do, it's unbelievable, right? It's so simple. If you don't talk any shit, right? If you don't talk any shit. You can't get let down. (laughs) You can't get let down, right? 
and the universe knows when you're doing that stuff and then oh, it will try to hit on you every step of the way. Like I get guys, <laughs> I made a video on it somewhere where like when your car goes to the dyno, it's a brand new setup, brand new car. Like don't go on Facebook live trying to show the process because I can guarantee oh, you we. the well, universe. Like I always it, say to Ortiz is yeah. he had like a local yeah. guy that would always say, uh, change in the game or, or small tire on notice yeah we're changing the game <laughs> next year we're, we're and then they don't you know they don't do anything yep no. you got to uh don't like if you go to the if you're on your way to the racetrack and you're like i'm gonna run a 480 today like you're going Stop five o's you, i don't you, even you, tell people i'm going to the track i tell you, matt you, and like a couple other people i don't even tell like, people. Wait like, until uh, after the fact after the fact if it runs good then you can say whatever the hell you yeah. want Yep. But you if you can say, say what you're trying to do more before you get there, so it's going to go bad. So much left in it. Yeah, the yeah. moment you start to prop yourself up, or the moment you start to uh, 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 act as if you're about to do something that, like, you don't know. Like, if if I made a post and said, "Yeah, we're going to the racetrack to go test, and we're probably going to go 450s today," that's that's pretty accurate. That's probably what we're going to do, right? If I went and made a post on Facebook and said, well, we're going to the racetrack and uh, the whole fucking racing world is about to get blown the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. I am going to, we're going to let go of the button and the fucking moon is going to shut You're off. You're literally going to go to hell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Shoot the, an the fucking moon gonna, is going like, to shut video off. game no clip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to happen. If you don't fucking believe it, then Back you're rooms. fucking full of shit. And then, and then you, you, you know, you let go of the button, and obviously the moon doesn't just fucking go dark, right? And you go, wow, what the fuck happened? You know what I mean? Mom, so now I, I the meat fucking guy. And and uh, and unfortunately, like I know that's like a really like unrealistic, like stupid, um, you, you know, uh, situation that I put out there, but it's not far fetched off to like, like I see people that like, I'm not gonna say his name because he like might be watching or whatever, but like I see people that are like. Oh, I've been busting ass and I'm fucking getting this done. And then we're hitting the racetrack and the fucking, like you said, small tire on notice or whatever the fuck. Right. <laughs> um, and then like two days later, they're like, I can't get it to start. Fuck this. I've been killing myself. This is such fucking <laughs> bullshit. Fuck Holly. Oh, it's definitely got to be Holly EFI's fault. It can't possibly have anything to do with the fact that you've spent way more time on Facebook talking shit than you have trying to figure out why your fucking car doesn't run. You know what I mean? Um, and then like, they, I think the guy got it started or whatever. And then it was like immediately like, I'm gonna fuck up the whole world. And then like three days later, it was like, this fucking thing doesn't run worth a shit. I'm fucking parting it out. It's like three, three days later, he's making a post on sloppy mechanics. Can somebody tell me how to set up two uh, onboard air? <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like, it's like, dude, why couldn't you have just been a normal human being and been like, Hey, check it out. I've been working on this fucking hunk of shit for two years and it runs. That's, That's pretty cool. That's you why it mean? always, it always makes so many my people genitals like... hurt when people are like, there's so much more left in it. I, mm -hmm. I, I wish I would have, if I could go through every single text, because I, I sent them to Matt. There's probably hundreds of, somebody mm -hmm. will be, it just lay down a personal best. They go back to the guy's trailer, and they're like, and we ain't even scratching the surface. And then the next pass, it kicks a rod, and they're into the wall. And it's like, I mean, I don't want to see people wad their stuff up, but it's like, man, you're giving the people out there not that I'm like some, you know, white knight or anything, but it's like, man, some people watch that and they're easily influenced. And they're like, man, well, fuck, he's, he just went 370s and he's barely trying. I need to step my game up. I see that and I'm like, you're full of fucking shit. Right, um, right, right, right. What were we going to, Joe, what were you about to say? I can't remember that long ago. <laughs> what were we talking about? <laughs> you were just about to say something. You were, you, 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 you were about to try, I, was, I wanted to hear what you had to say. Oh, I was going to say. Um, you looked really enthusiastic about it. With guys that come to the dyno, like you just spent three years building a car in your garage, like every single nut, bolt, wire, and everything. If you come to the dyno and you don't have problems and you leave the dyno with your car like completely finished, you should celebrate for like the next three days. And sure. when you come to the dyno and you have problems 15 minutes into it, you should expect that. Because RG. you just did a yeah. shitload of stuff. Like there's the odds of things going wrong are so much higher than them going good that you should prepare yourself for like a really I'm bad day, day for that first time. There. Hopefully I remember. Um, <laughs> no, I know, say to people when we start, I say, uh, they're like, yeah, you know, what do you, what kind of power do you think we're going to make? And my answer is, man, I hope we make like 300. 
Yeah. Hope the dry some days are worse and... than that, yep. and you better be prepared. So, um, I don't know if you guys know him, but his name, uh, Shannon Davis, the guy who owns Davis Technologies. Him and I are—we've uh, become good friends over the years, and uh, he's a—he's a very smart guy. Um, anyway, he always says something, and it's really funny. And it's usually when we're on the phone, and he's venting about a mutual customer of ours or something. Um, because in the traction control world, there's a very many reasons to vent, right? But anyway, he always says an unbelievably large amount of things has to go perfectly right in order for that piece of shit car that you just built to run. Yeah. Just to start. Uh, yeah, a whole bunch of shit has say. to be right yeah. just for that fucking thing to run. They have trouble with like their boost control and something else. And I'm like, well, you only did 95% of this perfect. Right. So you're going to have to accept that. Right. Uh, but yeah, I, I think what's cool is enough people have seen my videos to understand. Uh, I, I don't get people with really screwed up expectations because, uh, I, you know, I think they've seen enough of me making those dino videos that I, I mean, I haven't really made one in a while. And similarly, probably with Joe. Uh, it doesn't seem that way, though, but at least part of them, right? They there There's an expectation. But a lot of people... Uh, I've had I've had plenty of stuff where like the combo doesn't work great or something else is up and they're just like you know well th and I'm like yeah this it doesn't I'm like go back and look at my fucking year <laughs> right 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 <laughs> like some, my cars some... are eating my lunch this year I keep telling people I'm gonna grow tomatoes in 2024 I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna get a little garden and get some cucumbers and hopefully I can make them not die sometimes I build people transmissions and they'll be like well the motor was going bad and i figured i'd build the transmission too and i'm like okay understandable but the transmission is in good shape but then i'm like man you're gonna do that's just two things that's putting a motor back in and getting that filled up and starting that simultaneously with the transmission install that you have to get full like that's just two things and then but like a race car is that a new fuel yeah. system a new yeah. ecu a new everything Today, oh, I, I move a whole bunch of our cars to bring the Fairmont in to do the motor swap before I have this track day. And the fuel pump's dead. Mm -hmm. Doesn't work at all. I, I moved the car the other day. And now you know, no um, fuel. I jumped all my things, the relay clicks. I have power. The, fu the fuel pump, I mean, seemingly without spending too much time on it, I was laying under it and it was raining. And I was like, I'm not going to do this to myself. <laughs> you know, um, um, I, what I what I find interesting is that when people um, uh, people that that are into hot rodding right are willing to accept like I call it like eating shit right so like yeah. you're you're willing to eat a lot of shit right and what I mean by that is like sacrifice like maybe you eat a shitty lunch and you're trying to save every dollar you got because you want to buy whatever but you know what I mean like whatever you're working on whatever with your car so you end up eating shit for a long time and. Um, and they'll sacrifice a lot of things. But the one thing that I find is probably the hardest thing for people to sacrifice in the race car world. And I think it's probably one of the things that people should learn how to sacrifice the most. Is golf, uh, cart, golf cart wheels. Golf cart wheels? <laughs> no. Everybody's got to have matching golf cart wheels. Oh, no, no, no. The thing that they need to learn to sacrifice the most um, is their pride. Oh, that too. Pride is probably one of the easiest things to be able to put aside and understand that maybe you were just fucking wrong. You know what I mean? Maybe you just did something wrong. And I promise that you do something wrong every day. It's just that whether you want to admit to it or not. And I think that that's one of the biggest things that hold people back from it because they spend a whole bunch of money and they think, well, I spent all this money. There's no way I could be wrong. Um, I read this and that. There's no way I could possibly be wrong. Like we get tech support questions that get emailed over to us and whether they be from our customers, which if you're watching this and you've sent an email and you didn't get a response and you're not a customer of ours, it's because when the email comes in, I ask Laura, are they a customer? And if she says no, then I don't pay attention to it unless like I'm just glued to the bathroom. You know what I mean? And then I'm like, well, then I'll deal with this, right? If I have nothing else to do, then I'll deal with it. Well, like, but if it's just some random person, it's like, hey, I watched your videos, but I have an extremely complex problem that I need you to help me with. It's like, nah, sorry. Um, yeah. But, but anyway, the, uh, 
the thing the thing about pride is that that I, we get these these messages from people and they go, um, I'm having a problem with my holly, and everything's wired perfect. No, it's, it's not. They've stopped. I have an ongoing that joke that everyone says. I know everything is good because I wired it myself. So I'm like, okay. We know the problem is in the wiring. It's yes, just like, it's a hundred percent one. Always, you're, it's always accurate. You know, yeah. it's strange that everybody understands that, like the electrical, like you know, today's cars, like it's not like a fucking points box and you know what I mean, you know, on a carburetor anymore. It's, you know, yeah. so well, people couldn't get those right either. Right. Um, so, like, it, so everybody understands now that, like, electrically, like, it's these cars are really complex now. You know, what I mean? and they're only getting more complex. And um, and everybody thinks that, like, they just they just they're all afraid to do it. They're all afraid to wire cars, but they all know that if they did it themselves, it's it's fucking right. It's right. I did it myself. It's right. Like, what, no, I'll, I want to uh, say before, like, I forget it for the third time. I just remembered. Uh, that's one of my greatest uh, points of admiration for Cletus Garrett is that when something's wrong, he immediately goes, it was probably us or like, this is the name of the game. Or, you know, he's like, do not, do not even start speculating in the comments. Shut your mouths. Yep. <laughs> Think yeah. about how much like time and money you save by assuming that you're wrong first. Yeah. Oh, it's, it, so we so we wire cars on a high level and I tune cars on a high level, right? And like we work with this shit all the time. And every single time before we go to fire up a car, like whether our customers know this or not, well, I mean, they're, they're going to know this now. But we, we, before we fire up every single fucking car, I double and triple check everything, you know, like over and over and over again. And when I go to hit the button, it's one of those moments where you're like, fuck, 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 fuck. You know what I mean? Like, oh man, come on, please be right. Please be right. You know what I mean? And and like, and I, I've wired 140 some fucking cars from scratch with Holly EFI. And every single time I'm like, you like reach up and hit the button. You're like, mm. you know what it's I mean? Like, like, it's like that saying where it says, uh, what is it? Like a sign of intelligence is always wondering only idiots are sure of themselves. Right, right, like, right. I always question myself, everything I do when I build a transmission for like, it's in my brain for six hours and I'll go home at, and I'll like eat dinner. I'll lay in bed and I'm like, Okay, I did that snap ring. I know I did that that roller bearing, uh, you know, oriented it properly. And like, I'll go over it in my head. And uh, then once it starts and goes down the road, I'm like, all right, cool, that's good. But, yeah. Uh, so like, but like, it's 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 funny that like when we get a message about like, I know it's done right. It has to be. That's a funny one, right? It has to be. Oh, it has to be. It has to be this. So if it has to be that, then why are you even messaging me? You already know the answer. It's like that graph, the Dunning Kruger, you know, where you're right, totally right. sure, and then yeah, 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 yeah. The more you know versus the like, yeah. Um, when, I did all the in the, when I did all the wiring in the Porsche, and it started on like the first one tenth of a second of a revolution, I was almost like disappointed because I was so prepared <laughs> that I was gonna have to like go back and like figure out what I screwed up. Yeah. And then when it started, I'm like, this is borderline like disappointing because like I prepared myself. For like at least another six hours of just diagnostic work. Like, well, you know, so one of the reasons why we did the way we did our class with Pete and I, um, with startup and Joe, you, I, I'd love for you to chime in on this. Um, startup idle tell to me tells the loudest. It's like the loudest voice, right? Like it tells you the most, like about how a car is going to run. And the reason we used, well, we use. I don't remember. Were you in the class with my car or with the silver car? Yeah, your car. Yeah. So like my car, it's a money pit, right? There's a bunch of money into it. And like, I was like, okay, it's alcohol. People are afraid of it, right? So people are afraid of alcohol. This is a super expensive car. It's on two fuels. It's won a whole bunch of shit, right? It's not just some like thing that like we found behind a dumpster, you know what I mean? And said, okay, get it to run, right? It's not just something that's like throw it away. It's not a Fairmont it's, with a 5.3, let's say it. Well, well, I'm just saying, well, I'm not, you know, what I'm getting at is that I wanted to instill the most amount of fear possible. Yeah, no there. kidding. I you like know what I mean? You like, make them do that. That's a great part of that. Right. Like it was, part of that whole deal is that everybody that went to that class is going to remember that class for the rest of their life. You think? Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's I, like, I, like, I, I think it's funny. We talk about this all the time, how we take so much of what we do for granted. It's like you have a 2,500 horsepower car on the dyno and you're like, God, I want to go home because I just want to shit on my own toilet. <laughs> and then meanwhile, people would travel 
you know, 7,000 yeah, miles to, to come and watch, watch that it. for the yeah. day. Like, right. it, it's, it's funny how that works. But I can guarantee you, everyone that went to that class, that's something they're going to remember forever. And, and uh, so, like, I wanted to, like, hammer everybody with as much fear as possible and then make them overcome it. Because, I, like, my view on it is, like, when they go home and maybe they're going to go fire up their own car or somebody, a buddy's car or whatever. Oh, this is way easier. Got, yeah, this is way less complex. Yeah, like, they're like, whoa, this is, I don't have to worry about that billet intake blowing off of this motherfucker. Like, <laughs> and, like, joke and a test. I literally said, hey, you, this is what you guys got to do? Okay, do it. And then we grabbed the laptop and shoved it in and said, all right, it better yep. run. Like, that's literally legit what happened. I said, all right, it better start. I'm going to give it a little bit of throttle if I have to, but you only get two shots at this. You know what I mean? And um, everybody got it. And uh, they got it running and idle, and everybody understood by trimming fuel and doing this and that and how, how it worked. And um, it's it's uh, even though that I teach people how to do this shit, still every single time I start up a new car, I'm like, oh. Oh, motherfucker. And that's that pride thing where people just can't throw it away. They can't just get over themselves and go, you know, maybe I did do something wrong. Then we have some customers that message us or email us like with a problem or something. And they'll be like, you know, like they're like, they're trying to figure out how to like make something happen. And they'll say like, like the one guy is great. I don't remember his name, but he's awesome. He's like, Hey, me again. I'm sure I screwed something up. Right. <laughs> I am how much, more, how much more likely are you to help that guy versus hey, the guy who's trying to blame yeah, everybody I, else? I yeah. drop everything I'm doing. Yeah, exactly. Need to hear that I, one. I drop everything I'm doing, and he, because he'll be like, "Man, I th he just I think he messaged us this morning too, or yesterday or something. He was like, "Hey, uh, I'm positive I fucked this up, uh, positive, but I just don't know where to look to fix it. So yep. I think it's doing this and this. How do I make this happen? Well, you know that person's going to listen. He's already that spent four hours. Humility. And you yeah. know they're going to listen. So. My right. business partner calls it giving people their out. Like we we buy parts from some people and some reman transmissions. And if I know it without a doubt it's somebody else's fault, I don't go into it saying, "Hey, you fucked this up." I, I'll be like, "I'll be like, hey, I don't know if I messed up the install or there's a programming issue. Can you help me with this?" Because it does everybody a disservice if I come into some situation just like with attitude. Like it's nobody's ever going right. to want to help me. Right. The big one for me is when pe you can tell that people spent a little bit of time and effort to tr attempt to figure it out on their own, even if they didn't necessarily know how to do it. For sure. But when you ask them questions, they can give you answers of like things that they tried or tested and whatnot. It's a guy that's like, he turns the key, it didn't fire up. So he's on, you know, the Holly tech support line. Hey, my car yeah. doesn't start. Well, yeah. How do you expect them to be able to help you when you have no, no information to give them? Like, if you think about how many things could be the reason that your car doesn't start right now, and the odds are that more than likely it has nothing to do with anything Holly related, or if it does, it's because you installed it wrong. Right, right, right. So, like, right. you have to put some effort in on your end. Well, most people can't do that because if they had to put an effort into their race car, they'd probably have to put effort into the rest of their lives, and then how, who the fuck are they going to blame for everything? You know what I mean? That, that, that pride and that lack of humility that goes like hand in hand with being unteachable or always pointing the finger at someone else. Like I've never met anybody that has something I want or that, you know, has something I look up to that's it's always somebody else's fault or it couldn't be them. It's like, dude, that's that it may, it's such an unattractive trait in somebody. I'm like, I, I walk the fuck away when I hear people or like when somebody calls my shop and they immediately start talking shit about another shop, I'm already contemplating my out. I'm like, man, yeah, we're like five, six weeks out. Like, Oh, that happened to me. Uh, that happened. I don't remember if it was this morning or last night, that exact scenario. And I'm like, oh, dude, I'm booked till next year. Mm -hmm. like, it, don't this want is those problems. Go this is going to go yeah. bad for everybody. Like this, talk about it, like the worst way to kind of, to start this. Some people hear that and they're like, fuck yeah, they suck. I'm going to help you out. I'm going to be the white knight here. And you're like, yep. no, nah, you don't want those problems, man. So I, I go I, behind I did that one time. I did that one time. I learned my lesson real quick. I go and behind uh, quite a bit of tuners and I know to never do that. <laughs> you know, the, the one I did, I tried to be the hero and it just turned out that the guy was just, a certified nut job Unhelpable. and then like when he came to the shop he had been to man i don't it legitimately was probably like 15 or 20 different tuners and like all big name guys and he had a 45 minute long story of talking shit on each and every single one of them oh man and it was like 
Yeah. Oh, that, was, that was one of the worst experiences that I've had to. I, I, I absolutely learned a lesson the hard way on that one. Was that in person or on the phone, Joe? In person. Yeah. Oh, like yeah car, you can't, car you can't walk away. I had hung up. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I got to run, man. Yeah. So, so um, I wind up going. How many? That's crazy. What, yeah, that is real, real bad. Like, yeah. Real bad. Man. So I wind up wow, going behind crazy. a lot of people that tune cars and whatnot, and, and not not necessarily go behind them as far as like most of the time it's like people reach out and they go, "Hey, I'm having a problem. Hey, uh, you know, whatever, whatever's going on. Can you think you can help me? Whatever it is, and um, or hey, you know, we tried this, that, and the other. It burnt up. Can we spend some time? And we do this virtual consult thing, right? And yep. uh, it's really just team viewer, and we talk about you know whatever they want to talk about, and I teach them what I can teach them, and then I look over their shit and I fix it. And I go behind a lot of people that tune cars. And unfortunately, there's more and more people that are tuning cars because they figured out how to get their own car to run. And now they know everything, right? And it's dog shit. Like, they're just fucking doing dog shit, right? Um, which is fine. Just don't charge other people for dog shit. You know what I mean? Uh, unless they know they're buying dog shit, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then... Uh, it's one and thing then to I'm charge them, but it's a different ball game when you... You could charge them three hundred bucks, or you could burn up their forty thousand dollar motor. Right, it, it's kind of like two different ball games. Well, then there's also the flip side of that is that there's a, a, a couple people that tune cars that maybe 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 they're really good on gasoline and ethanol. They're just not. They shouldn't be allowed to touch alcohol, right? That's and cool. you know that's kind of like that that that's i guess over the years that's kind of what i've turned into is people contact me about alcohol you know what i mean um and you know alcohol tuning or whatever and it's just because that's i do a lot of it right and um and this this one fella who, who's been uh fucking he's just been killing it right <laughs> he's uh he's been fucking killing it with alcohol um He's got everything going on the fucking racetrack that I've seen lately, like 30 pounds of boost, four or five air fuel. And I'm like, God oh, damn, you know, no wonder this thing, you know what I mean? Like this thing is, you know, and, 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 and it's just in person. And I know who it is, and it, but I'm, but it's, but it doesn't do me any good to engage with that person publicly, you know, or it doesn't do me any good to talk shit to the customer about this and that. What I do is I spend a little bit of time on the phone with them and via team viewer and go, listen, man, you know, the issue is, is that like with alcohol fuel, like it, it it's not going to slow down if we richen this thing up. Yep. Well, I was told that if we richen it up, it's going to, well, first off, you're on the fucking lean side of things anyway. So let's get that out of your head. You know what I mean? Um, and we fix the shit and everybody's usually pretty happy and they're, you know what I mean? Like they learn something and then their car is more reliable or safer, doesn't blow up three times in a row, like previously, you know what I mean? Um, which is the one that I just dealt with last week. The same tuner blew the motherfucker up three times in a row. Um, and he had the three tune-ups, all three tune-ups. And like, it was blatantly obvious. It was the exact same thing every single time. It was like yep. not yep. enough fuel and the same amount of timing that he's been running in this thing, just not enough fuel. And he burnt it up. And it's like, I don't, I don't understand how as a tuner, you can tear something up once and the next go around you're not more conservative, at least like working into it. <laughs> oh, I'm because panicking. Some, I'm backing way up. Sometimes things go like maybe this motor was put together. Like maybe there's some sort of, I don't care what the reason is. Maybe it has absolutely nothing to do with you. But if I tear somebody's stuff up, the next go around, like we're going to start 75 miles to the left of it. And we're going to yes. maybe step up and make sure. So how these guys can just do the same thing over and over and over, you're like, Okay, it blew up three times in a row. Maybe we should change anything. Like, how well, do you just you know, do the same thing? I what blew my mind was the customer who went back to him. Well, that too. I was like, God damn, dude. Like, like we had it. So this is like a three hour, I think it was two or three hour virtual consult, right? Like, so whatever. That's what I call how, it. Because, how are people not blaming the tuner first? Well, I, I this guy. He, no, he's that's a, that's nice. a joke. I was. I, yeah, I that's know. weird because the tuner gets blamed for everything. That, right. I know where you're going with that one. Well, see, this is see. I can't relate because I'm not a tuner. I would do I, virtual. Uh, I also, also deliver to straight face sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Deadpan. So, uh, so he, uh, so while we're on this this call, you know, him, me, and this guy, and he's he's venting about the previous tuner and how he's an arrogant fuck and blah blah blah. And I'm like, well, I know who he is, and I get it, right? And, at that uh, point, it, at that point, it's on you though. Well, you, but I asked him, I said, man, I said, you know, uh, 
what was the saying? Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I was like, fool me can't get fooled again. Yeah, and he's like, he's like, well, I didn't know any better. And I'm like, right, but like after it burnt up, and it wasn't a high dollar engine. You know what I mean? It's not like a high dollar. It's like an LS with like you know a couple decent parts in it. That's it. So twenty five um, bucks, no big deal. Right, right, right. So it's like it's like. I don't know, like you know, we're talking like, you know, maybe aftermarket piston and rod and maybe a crank or something. You know, yeah, like, like a five stop. max, right? Right, right, right. And like he burnt up, lesson to be dude know, burnt up a head stuff. gasket and a and a and the block in the head and like it, whatever. So like it cost a guy like five G's to get it fixed. And then like it only cost him like twenty five hundred dollars to get it fixed the second time. The third time it was like it just fucking let go, it cost him like eight grand or whatever. So now here I am, like dealt with this shit sandwich because like this guy's got a bad taste in his mouth. So I said, to, I explained to him, I was like, so why aren't you going back to him? He goes, man, I just don't think he knows what he's doing. I said, well, fucking, he sold it to you three times in a row. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, you took that dick three times before you realized that you shouldn't keep taking that dick, you know? And he was just like. He was going to change. He was like, well. well, you know, well I, just, I just got to see if I like this one. I got to make sure I'm right. straight one more time. <laughs> so, so anyway, we, we get him right or whatever. But um, uh, he. He didn't, the guy just didn't like, he couldn't grasp the fact that like, this is a guy that tunes cars professionally and he just doesn't know what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I said, man, he's like, well, a couple of my friends have dealt with him and they've had really good results. And I'm like, probably what fuel are they on? Well, you know, E85 or 93 or whatever, a race gas or something. It's like, well, that's fine. It's just, you can't think about alcohol fuels the same way you think about Joe. Did you learn anything from our class? So it's kind of funny. A lot of people knew that I went to your class, even though I didn't tell anybody. Mm -hmm. So that's weird <laughs> in itself. But I didn't tell people, anybody. Yeah, a lot. Of, I, it doesn't matter. I don't care. That's the way my I didn't life. Know you know how many cars I get you sent? Went, so I didn't. I didn't tell on anybody either. Yeah, I didn't I, know. you better I, check I, yourself I for air tags, like, chief. Yeah, that perspective. But a lot of people ask me, kind of like, why did you go, and did you learn anything? and all of that and i so if it was up to me if if you said held a gun in my head right now and said hey you have to pick one fuel to tune what would it be it would be methanol without question but i don't have the time to fool with drag cars and only drag cars run methanol so you can see this like weird kind of circle that i'm in with that. <laughs> right right right, um, right but did i learn anything absolutely but the biggest thing that i learned is that kind of the thoughts and the assumptions that I kind of had in my head, like you verified them. Mm -hmm. And to me, like that was invaluable. Like, okay, I'm not crazy by thinking this. Right, right. Uh, and there was definitely some things like on the ignition side. And uh, so, I mean, the short answer is yes, I absolutely learned some things. Now, did I learn as much as the guy that has only, you know, started one car on E85 and, you know, he was right, 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 trying right. to figure out how to upload the file for the could, car. I could didn't learn even much absorb needed, all that. <laughs> yeah, right, that's right. the way that it goes. Like that was the cool part about that class. I thought is like the, it's kind of interesting the way it worked out is the guy that sat directly next to me was probably like the biggest beginner of the group. Yep. And then like, I spent, honestly, I spent the bulk of my time kind of like trying to help him like figure yeah. out how to, load the files from the flash drive and like how to click, you know, where is this button? Like, so I spent a bulk of my time, like trying to help other people, mm -hmm. but I was still able to like pay attention to what's going on and, and figure out what you guys were talking about. And, um, I, 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 I truthfully believe that you guys did an excellent job with that class. And there was a little bit of an element of me that went to, I went to it. Like, obviously I wanted to learn. Mm -hmm. I was just bored. I love Mooresville. And we took yeah. my daughter, we like took her to a water park. Like we just kind of made like a family thing out of it. Yeah. So that was cool. And then there was a little bit of me that just was curious to see like your presentation. Like how did you present all of this information? Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that you did a really good job. I've been to some, ironically the worst, I've been to a lot of these classes mm -hmm. and the worst one that I've ever been to was actually a MoTeC one. Really? And you would think that, that the MoTeC one would- to me because it would probably be like the better one but it yeah. turns out like the guy that taught the motec class the day before it was at like a hotel in new jersey mm. and like in like a conference room so like the day before he taught a i think it was an am infinity class and that's like his bread and butter 
And then the next day he taught a MoTeC class, which was basically like him clicking on each screen and then like clicking F1 and then like reading the help menu. Next slide. <laughs> yeah, it, it was it was real bad. So I've been to some good ones. I've been to some bad ones. And I, I definitely really like the way that you guys went about doing the way, you know, what you did. I think you did a, a really good job. And I think a lot of guys were in. And actually, I mean, you confirmed it. Just was that today where you presented the kind of the step one class. Yep. Again, is I think a lot of guys look at this methanol class is it's like super like I need 10 years of experience to understand what's going on. That's not it at all. But you could go into that class having never started a car before. Yep. And like you might know, might not walk out of there knowing every in and out of the software, but you're going to have a very good understanding of how to build a map, how to start the car and how, you know, your car, what made 1100 horsepower with guys that have more than likely Five, never with like six pounds of boost in it or something. Yeah. Yeah. Like literally, literally never tuned a car before ever. They're probably shitting razor blades the whole time. Mm -hmm. And like they load a map into the car, it makes 1100 horsepower. Like they, yeah. they won't forget that. Did you glance right. at the timing tables they put in Devin before you let them floor it? Or did you just, you just, I don't it? know. I don't think we did. I mean, if somebody put 40 degrees of timing at 50 pounds of boost, I'm sure he would have stepped in and said, Hey, yeah, there was nothing like out of the order. Like, cost me some money. But like, line. <laughs> so you were at our first class. Our second class got better because we hung the TV up on the wall and we had a little bit better of a plan. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? I kind of so, intentionally went to the first class because I wanted to see like the roughest version of it. I knew it would right. get better from there. That's just, if you right, care right. about what you're doing, that's the way that that's always going to go. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 The way I, the way we do things is the same. It's just that the presentation was a little bit better. Yeah. But, um, but, uh, no, like we, I made people take a 200, 200 plus thousand, probably fucking $300,000 car at this point, uh, jam something in it, make it start. And then said, fuck it, let's make some poles on the dyno. Like we had like the controller off, I think, or maybe five pounds of dome pressure on it. And we made like yeah, 1100, like made 1100 spinning the tire on the dyno. And it's like, wanted to prove that this is how easy it is. Yep. Like this isn't rocket science. Like, don't be afraid of this shit. The fuel is not the problem. It's it your doesn't, fear the problem. People, what people don't understand is it doesn't really get hard until you really start leaning on it. Like, it's that first eighty-five percent is easy. Yeah, my my setup will make thirteen hundred horsepower, and then everything is going to explode at thirteen hundred and one horsepower, and you're yeah. trying to to tune it at twelve ninety-eight. That's when it gets hard. Right, 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 like, right. You gotta, you know overbuild yep. and then bring it back down mm -hmm. and it's it's relatively straight the hardest part of tuning is when something is wrong and you have to yep. diagnose it yep the actual if, if the car is proper and everything works the actual tuning is pretty straightforward you know i had a lot of people reach out to us and ask me to do a class on wiring and diagnostic and the problem there is, you could probably imagine, is that um, first off, the audience would be fucking bored to death, right? The class yep. would be bored to death. Everybody would want to suck start, start a 12 gauge, right? Um, but it's probably the thing that most people really need to learn how to do. You know, it really is. It's probably the thing that everybody really needs to learn how to do. So and, uh, in, my, in my training that I do, the very first video, it's I think it's literally like called intro. And like the first part of it is me saying, hey, I don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Like you might drive your car up mountains and do backflips or whatever it is. I don't. I, yeah, I don't know everything about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then. So, well, shit, now I forget what I was saying, but like, <laughs> yeah, like I don't, I don't, first I don't know everything intro. I can teach. Like, I feel like what I know is, is this much. And then the, what I doesn't, what I don't know is like not, not too far out from there. Mm -hmm. And obviously I went to your class. I will do anything and everything in my power to learn more. Mm -hmm. I have an endless amount of other tuners that use my dyno. Yep. Like I watched. Shane Tecklenburg tune a 2JZ that ran 110 pounds of boost or something on my dyno. Like watching those things is invaluable. Oh, yeah. And 
like basically like what I, and then like the next step from there is like, I can teach you what I know, but what you, I can't teach you is experience. Yeah. You right. got to screw some stuff up when you screw some stuff up, you is, get a ton of experience. Yeah, it's the, it's the troubleshooting. Like, if, if you follow everything that I'm teaching you right now on a car that is wired properly, works properly, nothing's wrong, nothing's broken, no you should, word. there's no reason you shouldn't be able to follow this and, 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 you know, have a finished result that you're happy of. And I have a endless amount of people that if this is one of the most rewarding things I've ever done in my whole life is like seeing how many people go through this course and then they're like, send me their end result of like, Hey, Here's where I started. Here's where I'm at now. Like, I can't thank you enough for this. Oh, it's, it's, been, it's, it's huge. Dude, yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. It's been great. But then, like, at the same time, if anywhere throughout the process of what I'm teaching you, you have one broken wire in your harness or one bad pin or one bad connection or anything like that, at that point, everything goes out the window until you fix it. Right. And I see why people will get frustrated and confused and you know this that the other and uh yeah that that's the side of it that you just can't you can't teach and if you did like how would you go about it and what would you charge for it and then how many people would be interested in something that is so boring literally like if i if i were to teach a class like a two-day class on like diagnostic and wiring just like an intro to wiring like nothing fancy not just basic fucking whatever concepts right and then diagnostic it would literally be fucking two 10 hour days of me yelling at everybody the entire time. <laughs> I'm going, you see this fucking shit? You see this? This is trash. You throw it the fuck out. Right? Yeah, how many people would it be telling you that soldering wires together is better than using right. like, and now, like Right. Now I'm arguing with somebody who, some fucking boomer who's like, well, I, you know, I fucking read that this is better and, you know, this is what NASA does. Be like, really? Well, Fucking fee five fo fuck yourself on out of here because I'm not fucking dealing with this. This is the way I do it. You want to learn from me? This is what I got, you know. And um, unfortunately, a lot of people again, it's that pride thing, it's that ego thing where a lot of people have been doing. If 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 people came because they genuinely wanted to learn, they'd probably learn something. If people came to learn something but wanted to really just prove that they're right, because yeah. that's what a lot of people do. A lot of people show up to do something to prove that they're right, not to if, like learn, you know? If, if you're doing anything with cars and at any point in time, your goal is to prove that you're right and somebody else is wrong, just sell your car, sell your sell garage, car. sell your lift, sell your wife, sell your house, sell your trailer. <laughs> I don't care. Sell all of it. Just yep. get out of it altogether because you're missing the whole point. Yeah. To me, maybe it's different for other people, but to me, the fun of this whole car thing is it's like, an overwhelmingly expensive science fair project. Yep. Challenge and like, of it. You should want to screw something up and figure out why that didn't work and then fix it and then go the other direction with it and see what that does. And like, that's the side of it. Is it fun? Like if you, I, and we used to build cars, like somebody drop off a stock car and they pick up a car that, you know, made all this power and all this other stuff. But to me, like to drop a car off, write a check and then pick the car up with everything done. I feel like you've really missed the boat on what building cars is all about. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Like you, you legitimately spent a significant amount of money to miss the funnest part about it. Yeah. Oh, you're, you're a thousand percent correct. You know, um, what's funny is like, like with me for car stuff, like with my own personal car is, um, it's all it is to me is just a, uh, a learning tool. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's a tool to test my, you, I mean, you saw my car in person, right? You're there. You sure. fucking got it to fucking run. Right. You look at that car. There's not many things on that car that are like out of place. There's not many things on that car that look like, well, he half-assed that. I don't fucking half-ass stuff. Right. It's a learning tool and a business, a rolling business card. Right. So, the, 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 a lot of people come like when they come to drop off a car and they like look at mine, they're like, God dang, look at that, look at this, this is cool shit, blah blah blah. I really like how you did this, that, and the other. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool, whatever. And we went to Six Summer and we won, and then we we, you know, we go 218 mile an hour with a convertible on a 275 against all these big tire cars and fuck them up, whatever. And you know what I'm excited about? These fucking air jacks. 
Dude, I was just about to say, you could have a $75,000 engine in the car, but when you push a button and there's lights in the engine bay and now you don't have to hold some stupid ass flashlight, yep. like that's the stuff that's enjoyable and it co- it doesn't cost any money. Right. Like right. it's the little things on a car that are the most enjoyable. Like I was so amped up about these air jacks. Like, so when I decided to do that, like, I, you know, I, I had the pro jack idea and like I, I had, I had a set of pro jacks. I hated them. They were too heavy. I dropped one on my foot. That's what happened. I'm just going to be honest. Right. I picked one up. The piece of shit weighs like 80 pounds. Uh, it was right immediately like Cameron and I say like, you would push the button to blow up like yep. something right. awful. Rolls over. Then, right, right, right. You are immediately zero to a hundred. So mad that you would like push an entire bucket loader of small bunnies into a wall. Oh, for again. sure. Oh, I go from like, everything's fine. It's to another burn. one of those fight club quotes where the engine bay lights for the Porsche. French I'm more excited about this than anything see. else on the car so far. <laughs> That's what funny. was that? Can you, his engine, engine bay lights. Engine bay lights for the Porsche. It's like the most excited I've been about anything on the whole car. <laughs> I really I like my main in the car. Everything, and and everything is dark and into my trunk on the Fairmont. And I'm like turning the light on and off. And I'm like, this is incredible. It's yeah. the most lights are the most rewarding thing. That's what you're we talking about earlier. How like you have the customer that just wants like the one light in the back of the car. Cause that's what it's required to have. And he pushes the button, the light turns on, and he's like, this is the best wiring job I've ever experienced. <laughs> yeah, I've got, Devin did LED lights on my passenger A-pillar and in my trunk, and I, before I was like, can you make my dome light work and this light work? And he's like, you don't want that. Just let me put an LED right here and here. I'm like, yep. okay. And now it, it's like putting fuel in the, tr- in the yeah, or, you know, methanol at the track. I like push the light button, and it's like daylight inside my Absolutely. car and inside my trunk. I'm like, yeah, that's... <laughs> The little things that you think are irrelevant are the things that will make you like and enjoy your car the most. Yeah. So I get this. I, I, I got to tell you this funny story about the Projax shit, right? So I pick it up. I drop the fucking thing. I land it on my fucking toe. You ever pick up Projax? They weigh like fucking 60 pounds a piece, right? And I got guys that will bring Projax to the dyno. I'm like, what are you doing? This is right. insane. <laughs> right. So I pick it up. It, I drop it. I'm in my trailer, right? It's like I was trying to pick it up and put it in the little holder for the trailer, right? So I pick it up, drop it, hits my toe, then hits the wall of the trailer, scratches my trailer. The toe is one thing, is what it is. The scratched interior wall of the trailer, it is now Holocaust time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everything yeah. needs to die. Genocide. Everything, right? I like Where's that trailer. The for the game. nuke. Everyone is dead. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking Kim Jong-un over here. Just fucking trying to bomb yeah. everything, right? So I'm like, fuck, these things are going. This was three years ago. It was like literally right after I had like pretty massive sh- uh, shoulder surgery. So you weren't I didn't able have... to throw it into the New Jersey? <laughs> right. Like I couldn't like fucking physically flip out. So like, which was even more disheartening. You know what I mean? So now I can just sit there and yell at it until like it, you know what I mean? Until I feel better. Yeah. So, so anyway, I sell them. They're gone. This is like three years ago. And then like now, whatever, maybe two months ago, I'm like revisiting this idea. And I'm like, well, you know, this car is a pain in the ass to get up underneath of it, which it is, right? You got to roll it up onto these little race ramp things and put it in park, then throw a floor jack under it, then jack it up. It's it fucking sucks, right? So... I'm like, well, maybe we just do a set of pro jacks. And then I'm like revisiting this in my head. And I'm like, oh, I'm trying to come up with every reason as to why I don't want to spend the money. Right. And then, uh, and then it dawned on me that like seven years ago, I looked at air jacks and I was like, man, this would be so sweet. And a, a friend of mine uh, messages me and he's like, why don't you just do air jacks? And I was like, fucking motherfucker. You're right. You know, why don't I, you know what I mean? Like, fuck, well, I mean, how hard could it be? You know, I'm not going to do it. You know what I mean? honestly, I mean, just being honest, I'm not doing it. I'm going to have to convince my fabricator to do it. You know what I mean? Like, that's really the case. I'm going to say, hey, man, I suck. Can you do this for me? You know what I mean? I give you money and then you give me air jacks, you know, and like everybody's happy. So I said, fuck it, we're doing air jacks. So I, now I'm on, like, on the hunt, you know? So like, in an air jack world, it's all like Europeans. Like it's all European cars, like supercar type shit or whatever. I was just about to say, if you ever want to get some cool ideas. So we took my daughter to like this, like legit, like road race course. And it was mm-hmm. nothing but Ferrari, Porsche, Lamborghini, like R8, like all exotic cars. Mm-hmm. And as you can imagine, every one of those had these air jacks mm-hmm. and like go to something like that. If you want to get some cool ideas for your car. Oh yeah. 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 
it's like a totally different world. So they look at things totally differently. And yeah. then those guys look at like the drag race world and they're like, Oh my God, how did we never think of that? Right. So like once you kind of like combine those two worlds, it's, it's pretty cool. Well, uh, the flyer system I have is what they use in formula one. Nice. Everybody in the drag race world's got these two huge 10 pound a piece bottles of like a liquid, you know, fire system. The fire system I use is, is, uh, is a Novec 1230. I think it is, is the number on it. It's the, the gas that it is. And it's what they use in open cockpit, like formula one and, and Indy. It's tiny. It weighs next to nothing. And, um, it works a hell of a lot better than, you know, than the, the foam. Um, yeah. And it's, I, I picked it up from, from Indy, you know, or from looking at it from on Indy cars and stuff. So, uh, so we, so we, I finally, I find like all-star performance sells air jacks, you know what I mean? Which I just learned just the other day that they're rebranded from a company called Duco performance, which is no big deal. The guy's in Michigan, he builds them in house, you know? Um, How much weight did all that stuff add? So the jacks themselves weigh 4.9 pounds each. That's with the collars on them. You know what I mean? Um, they, my fab guy uh, made, like they come with like weld rings. So they're 4.9 pounds with the, the weld rings and the collars on them, like the complete thing, right? Um, he had to like weld to the weld rings with some tubing and stuff, you know, whatever. Yep. So let's just call it a pound per corner extra. So right at like 24 pounds, then you got some, I have 4AN line ran to them. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, uh, what does that weigh? Two pounds. So, like, if we're at thirty pounds, it'd be I'd be blown away if we we're at thirty pounds total. You know, because of this. So, gotcha. to me, worth every ounce because absolutely, I can literally just fucking plug the bitch in and it goes and lifts up, and I'm like, suck it. You know what I mean? Like, yep, suck it, suck it. You know, like, <laughs> oh, well, I'm gonna get the jack and the projects. Put those jack projects up your ass. Like, I ain't doing that shit. Yeah, you can't convince me that projects are more convenient than just a goddamn regular floor jack. They're they're not. They're miserable. They're I don't want to carry them either. They're huge. Yeah. You I know? think it's like a mon it's like a monkey see monkey do kind of deal. Somebody has a track, probably got one, and everybody else is like, "Well, those are fucking cool." And then everybody has those whatever the jacks are, where they put one in the front and the back. Really? Just, just, oh, that's right. I remember that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I need that. Yeah. <laughs> Mm -hmm. right yeah oh yeah yeah racing's a fun it's a fun um, oh yeah yeah old Coors Light Frank what did he he told me one time I don't know Devin or Joe if you ever heard this he said uh, their radial versus the world car that one that he crashed he said if it mm -hmm. ever hit the if it hit their traction control he's like they would knock what one or two rocker arms every single time it would it would rattle all the, the bearings out of them so he's like yeah we showed up with a bunch of rocker arms if it would get up on smart drop yeah yeah i mean when you're talking about that much cylinder pressure that much fuel volume that much rpm if it gets up on smart drop yeah if it starts dropping cylinders it could yeah for sure yeah yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because it was hurt. Yeah. Oh, I'm muted again. They didn't hear me. But uh, what did I, I start you. with that? Oh, yeah, I learned all the weird abstract things from Frank. Uh, all sorts of stuff. Did, did you guys hear when I said, he, you know, Frank would install parts and never hook it up? And everyone yeah, yeah. would go yeah. buy them. Well, you guys did, but I don't think they did, sadly. But, uh... Yeah, it's um. Uh... So yeah, people would. I was. I was gonna try to fill in. People would say. Uh, people would buy all this garbage and try to make it work, thinking Frank has it working. He doesn't use it at all. It actually makes all them slower. And then, uh, and then, yeah, I was saying about. Uh, you were saying about. Uh, 
hurting them or backing out. And I was saying the same thing. Frank could break a rocker arm or something like that if the car just burned out too fast. Like the the valve train wasn't meant to uh, accelerate that kind of RPM that quickly. Uh, you know, it couldn't speed up and it would break it. But they would. I couldn't yes. hear a damn thing, and he, you know, obviously he could. Yeah, they used to run C3 heads on that thing. You ate C3 heads on that yeah. probe. Um, and uh, those were kind of not the greatest for valve train. You know it, what I mean? Was it like a bad angle? Not that it matters. Was it a bad angle that caused that? or Most of that stuff was like old cup car stuff. Um, and uh, I, I honestly, I don't really know. I never really ran. I never ran a C3 head. But I do know that like um, the C3s and like the Ford uh, SC1s, were always very oddball valve angles. Like they were canted and splayed, yeah. but like unless you move the um, lifter, well, you know what I mean? Like, sense. They're probably like, just a bad angle. And it right, right. Like push rod angles, like real goofy. So, you know, which is interesting because like when I switched from a small block Ford to a big block Chevrolet, people said, well, the problem with a big block Chevrolet is that they don't ever, that they have some like valve train issues. You know what I mean? I was like, oh. <sighs> Really? I mean, they put them in dump trucks. Like, why would you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a conventional style head. Like, it's a conventional head. Like, it, it should bolt right on like a four fifty four out of a dump truck. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're like, well, yeah, but they have valve train problems. I'm like, well, you don't really hear about dump trucks kicking rocker arms off. You know what I mean? So, like, yeah. I don't really know if I believe that. And it's been friggin' flawless. You know what I mean? Like, where um, my small block Ford never really gave me any issues, but like, I had a bunch of money into making sure that it kind of didn't you know what i mean so is that the cat uh, <laughs> yeah she's it's done still a little bit yeah i, heard, I knew me. exactly what that sound was these small black fords and these big black chevys have been around since world war one right and and people still act like there's like this like mythical thing like no one understands what's happening and you would think by now like you could just make a phone call and say hey i want a reliable 3,500 horsepower engine, you would think you'd just be able to get that and it mm -hmm. not be like a scenario of where like, well, this is uncharted territory. You know, we don't know what's going to happen and you might drop a valve and this, that, the other. Like you would think it would just all be figured out by now. And well, my, I think that mine's probably one of the easiest combination. I don't know about 3,500 horsepower, but at a solid 25, 2,800, it's been, I mean, dead reliable. And he told me it would be, you know, so I mean, like, I, I don't know. And he's, he's got, and a, very, he's got an aluminum block, right, Devin? Yeah, yeah, and very reasonably priced too, like very reasonably priced. Like my motor without an intake manifold was thirty-one thousand dollars. That's much and cheaper than I thought. Yeah, yeah, that's like half the price of what people are spending on shit that's falling apart every third pass. Yeah, right. You gotta right. get a four eighty-one X, baby. You gotta get those and put put. No, in actually, every 10 you know passes. what? Um, so here's something funny. Now that we're on this topic. A friend of mine's building a car to run like Pro 275 and like no time 28 stuff, right? And uh, he's got a, a, a Brad Anderson uh, 8, I think, or 7 or something like that, uh, Hemi, right? Like a 520 inch Hemi, right? It's a pair of 98s. Um, and he's selling the, the Hemi, right? So he calls me because he's like, what do you think about putting a 4.9 Noonan motor in this thing? Like one of those new 4.9 bore space Noonan Hemis? I don't know if you guys have ever even looked at them. I do. I want one. I, I saw I, someone just I, posting if, about them. That's the only if I hit a Powerball, I, I would have a Noonan in my So, so uh, <laughs> Next so year, Crown Vic. We're, we're talking, and what the funny thing is, is Noonan, I know the guy who, I know the guy who runs like their shop. His name's Daryl, right? And Noonan is like, 40 ish minutes away from me, 30 ish minutes away. Ah. And my fab shop, like my fabricator is like good friends with Daryl as well. And my, my buddies who's the fab shop, he's like 10 minutes away from Noonan. Right. So like, they're literally right in my backyard. They're also yep. like 10 minutes away from like my current engine builder. Right. They're like, they're like $150,000 engines. Right. Well, that's where you're wrong. Um, <laughs> More? They're, cheap. they're cheaper. Okay. Than um, so, um, so anyway, he says, what do you think about putting a four nine in this thing? And I said, well, you know, they're bulletproof. They're, they're strong as shit. Like that's what makes the four nine so good. Is that like, they don't, they don't lift cylinder heads. They don't have the valve train problems that the four eights did. Like they fixed all of that. You know what I mean? Like 
because they just started from scratch, built it around the Hemi platform and built everything themselves and made yeah. it to what it is. So it's 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 a bulletproof piece, right? So like I'm on the phone with my buddy, and we're bullshitting about it, blah, blah, blah. And he's and he's telling we're talking numbers and whatnot. And he's like, you know, I already got some numbers from him, but maybe give Daryl a call and see if there's anything that you'd want to change or whatever, you know. So I was like, well, you know, we'll talk to him. I said, maybe we'll call him next week or something because like I'm busy as shit this week anyway. So so okay. So he's like, hey, why don't you get a you know they do that in water jacketed, right? And I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> Uh, you had to do it, didn't you? You had to. You, you, know, you had to do this to me, you know. Devin hates like, money. Yeah, just put a four nine in that thing and uh, in your in your convertible. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. He's like, you know, just. I, I said, I, I really like to stick this thing with a single. Like, you know, he's like, yeah, just put one of those 140 millimeters from Hearts or something under 146 or whatever. And I was like, Jesus Christ. Yeah, I, yeah, they make some big ones. Uh, uh, <laughs> so I was like, dude, no. So then anyway, I hang up and like. Me and, and uh, Laura and my uh, employee Justin were sitting here. We're watching or we're eating lunch, and I was like, "You know, what do those what do those four nines look like? You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's <laughs> huge." <laughs> so we're just looking at them online. I'm like, "Jesus Christ, what kind of rabbit hole am I getting myself into?" So the problem is, is that you know, you know the motor is like eighty grand, right? We'll look at it quick again. Yeah, so like an engine from them, like is right around in the neighborhood of like eighty thousand. Obviously, changed some parts here and there and it costs more money or less or whatever but in the ballpark about 80 grand so it's like okay do i have eighty thousand dollars to spend no um oh wow could i spend eighty thousand dollars on an engine if i plan for it over the course of the next six months yeah right is that with an intake too or you gotta yeah that's intake to pan that's intake to pan that's balancer to flex plate that's the whole nine yards that's not bad one of their intakes is probably 10 grand in itself yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's one. How well, that answers the that question that I had is the, all that supercharger bracket you're hanging off the front. It seems like all of those. Well, you can buy them. You can buy them turbo setup where they got the same type of gear drive that yeah, I have. On a, here's one yeah. with like an 871 drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like they have them. Like, like they have them. It seems like all the Hemi based stuff is always like going the procharger route for whatever motor reason. or something. Yeah, they usually do uh, uh, centrifugal, like the big pro charger. Yeah, here's one with mag on it. Yeah, there's usually a big pro charger or uh, or a roots or a screw or something on one. Um, How much bigger one is like that the, than your the big pro block charger? Like seems to be kind of almost like the easy button. Pro like, charger is pretty easy. It's just except for when you change them. It's just going to do what it's going to do, and it's all RPM. Driven. Yeah, I mean it's all RPM driven. Like timing kinda, kills them. Power management itself based off of RPM. Dude, it's it, they're pretty easy to power manage. It's literally just timing. It's like this is all you can do is timing. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's why people uh, say they're easier to get down the track because it's not the turbo and not the whatever and not the, yeah. you know, it's just the ignition in and out like it's a gigantic engine. So, yeah, so do, you, do you convert or something like that? Just like it's a, like a crazy high horsepower naturally aspirated deal? Like I feel like it takes a lot of, like the converter and being able to spool something up. And like, I feel like once you at, at that power levels, the, the converter becomes like one of the big gigantic pains in the ass. And I feel like the pro charger would take away a lot of that. Yeah. So just... I don't build torque converters. Right. But I've bought enough of them and I've worked with enough people to spec out torque converters and work with who I work with uh, for torque converters and the turbo stuff for torque converters is the hardest ones out there. The yeah. pro charge stuff and the roots blown and screw blower is rather simple. They're just really for I would have bet money on that. That's yeah, it's bigger. much yep. less complex. Oh, yeah, they're just that whole tight. like spool up factor just feels like it would again be the easy button. Yeah. I oh yeah. The answer just, to Cameron's question. I didn't hear it. What was it? Oh. Physically, like, and you when you say four nine, is that like the bore space you're calling four yeah. nine motors? Yeah, Physic that's the four nine bore space. Yeah. Physi physically, how much bigger is that Hemi compared to your big block? Is it like like substantially taller and wider? Oh, I don't know. I mean, it's it's going to be wider just because of the cylinder head. Um, you know, like if you look at the cylinder head on those things, it's got a, a extended exhaust port on it. Um, yeah. so it puts it way out into the strut tower. Um. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, they're big, you know, height wise, I think they're like 11 two deck. No, 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 they're like 10, eight. They're like 10.8 inch deck height. So like my current motor is like nine, eight deck. 
so it's going to be an inch taller. Um, and then it, uh, you know, I don't know about width, but as far as like front to back, a big block Chevrolet is 4.84 bore space. And that's just 4.9. So like you're splitting the hairs. It's not so a huge. Not, not much longer, just a little bit taller and a little bit wider. Because yeah, but now you can actually get to the spark plugs. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's uh, super simple. And, and like they put like, they build like T handle, like dry. These Noonan, these oh, Noonan facts are insane. Oh, yeah. Let me yeah, just yeah, read like... this for people. Just interrupt with a dumb fact. Uh, they if they they built sixty billet blocks in Q for production, and it's a eight hundred and set a eight hundred and fifteen pound raw chunk of aluminum. Uh, they said that all of that added together makes forty one thousand pounds of aluminum waste, mm -hmm. and seventy six hundred pounds of finished aluminum blocks. Hmm. It starts at eight hundred pounds and comes down to one hundred and twenty seven pounds. That's, that's pretty crazy. That's, that's light for a block that no, big. Yeah, I was like, wow, 127. Well, that's without sleeves in it. And then uh, what, how, relative to your current setup, how much more horsepower could that reliably make, like another grand or 1,500? Oh, I don't think you can hurt one of them things with a turbo motor. I don't know. That's insane. I don't know. Mistakes are like the only way to hurt it. What's that? mistakes are the only way to yeah it. probably yeah yeah mistakes. some sort of failure other than the hard seeing, parts. just seeing what like some of these other combos that i've helped like helped with and stuff you know what I mean? like some of the pro charge stuff or some of the turbo stuff with these Noonan motors in them with the four nines in them or that radical four six small block that they do um uh it's like you, you, it's it's unreal 65 70 pounds of boost 24 25 degrees of timing like, you know, just think about that, right? 70 pounds inch of deck height. 25 degrees of timing. And like the EGTs are like 850 degrees. What Jeez. do uh, what does the fuel flow numbers? Yeah. What do the fuel <laughs> flow numbers look like on that? Like 65, 7,500? Or like more than that? Like, uh, like at all? Right, nine, right around 9,000. Jesus. 8,500 to 9,000 pounds per hour. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty wild pretty wild what some of them can do you know what i mean on the big uh, like the four nines like you know they can ingest a lot you know the other thing that's wild is once you get to a point you add an extra thousand horsepower and you go what yeah. half, two, two tenths two tenths half, half of a tenth faster i was uh, half a tenth is what i was shooting for yeah like half yeah, a tenth yeah. faster well, and yeah, then, like power management you can't get it in until later you don't you don't just need the motor to handle that now you need the transmission to handle that and you need the converter to handle that and you need call it mark williams for the rear end <laughs> yeah this that it's like christ it's just like it's like you get to a point and it's like why bother trying to go any faster it's, it's well the just, biggest the biggest hold back usually is the chassis yeah because it's easy to make a phone call and buy the right transmission yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like it's easy to make the phone call and have a good rear end built and whatnot, but it's the chassis that's the hard part. And that's where like, I think um, a lot of people kind of mess up. You know what I mean? Cause like in the past, like five ish years, a lot of people have gotten into this industry in one way, shape or another of either, you know, tuning cars or wiring cars or building cars as fabricators. And, um, you don't become a, a, a Jerry Bickle or a Tim McCamus in a year. You don't, you know what I mean? Like, because like the fabrication side of things, like there's a lot that go into the way a car functions and the where mm -hmm. you put a tube, like you don't just open up the SFI book and go, okay, this is what we need to do. And that's it. The SFI that's book. Bullshit. That's what everybody your... does. <laughs> well, right. But like the SFI book just cares about your safety. They're Which is books. great. You just buy it by the by the book and weld weld her up. But like now we need to okay now here's our safe little containment area. But now we need to build a car that actually will go down a racetrack and work. And that's where I think a lot of people kind of get a little screwed up. You know, it what seems I mean? like a majority of cars start off with like a ten point cage, and then they yeah. add, you know, they add this because they're going a little bit faster, and they add this because they're going a little bit faster, and then oh, yeah. then they try and make. You know, three thousand horsepower, and the car is just like, what are you, what are you doing? Like, I'm, I'm a ten point cage car, and you've added a couple extra bars. Like, this just isn't going to work this out. This isn't right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you got, you got to commit at some point. 
Yeah. Do, um, do either of you tuner guys have experience with M5? Is that worth it, or is that just needlessly? Uh, I don't think it's worth anything, really. I mean, it's. <laughs> I'm not going to say that it's not worth anything. It's just I'm going to say that the majority of the people that have messed with it have not needed to. My first encounter with M5 was on accident. So a car came, it was supposed to have M1 and somehow like in between when it came or when we talked about it, when it came, it switched to M5 eyes burning. And, uh, it honestly, it wasn't much different. I just, it comes back to like you, you paid for all the turbo. So why not just turn the boost up two pounds and eliminate this fuel? That's volatile and way worse. Yeah. Way worse. And then the other, the the next time I, had, it was funny because it was like a week or two later. So I had this like weird, like, the, the funny part is, is I had never tuned M5. So the way that my personality works is I would have told the guy like, hey, I've never tuned M5. You probably want somebody else to do this for you. Because I just hit, absolutely hate learning on other people's cars. But it just happened to show up with M5. And then like a week later, I had a car, a Honda come in like should have been a simple easy 93 octane 180 horsepower and when he got here he was like hey i want to tune it on 93 octane i'm like i know this is a street car <laughs> motor like 12 to 1 compression like it's it's street car and he's like i want to tune it on 93 octane and then have a second tune for m5 i'm like wait what <laughs> what in the hell are you talking about and what's funny and what I learned is that you would think by going from 93 to M5 that there would be a pretty significant difference in horsepower. But since it was such a tame motor with no compression and no Yeah, it wasn't cam, octane like, limited. Like no, no, it was exactly. It wasn't octane limited at all. So I forget what it was. If it was like an eight horsepower gain or something, it was like, <laughs> it was the biggest waste of time. But again, I'm a moron. And when something weird or unusual comes in, like I would try, I'm it. like, I'm like, oh, this is fun. Yeah. You so let me waste six hours on this. Like, <laughs> wow, we poured this fuel in, didn't make any power. Then like, my fueling must be way off. Well, no, nope, that didn't do it. My timing must be way off. Well, maybe it's a combination of the timing and the fuel. And like, I've sw swung everything in every direction, and it got to the point I'm like. We this tried. makes 800 horsepower more. Sorry to hear about everything that you did in preparation for this. Like this is <laughs> a giant waste of time. <laughs> that Simpsons meme with Bart and the cake. At least you tried. Yeah, <laughs> was, that was rough. Yeah. And even worse than all of it is, I tried to film a video on it because, like, once you film a video of something, like everything changes in terms of how long it takes. And then you I'm tried like, to throw it all out because yeah, nobody wants to watch a video of this M5 car making eight horsepower. So it's like somewhere on some hard drive in my living room or some shit. I you don't could, know. You could just got to get a good thumbnail and say, we did all this work for eight horsepower with you scratching your head. Yep. Or something like that. It, yeah. You know, uh, I figure I'm just going to start making faces like I just smelled a big giant fart in all of my videos and I'll get way more views. <laughs> way more. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, uh, uh, it, it, it's funny how people think that they need to get into some of these exotic fuels. And it's like, dude, you got a 1,300 horsepower, like, turbo combo. Stop it. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? Like, what are you doing? Like, Every you can go to people ask me about Ignite. 85 and it'll work just fine. Yeah, right. People ask me about bringing Ignite for, like, a 600 horsepower turbo LS combo. And I'm like, D don't do that. <laughs> So you guys do a lot more ethanol than I do because I think it smells like cat piss and I hate it. Not by I, choice. I love it. Right. I hate not that by, shit. Not by choice. Yeah, it's miserable. It's it's terrible, right? I love it. So, I, yeah, I, I hate it. So the anyway. Texas version of it smells even better. Farther south you get, the better it smells. Oh, well, either way. <laughs> let me let me ask you this, right? And maybe some people watching or whatever may 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 uh may want to know. Um, how far have you ever pushed one hot air E85? I haven't gone 20s? far. I've probably gone like 850. I'm assuming by hot air, you mean no intercooler, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, you I, mean in the quarter. Uh, I have to think. I, I haven't done that many non-intercooled. Uh, probably, probably at least a high nine-second car okay. off the top of my head. 
All right. But pretty much everybody has an intercooler, luckily, and no one wants to be like, it needs to be fire breathing. I need to melt IAT sensors. I don't really get that. We did a, uh, I did a, a Fox body with a, a small block Ford in it. Um, and it, we set the car up for uh, alcohol. And the customer um, owns a lot of cars and uh, didn't want to get confused with fueling the car. So he had me swap it over to E85. Yes, you heard that correctly. All I have a similar are... story in the opposite direction, but we'll get to oh, that yeah. after you're I was done. Just say you went the wrong way, Devin. <laughs> well, a lot of his customer, a lot of his cars are the majority of his cars are on E85. So he didn't want to mix up the fuel. So he said, "Can you just swap it over to E85?" So we did, and um, needless to say, he was he doesn't know anything about needing an intercooler, and he didn't care to learn. So um, I had to neuter it. Now, granted, this is not like a 5.3, like this is not like a mundane, like this is a serious engine with an 88 on it, like a, a, a X275 legal 88. But we wound up going 466 or something like that on that thing, a 3,200 pounds. Flying. Yeah, way faster than anticipated, right? Um, are you watching intake air temperatures or EGTs, or when are when are you essentially pulling the plug on leaning on that setup? What are you? Um, I was just keeping timing out of it uh, pretty aggressively. Um, once we got uh, like I put a fast response intake air temp on it, and once we get up over like two hundred, is when I start to really neuter it. You know what I mean? What kind of uh, air fuels are you running on it? And boost. Oh, and gas scale down in like the uh, like the ten two ten three, it was okay. rich. Um, and uh, this is an SC one headed uh, small block Ford, so they're pretty timing sensitive to begin with. So, um, you know, like if 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 on like if it was intercooled, let's just say if it was intercooled, we would have like twenty degrees of timing in it, right? It not being intercooled, we had like thirteen degrees of timing in it. Um, and as far as boost would be in like the mid thirties. Okay. But this is like a 400 and I want to say it was like a 418 inch motor, uh, with like the, uh, X legal 88, 12 to one compression, hot air 85. Um, but you know, what was weird about that is that I was forced into dealing with that one. Right. Like I was forced into it because the guy's just like, Hey, can we, you know, change this to, you know, and I was like, sure. It sounds like my uh, M5 experience, my first M5 experience. It's just right, like, right, right. Like, kind of like well, here. here you go. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> and like, what was funny about it is like, we, like, I got the thing like dialed in on alcohol and then he had me switch it over. And like, I was like, well, I guess we're going to spend like 28 minutes on this and then you're going to go to the racetrack. And yep. like, that's what happened. Yep. And like, I just remote tuned it from there. You know what I mean? Um, He's a local guy, but I mean, like, I went to the track with him once or twice, but then after that, I would just remote to it, you know. But um, uh, it was it was interesting. But now, but what's funny is I was forced into that one, and um, now whenever I look at like hot air hot air E eighty five, I'm always like really leery when I shouldn't be. You know what I mean? Like, and I My, think that so a lot of like people the, are scared to death the, of it as well. Yeah, the first time I dealt with one, I was like. I'm going to pull 112 degrees of timing out of it. <laughs> We're going to run it at two to one on the gas scale. And, <laughs> and then like, by the time I finished up with it, I'm like, Oh wait, this is like not nearly as different as I would ex expect. Yeah. And I still wouldn't do it or ever encourage anybody to do it. But so with that particular combo, I would say that we ended up, with me being extra conservative just because that's how I do things, mm -hmm. it still made the power that it should have made. Yep. But given what you were working on, it sounds like a little bit of a different ball game. Like say you took the same exact combo, but put it on methanol and you were able to lean it out, put timing in it and do all those, those things. Like how much power do you think you were giving up by oh. being on, on ethanol? Oh, hot air ethanol to hot air methanol, probably 300. Yeah. 300 that would have been my guess yeah probably three so, three to 350 and this is on like a 16 1700 horsepower okay that was my next question is like what power left so like the ones that i've done have all been like eight you know eight nine hundred so they're yeah yeah it's different ball game yeah like i mean i don't know what kind of power it takes to go 460s at uh 3200 
because I don't really ever chase like horsepower. You know what I mean? Yeah. But um, but that was a combination that you know it, it would have been a four thirties car on alcohol. Oh, okay. Well, that's you know what I mean. That's, that's huge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially like, and I'm guessing they had the fuel pump and injectors to run methanol. So like, yeah. Well, it, it had just... two sets of seam, two sets of Siemens Deca two twenties. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, two sets of Siemens Deca two twenties and a mechanical pump. So, so it's just punching himself directly in the nutsack for no reason. It was more than fast enough for him anyway. Uh, you know okay. what I mean? Like it was yeah. more than like it wasn't like it, this car wasn't built to go race XT seventy five. This car was built to have, or like this car was purchased and then converted and then like redone a little bit here and there for him and his son to go out and have a good time. Got you know it. what I mean? Like at a local racetrack and just enjoy it, you know? That's cool. So yeah. like for them, it was like the perfect solution, you know, but it was like a learning experience for me because I was like, I've done a few hot air 85 cars, but again, it was one of those like, Oh, make 800 horsepower or something like that. And I, I felt, yeah, yeah. Yep. But I, I never really like leaned on one and I shouldn't even say like I leaned on it. But like going four sixties, you don't just do that like for free. You know what I mean? Like yeah, that's yeah. not. You know what I mean? Like that. Th there was some effort there. Here's the funny one. I just remembered. I did a non intercooled E eighty five car that was a like a high five hundred cubic inch twin ninety one millimeter car that was also supposed to be mm -hmm. on methanol, but was such yep. a pain in the ass. He swapped at the E eighty five, and that one had like Moran. 235s or one of those garbage gigantic injectors mm -hmm. and uh i had like a 10-4 air fuel at idle or stalled yep yep but i pinned my dyno with that car over 1500 rear wheel well, yeah. it was like 14 pounds of boost with those turbos on it right yeah literally yeah i mean i have the data logs but it was teens it took yeah. nothing yeah. it was yeah. hilarious it made like i think it had like two and a half pound it had dome like co2 and on like two pounds, it made like eight eighty. Yep. And I had like a single digit ignition in this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it funny. That's funny. Again, so it's funny. Again, I like even remember that I did that. We've come back to this like seventeen times now, but just over overbuild your car, overbuild your fuel system, so you don't have to push it hard on ignition and all that, and it'll make the power that you want to make without having to lean on it, and then it just lasts forever. If uh, yeah. makes, if my limiting makes... factor is the turbos, I could could I lean on it harder? Because like I think my engine is probably good for 13, 1400, but I know I'll probably max my turbos before then. No, I like to go the other yeah. way. Yeah, I'm, I'm the same boat. I go the other way. Over turbo it, for sure. Okay. Yeah. Not by like a mile, Yeah. because right? yeah. that's what a lot of people do. They're like, well, I got this 4.8 liter out of the junkyard, so I'm going to put this 118 on it. Yep. I think the problem there isn't even necessarily the turbo. It's just the converter. Right, right, right. Oh. Well, no, I'm here to say that a 118 does not belong on most small well, books. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. that's a bit excessive. But yeah, yeah. It, it seems like if you go too big on the turbo, then your converter Never has to works. be all jacked up to make it work. So the, there, right. there's a the balance to it all. But yeah. always over turbo. Well, I'll just yeah, yeah. use I'll use all of my turbos first, like you guys keep telling. Yeah. Just keep keep yeah. adding dome, and when it stops, yeah, just get oversize yeah. the turbos and just spray up into the boost. Well, something Brian Tooley, I went to <laughs> street car, I went to street car takeover in Bowling Green, which is always if you ever want to go to the most miserable <laughs> hot event known to mankind, go to street car takeover in Beach Bend, Kentucky. It is always searingly hot. Um, it is nowhere I, near as hot as coming down here. Next, I mean, it's it's flat. It's black asphalt, and everything is black asphalt. I've been to Beach Bend. Do you know in every racetrack? Do you know that it is actually a hundred and sixty-five percent humidity here? <laughs> it's felt like that recently, but he's oh he's, no no no! Like this I, is this is uh this, this it is. Don't be the my weather sucks more than your weather guy. Fucking come to South Carolina and challenge you. <laughs> challenge you. I'm not like, there. I don't want to be there. Don't terrible. rope me into there. I'm I purposely asked, not there. There's I a asked, reason why uh, the racetracks run from seven at night until one o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah no, I understand. You know what but I mean? I asked Brian. I said, uh, I said if I max these turbos, um, should I just get like bigger turbos and then like keep the same motor? And he's like, yeah. And if you want to keep the same motor, what you can do is you can put a huge cam in it. Because a bigger cam 
makes a smaller motor think it's bigger than it is. And I was like, oh, well, that's good to know. And that was, I'm probably oversimplifying it. There's probably you were just want to rev high. Yeah. So, but I'll probably, if, if I ever max these turbos, I'll just call him and say, what turbos can I put on a 5.3, but that would also work on a 388 that I'm probably going to buy in a year or two. And then when he gives me an answer, I'll just buy those turbos and then over turbo the 5.3, like you guys said. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm always a, uh, I'm always a fan of just having more turbo than you actually need. Now, like, there's guys that are out there that, um, that, that have, uh, you know, class limitations or whatever. And that's fine. But if you don't have those class limitations, like just put more turbo on it. You know what I mean? Just put more than you think you need. It's easier. Yeah. It seems like the LS stuff gets to a point where it just doesn't like more boost. Like, so if you can make what you need to make it 30 PSI as opposed to 50 PSI, because the turbo size is different, it just so much happier being able to do it with the lower boost level. Which yeah, is what under really 30 get. is it seems like over 30 it's it's not yeah. happening unless you're jack roberts 30 35 and then it's like i feel like you're so over conservative trying to keep head gaskets on it that yeah you put 10 extra pounds of boost in it but you pulled 47 degrees of timing in it so you just <laughs> it's like that's, a whitewash that's what I used like, to, uh, people you know school, more people were spraying nitrous and it was cheaper than dirt uh 10 years ago here <laughs> And same thing, they they jet from 100 to 200, but they pull six degrees. Yeah. And like, right. they're just throwing away nitrous, making the same 100 rear wheel. You yeah, remember when well, you, gave me, you gave me your old nitrous kit when we went to LS Fest like five or six years ago? And I was like, well, I don't want to blow it up. And I was like, you're like, put like a 35 jet in. It was like a 75 shot or something. And then we pulled three degrees and it went the exact same. Yeah, it was like, it's not it was like, oh, yeah. It was like we just, yeah, like you just said, just waste the nitrous to go the same speed because we pulled a bunch of timing for no reason. The only <laughs> time I do that is to make sure the dry nitrous fuel settings are good. Yeah. If it's, Man, you want to hear something nice. funny about dry nitrous fuel? This is some funny shit. And I'm here, I'm on record. I'm on record to tell you that fuel tech sucks. <laughs> I, um, I hope this is a nitrous guy joke because I know you hate nitrous guys. It's not a nitrous guy joke. It's a fucking rant about how fuel tech sucks. Um, <laughs> uh, but it's the truth. So um, first off, it's in their name. Okay, fuel tech. So you think that they would have focused on fueling. But they fucking didn't. Okay. So um, this guy I know, he has to install fuel tech on this nitrous car. Ballsy move, but whatever. But he doesn't want to, he doesn't want to do it, but he does Bold it. Bold move, but, Cotton. Let's see how this works. Right. <laughs> so he he does it and and like not like the now I'm not gonna sit here and say that it doesn't work because it works. It's just it's it's a fucking joke. So uh he had his struggles with installation and with and then and, and what's funny about it is everybody who screams how fuel tech's tech support so good, yet he did not really necessarily have that experience. They answered the phone but they were kind of fucking dipshits. So it's like, cool, you answered the phone, but you didn't answer any of my questions. Anyway, fast forward, long story short, it's time to get this thing running, right? So he calls me and he says, man, can you just kind of help me understand this? And I'm like, yeah. I said, but they don't have a VE model. He said, what do you mean? And he's like, I explained to him, like, they don't have a VE model. He said, well, they have to. Like, they got a VE table. And I was like, right, but like, nowhere do you key in, like, how many cubic inch the motor is. It's wild how many people see like some feature, something that you can click on and they just assume that that is like, it has it, it's good. Right. No, no, it fucking yeah. doesn't have to be, right? There's like, so, so anyway, he's like, bullshit. And I'm like, dude, fuck, I'm telling you, there's nowhere to click on it, right? So he calls Fuel Tech and they tell him, no, you don't need to know that. Oh, fuck it then. Okay. So we don't need to know how big the motor is if we wanted to tune in volume metric efficiency. Screw it, right? So, um, so anyway, fuel tech, they did the right thing. They sent him a fucking tune up, a fuel tune up for like a 632, right? Now, granted, this is a 565. So whatever. So he's like, well, I guess I'll just pull like 10% fuel out of it, right? Well, you go in there and 10% fuel isn't really 10% fuel because it's doing it in pulse width. And you don't know because as pulse width, yeah, I mean, you guys know, but you know, as pulse width moves up and down, it's not like it's exact science to fuel flow value. You know what I mean? It doesn't equate to exact fuel flow number, right? So, like, it's not something that you're just used to, right? 
So 10% at 1.9 versus 10% at three and a half or four and a half or five and a half milliseconds, whatever, is a substantial difference in fuel flow change. You know what I mean? So long story short, it gets it done, gets it fired up, and it's in alpha N because it's just easier that way with this shit, (laughs) right? Because like, fuck it, right? Um, It's in alpha N. And the the guy who owns the car is coming from a carburetor that would shut off every time you free rev it anyway. So like, if it idles, it's a fucking win, you know? (laughs) They go to the dyno and he's like making pulls. And like my buddy who's doing the job, like he's not dumb. He's a smart guy and he'll figure it out. Like he don't like what he's got to do. And it doesn't make any sense what he's got to do, but he understands what you have to do, right? Yeah. So anyway, he gets it all done on a motor tune-up, and he and he's like, he came over to my place and he plugs his laptop into my TV that's here in my shop, right? And he says, "Look at this, you know." And we're looking at it, and it, it peaks at forty-two percent VE. Forty-two percent. It idles at it idles at thirty-eight percent VE. <laughs> this fucking makes perfect sense, right? Yeah. So um, I was like, well, maybe you should have just shoved 40 in the whole fucking map and saw what happened. You know what I mean? He's like, well, no, because right here it's like 27. And if you don't leave it at 27 right here, it's it's screwed, you know? So I said, there's no fucking way. I said, I said, this has got to, this is horseshit, you know? So he says, uh, well, watch this. So he, he calls fuel tech on the phone and he, uh, and he says, you know, what's up with VE? And they're like, you don't need that. He's like, well, what do you mean? Why do I have it? Like, it's here in front of me. Why don't I have VE? Like, why isn't this work? And he's like, well, no, you don't need that. And he's like, well, you remember when you guys told me I needed a 12 minus one crank trigger? Like, yeah. He's like, well, I followed Holly's instructions on setting up a four magnet and a single pulse cam, and it worked. And they're like, really? He's like, yeah. He's like, no, I couldn't fucking believe it. So, like, I'm, I'm witnessing the, 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 the bullshit of uh, great tech support. Maybe it was just that one guy. You know what I mean? Like, but I got to experience it. So I was like, man, what, what's so fucking great about this shit? So then we start doing the math and we start looking at pounds per hour in their, in their table. And um, you were just talking about dry nitrous fuel. And this is what got me on this. We look at pounds per hour and this thing's a 565 cubic inch engine. And it's using like 890 pounds per hour of fuel on gasoline, on motor, Right. It is not making that much power, right? So like we have to do the math and figure it out. So usually like when I'm doing nitrous uh, dry fuel, I don't know what you guys do, but what I do is I'll use like, if I want like I say a 12.5. 30, 30 pounds one, for every hundred rear wheel. Why do it in pounds per hour? Like pounds per hour or nitrous That's versus pounds I mean, per hour. 30 pounds per hour. Yeah, but you're doing it like hundred horsepower. I'm saying like, say we flow like 2,100 pounds of nitrous. You know what I mean? Like say like oh, a 36. Yeah, yeah. So I'm saying what I use as the adder. Like yeah, yeah. Well, you're doing it in horsepower. I do it in like pounds per hour of nitrous yeah. because like most of the stuff that comes to me, it's a fog or it's been flowed, you know, whatever. So anyway, we usually use like a nitrous to fuel ratio of uh, the same thing as our air to fuel ratio. Right. I don't know if everybody knows that, but like nitrous displaces the oxygen. It makes its own atmosphere. So you can typically fuel a nitrous engine the same way you would on motor. Does that make sense? Yeah. So like, if it's like, if it makes like peak power and say like 12, eight, we'll go to like 12.5 to one. So like if we had 1250 pounds of nitrous, you know what I mean? We would have, uh, you know, 100 pounds of, of, of fuel for that 1250 pounds per hour of nitrous. Needless to say, our math had to come out to like seven to one. So this thing, um, the math was absolute dog shit with fuel tech. Like it just, it just doesn't math. Like yeah, it's math is wonder, math. like all of that stuff is trying to calculate off of some base that doesn't exist. Right. Like where did it come from? Because like, what the is amount it? of cars that I do where we do pump gas and then we dump in ethanol and the base Holly fuel tables are, you know, under 5% difference from a 60% alcohol change. Uh, lets you know that all the math is uh, mint. Right, 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 right. Like, well, Cameron, like the VE table on methanol versus the VE table on... Yeah, we laughed on. about that because that's what we figured would happen. Yeah. Because I tuned it. We drove same, it around and right? I just, just hashed it, it out. You just you just changed the, 
the fuel type and yeah then the I BE pasted is exactly the, the VE same right and it started and i don't that we were like are we sure we swapped the team yeah we're like directly? is it this easy this shouldn't be this easy we're like oh, did yeah. i did i start i don't remember did i start it up on alcohol or e85 e85 because the methanol injectors we there was that one jumper wire that we had to put in the fuel Oh yeah, you're right. yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, then, yeah, but yeah. then after we got that in, it was like boom, fucking fired right, right up on meth. Right, and and it, holy that's shit. That's what I'm saying. Easy. Like, it's funny because like the VE table that's in like my own personal car for pump gas, and the VE table. Well, granted, they're scaled a lot differently, but I mean, if you get rid of the scaling and just look at like you know uh, under 100 kPa, yeah, the pocket. VE looks like pretty damn spot on between the two of them. You know what I mean? Yeah, and that's going from an 80 pound per hour injector to a fucking 220 and a set of 600s you know what i mean like two dramatically different fuels and dramatically different injectors and the and, and still ve looks pretty damn good on top of each other you know do you tune your nitrous uh holly stuff in ve or do you do pounds per hour like primary um, fuel table i get them to start and whatnot in ve and then i i switch them over to uh to pounds per hour um just because the majority of the time um people won't they don't know like the, the nitrous people understand pounds per hour. Yeah. That's you know what I mean? Why, kind of why I ask. I like will fist fight anybody that tries to tell me to tune in pounds per hour versus VE. <laughs> on, and I think the exception might be the nitrous stuff because it seems like once you go to the nitrous side of things, you're doing all your fueling stuff in pounds per hour. So at that point right. it kind of makes sense for the fuel table to be in pounds per hour as well. Yeah, because I mean, like, like, um, so I, I got this customer. Maybe you guys saw him. He, he, he won, um, or he like smashed the record in uh, the Dragon Drive World for all motor. His name's Ed Enzer. That blue uh, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a bad. So we bitch. wired. What's that? I said that's a bad bitch. What's funny is that's a six thirty two nitrous motor that doesn't have nitrous on it. Hmm. Wow. It's not even a dedicated like all motor setup, right? So. What's funny about that combo is that we wired it and then I wrote a tune up for it uh, on my bench and plugged it in the car and fired it up, tweaked idle a little bit, tweaked tip in a little bit, and then sent it on its way. Right. And then he just destroyed the all motor record. He doesn't know what he's doing. And I'm not talking bad about Ed because Ed will call. I was on the phone with him for last night for two hours. You know, he's like, I'm just a fucking concrete guy. I don't fucking know what I'm doing. I ain't what, touching this shit. You what know, transmission does he have? A Holly closed loop taking the Double wheel. 400. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> closed loops within like four or five. Oh, I was just joking. The 50. Right? Yeah, no, Holly I know, week. but I mean, like, yeah. So, learn so table he, looks like a, a fucking dragon's dick. <laughs> no, learn tables turn <laughs> learns off. Learns turned off, oh, and we got it limited man. to 10. percent Which is yeah. funny because, like, you're playing with fire if you're, you know, doing big big fuel corrections and stuff, closed loop corrections with nitrous stuff. Well, this so, is an all motor combo. Oh, that's a motor deal. Okay. Yeah, this is an all motor deal. I but like, so he bought the car and it was a nitrous car, but he bought the car and converted it to an all motor drag and drive car. Just left the nitrous motor. in. What does so he have to do for valve train? Like, how are they keeping that stuff alive? They're usually pretty big lift cams, right? Or yeah. Yeah. He didn't have any issues. I don't know. He's nuts though. So like, who knows? Like, he's, <laughs> I'm not kidding. It, that man's insane. If you read about him, he, him and Jimmy, the, his co-pilot, they slept underneath the car on projects every night at the racetrack. Yeah, they're crazy. Yeah, he he fucking drove that car all those miles on race gas. You know, it's here's what's real funny because it's so high compression. You had to drive it on race gas. He was insistent that he thought he had to drive it on race gas, but yeah. What was it like? 13, 14 to one. 14 to 1, but he could have drove it on pump gas and we would have knocked the wind out of it. You know I what I think, mean? I think Fuel That's Tech hilarious. is watching us and listening to us because they just put up a video that's a screw blown pro mod with a Noonan in it. Mm. The algorithm. Mm, probably. Mm. May I wonder if they're tuning it in VE? <laughs> it says 3,500 mm. horsepower. Yeah. Well, I bet. Well, I mean, if they're fucking, if their math on their dyno is anything like their fucking fuel calculation, um, you know, it's going to make 4,500. Uh, so anyway, so, uh, so anyway, so Ed goes out, smashes the fucking record on Dragon Drive, has zero fucking problems. I didn't look at the computer all week, right? Like, I didn't, I just didn't look at it, right? And, uh, is he an experienced racer in that aspect? 
he's an experienced racer for sure. He just doesn't know shit about tuning or making an engine run or anything. Or drag and drives uh, or anything. He just did it. No, no, no. He's a drag and drive guy. He's like a drag. Like, that's what he's all about. Like, that's what he's all about. But anyway, he just switched over his uh, his other car from carburetor to, uh, to EFI. We sold him all the parts. And um, uh, I literally just took the fucking fuel table and shoved it in the, uh, you know, shoved the tune up together with like different IO. Uh, and then I just increased engine size because the engine's bigger on this one in the other car. And um, he calls me. He's like, this motherfucker's fast. It, you know, 3,000 pounds. We just went seven, whatever the hell, all motor. He's all motor. That's all he does is all motor, you know? And um, he's like, I can't believe I fought with fucking carburetors for 20 years. And you know what I mean? Like, like he's like blown away. Like he hates EFI. Like he hated EFI. And now he like, he loves it. But it's a... Uh, it's funny, as long as you like kind of slow down and pay attention to what you're doing, you can make just about anything run pretty damn good with just sitting on the bench and paying attention to what you're doing. That's what I tell people. You can take the V table from any engine that runs properly and dump it into any other engine's fuel map, and it should run like within reason. Right. And, you know, once you get into like pounds per hour or milliseconds or millibar whatever these other dumb shit things that these other ecus do it it's so much different so fuel tech i actually did my first fuel tech car not that long ago and it's it feels like i'm using honda to s300 which mm. uses uses an ecu from 1992 yeah and as far as the fuel model goes and it's like you almost just have to throw something in it and see where you're at and then kind of like make your changes from there I don't know. I there were I actually filmed like a really long video on it, like kind of comparing Holly versus Fuel Tech. And then like the preface is like, I do a bunch of Holly. This is my first Fuel Tech car. So like there's probably a bunch of shit that exists that I don't know that all you people yeah. that rant and rave about Fuel Tech all the time, like you're probably going to tell me I'm an idiot because I don't know this. But for somebody that just kind of like plugged into Fuel Tech for the first time, Oh, oh, like we'll use, and you're going to find things that you like about each one as opposed to the other one. And yeah. ultimately, that's why there's so many ECUs companies that exist. Is each one that comes out, it's like, well, I can do this better than this company did. And, you know, they all try and pick and choose from all of the different ones that are out there. Right. Uh, so, like, I don't know. There, there was a few things that I liked about it more so yeah, than Holly. But yeah, there's some stuff in it that's that's pretty that's pretty slick. There is some stuff like I do like that when you do the uh, like their I don't know what they call I don't remember what they call them but like their global file and their data logs are attached to each other. Yeah, yeah. So well, that's nice. You know what I mean? So like if you wanted to send somebody an email with it, like and their config on how they look at the data is yeah. all there. It's yeah. all saved. Um, that was that was that was nice. I don't think that it, it in any way shape or form is easy to navigate i don't either yeah like the only thing that i liked about it and i don't necessarily think that they did a good job at it but let's just say for example a conversation if holly was to do the same thing and did it better but like kind of steal what they did is how you can like essentially check box like on and off like some of the more advanced stuff so like oh like get rid of it yeah so like for the guy that ha has never logged into holly before and there's 700 tables and he's about to just end his life because he doesn't know where to begin if he could just like click the box and then like all of the let's call it the advanced stuff kind of disappears and you have like the very basics and then it's like okay my car runs good with the very basics like let me check on this other box now and then like work on all the other stuff um, yeah like the concept of what they tried to do there was good but i just don't think they did a very good job at it yeah their implementation was kind of shitty but their concept was kind of good yeah. i don't like that i i didn't i thought it was very cumbersome cumbersome to navigate through i was not a fan of it in any way shape or form i i always go back to this and like this is like and, and i like i've said this before they're they're uh one of the strongest features of holly is its io ability not just its pin count, but its ability to control I.O., right? So inputs and outputs. And yep. the output side of things is really impressive to me. So 
um, and like its ability to like, you know, like you can do internal inputs. Like if you, if people start going down that rabbit hole, you start learning a lot about some shit that you can do, you know? Um, and I always go back to this. If you have a fan, a fucking cooling fan, like just about every car has got a cooling fan, right? Just about every one of them. Holly has like limitless things, ways to turn it on and off. You know what I mean? Fuel tech, you can turn it on if the engine's running and it's over X temperature, and that's it. That's your only option. And most people go, well, that's good enough. Well, not really, right? Because like if you have a legit car that drives on the street, um, you probably want to turn the fan off over 60 mile an hour because now the car's going to wind up warming up because the fan's getting in the fucking way, right? Or maybe you want to turn the fan um you know, if you wanted to use a switch, like there was a, a, a button on a keypad or something, and you say, hey, I want the fan to turn on with this button or all the automated shit for when the engine runs. You know what I mean? So, like, yep. there's just and, – and, like, you just can't do that with fuel tech. Like, just a basic – I want to turn a fan on. You know what I mean? Or I want to – what's that? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's fine. Uh, I'm tired as well, but – no, it's just that's always been my gripe is like, dude, it's like some of the most basic shit they just can't do or do well. You Sounds I mean? like I'll just stick with Holly for life then, guys. No, yeah, that's another reason why I always keep coming back to it is because of uh, all of how easy that stuff is. Just uh, the other day I tried to help somebody do a like a dial because I do the dial. I sell so much of the dial a boost stuff because it's fantastic. Uh, having a car that goes like 360 rear wheel to 840 rear wheel with a dial and that yeah. dial is offset by the flex fuel amount so if someone has e85 and they stop somewhere and they fill a tank full of 87 with their dial on the moon it doesn't try to run 26 pounds even with neutered timing table uh, right and lunch itself and all those other things, uh, offsetting this, offsetting drive-by wire, offsetting IAC, and yeah, it's hard to explain to people uh, that number of things. But I was trying to help someone out with a Megasport thing and do the dial. Uh, I used to do the dial in that 12 years ago, also, but there was no way to 3D it, and there was no way to right. make like there was just no custom table. There's custom I/O, there's programmable I/O, and there's all that other stuff. But coming back to it, I'm like, man, I can't even 3D a 5-volt input table. Right. I just, I just remember when I had Megasquirt in 2016, and you dynoed my car. And then right at the beginning of 17, you were like, I'm going to try this Holly. Because we used to be Holly haters. We were like, Holly's dumb. I don't see the point of it. We can do everything with Megasquirt. I didn't see the value. And, and then, then you, then you bought it Ortiz. for the Colorado. Ortiz and, was like, shut up and do it. And I'm like, that's a great Yeah, he's angle. like, I'll give you the dealer price. And he did it. And then Matt called him. He's like, sell all your mega squirt stuff right now. I was like, right now. He's like, he's like, I don't tell you what to do. He's like, sell it before it's worth nothing. I had uh, I think that MS... was in 2015 or something. No, it was, it was 17. Because remember, 16 was when I blew my shit up at LS Fest. And I put a six liter and it brought it up to you. And me and Dylan drove up there. And, oh, then we and had I was it. like, I'm sorry, yeah. forego all of it. Because yeah, I can yeah. tune this car remotely. Yeah, I had all the, of the data is so good. I had the the we made the race pack dash work with the mega squirt, and I had the like little micro squirt trans controller all working together, and it was just a conglomerate of crap. You're like, but I just and I was like, no, I sell it. You're like, and I sold it all, and then you were like, plug it in. Here is your tune. Go floor it. And this well, is when I, I, I was just I loaded like, a tune on a card, and you three and a half mm -hmm. it and fired because it. I didn't have the I didn't have the cable. Yeah, I didn't have the cable. You had to put it on a card, and then I just plugged it right into the dash. And you're like, "Oh wait, you can just flash it through your dash." And I was like, oh, "Okay, cool. I'll do that." I didn't know anything. Yeah. And then and you then had you an 18 like, pound wastegate spring. 18 gut springs, and you're like, "Go floor it." I'm like, "It's you're, gonna no, make 18." I can't you're do like, that. Go That's floor it. And I was not like, possible. That's... And then I yeah. went and floored it, and we looked at the log, and it was like it went 30 percent lean. A quarter second later, it went. It trimmed it all in, and then the entire pat pull was. 11 too and i was like it's that because we didn't know we, we were coming from mega square we, where we didn't know that there was an ecu that you would just floor it and it would just do it if you had the fuel system yeah. and i'm like why <laughs> didn't anyone tell us that you just have to just floor it 
Yeah, and it was like it all these people that tell you it's great yeah, like don't it's ever like, give why? you the best example in the world ever. <laughs> like ninety nine percent of getting a car right is having accurate Fuel. fueling, and this you just put this bitch to the wood, and yeah. you're like, it's incredible. Well, it's because the fueling is perfect. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. The the yeah. first car I ever did with Holly, it was a HP, and we ordered it, and before the ECU made it to me. They introduced introduced uh, Terminator X, so like <laughs> the Terminator X was ten times more than this particular car needed, but we just spent you know three times much more on a HP, and it showed up. But I installed it. I was lazy. I didn't read any instruction manuals. I just used whatever you know the instruction manual was for wiring it up. And then this guy, I told Devin this story. Go so ahead. this particular car. Uh, it came in for like a tune with HP tuners and it was like ready to go. And then it turned into like turbo 400 trans, the Holly install, like, uh, you know, trans brake, uh, bump, all that stuff. And at this, no, I'm sorry. This was this car was a power glide. At this point in time, I was so new to all this that I didn't even know that you had to like hold the trans brake button down to go backwards. So like, that's how new I was to all of it. <laughs> And this is like actually one of the very first times I had ever gone on YouTube to like try and figure something out because I didn't know how to wire any of this stuff or configure it because I didn't even know what it was. And that's when I found Devin's video on like how to program a, you know, trans brake bump and all that stuff. And then I actually found Devin on Facebook and sent him a message. I was like, hey, like, I don't ever really like look for this stuff, but you basically just saved me like 4,000 hours of trying to figure this out on my own. <laughs> and uh yeah it, it was awesome and then that particular car on that same engine what three four years later like it runs somewhere in the nines on just 93 octane he's like going out winning events like this dude like he has several cars uh some of which are faster than this one this is like his favorite car because it just it starts it runs it drives it goes to the track it like runs well and after the first car that i did with holly like considering how little amount of effort i put into like trying to i didn't have to like with am you're like what's a micro bit per second i have no idea what a micro bit per second is but like <laughs> if you've ever tuned anything before and you click on anything in holly software you can figure it out like pretty easily so well, yeah. it's all so intuitive it's yeah it's ridiculous. yeah it's, it's it's great i mean i'm sure all four of us sitting here if given a blank slate we could add you know, I want this or I want to take away that. Like you can always pick and choose things that you would change. But if Holly, I feel like if Holly was a smaller company, their, their software would be like unstoppable. But I just feel like there's so much bullshit that they have to go through now in order to make any type of a change. And I could be way off on my assumption there, but that's just kind of the way that it feels to me. I want to... Uh... I requested because I have a four LED and like, there's no real way to control line pressure, like independently. And I was like, man, I just, cause I have mine shifts soft in the neighborhoods because it still has a pressure control solenoid. So like I can modulate line pressure. And I was like, man, I wish that I could just give it one thing where I could say at trans brake input, max out line pressure or something like that and i was like i know a couple of people that work at holly and i was like is this i'm like this seems really simple from my point of view i'm not a coder or anything I'm like but could you just add a drop down and do that and like all three people were like laughing like absolutely not they would laugh if you asked them to do that i was mm -hmm. like it's not just one little thing that for me they could just be like because every you know everybody with the four ladies like well it's a delayed reverse and it just seems like it, in my mind it just seems so simple to just be like boom and then Max line pressure, but it no, they, they didn't probably care. the biggest problem with that is that they have 750,000 people all asking for individual yep. requests. Me, yeah, like me, I want this. Can you do this? Can you do yeah. this? Yeah, so I get like, it. I'm not there's, there's no way that you can keep up with all of that. Yeah, I have been, um, I have been asking for certain things for a long time, and I've been told no for a long time. So if you get your fucking press a button and you get max line pressure and it comes through on beta, I'm going to find something that's wrong with it that doesn't exist and I'm going to raise holy hell so they take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking with you. Uh, 
I'm just fucking with you. No, uh, well, Wes it, told me a way to wire it. I could wire it with like with a five pin relay and like you take. But then he's like, he's explaining how to do it, and I understand it. And I'm like, but then I'm taking apart the ten thousand dollar harness. Right, right, right. It's, it's like it's like I don't want to do that. It's do that. uh the 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 problem with uh with getting things done over there is that like as far as I know, their main focus is new hardware, right? So the main focus, I believe, that's what I'm. This is what I'm gathering, talking to some friends and whatnot over there, right? Is new hardware. That's it, right? Like they dropped Sniper Two, and the Sniper Two is pretty cool. Um, and like, of course, like marketing decided to drop Sniper Two's all of their accessories when they shouldn't have. They should have waited, right, till they were actually going to be available. But they talked about it, and now everybody's like, what the hell? I want all this shit. It's like, well, it's not available yet. So, like, their big push is to get that uh, that done as well as the next, um, I can't say, the next thing. <laughs> Allegedly. The next thing that is a hardware item, things that are hardware items, you know what I mean, to market, you know what I mean? So – as far as the software, as far as I could gather, the software side of things is people that work there that do software are, um, once they released like, you know, build 300 for V for V six and like built uh, V three for term X, they came back around. Let's do sniper two. Uh, you know, it's launched and now it's let's focus on how do we get, uh, if there's any bug problems with anything that we already have now, let's fix that. But the main focus is the next piece of thing that yeah. well, har hardware is going to make money. Software doesn't make a penny. So it makes, it right. makes sense. Right, yeah. right, 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 right. And as you can imagine, I'm, you know, I mean, you put two and two together, but like hardware, when I say hardware, I mean like big hardware, you know? So, um, so, and I'm sure that that's the push, and I would assume that that's the push, you know, gathered by, you know, the people that I talk to and what I've been told. So, um, I don't, I think that a lot of the requests that people have had for a long time will be answered, you know, when new hardware is uh, released for new things. Does that make sense? I wonder if the new hardware would plug into current harnesses. I, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just speculating. It has to, otherwise they should all buy machine guns and just blast their all of their whole nut sacks off. Like yes, it was, <laughs> it, 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 I'm sure. I'm sure that anything that they were to release, as far as uh, hardware that was the next generation, <laughs> as far as EFI, would blast their nut sacks off. <laughs> would absolutely plug into uh, what was there prior. Yes, of course. Yeah. So okay. from a hardware perspective, if something was to take place, what kind of improvements would we maybe expect to see? I don't, I don't think know. they can make any. It's too good. Oh, there's, good no, there's plenty of shit to improve on, yeah. Well, someone yeah. just said a Dominator 2 with 16 native injector drivers would be nice. Who is that? Johnny Trans in the comments. Okay, so it's not anybody I know. That, that would be nice. Okay. All right. I can't elaborate on anything. So, um, yes. <laughs> can neither so, confirm uh, nor deny. Now, there's, um, with 12,896 inputs and outputs, you would sort of think the 16 injector drivers would just sort of happen as it is. Organically. Well, you need a whole new ECU for it. Well, so here's the thing that's weird about, like, you know, I don't, again, I'm not a, like a microelectronics guy, right? But like certain inputs and certain outputs can only do certain things. You know what I mean? Like, so outputs can only do certain things and you can turn. Yeah, of course, it, it, it attaches to an integrated circuit and each leg of that integrated circuit can't do all of the same exact things. You have to piecemeal them out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, did you ever tell Joe or does Joe know about the issue we had with my dominator when I added all that stuff and that it was back feeding that one circuit? You remember mm -hmm. that Wes had to fix it, Devin, where like I had a trans line pressure sensor 
Mm. And like at Kiyan, it was maxing the sensor. We're like, what on earth is this going on? And it, I, I don't remember, but like there's one thing that we use as an input. Oh, J4B26. Yeah. Yeah, I knew he'd know yep. the one. Mm -hmm. yep. J4B26. It, it was supposed to be an input, but because of how something was configured, it made it an output, and it was outputting like five volts, and it was maxing the sensor out. We're like, what the fuck? And then we yeah. just depinned the one wire and moved it over to like another plug-in, and then now I had transline pressure. Yeah, we went to J4B24, and it fucking works fine. Yeah. I don't but know it only that only happened when the trans ICF with a 4L80 is enabled. Sweet. Yeah, so like goofy shit like that happens. You know what I mean? That's every so anybody that thinks that that they're like they just heard them like oh my god Holly blah, blah blah that happens with every single ECU manufacturer out there. They all have their quirks. There's all those like stupid little things that happen, and that's why like I think if you want to tune cars for a living, you're so much better off picking one ECU and learning all of the ins and outs and the quirks and the weird mm -hmm. things because. You just have to stay on top of it. Like they all have it. That's what we do with transmissions. I we we work on like four or five different ones. Everything else, I either buy a new one or I pass. I'm like, yep. We're just so busy with the stuff that we're good at. I love it when people call it the Turbo 350, and I'm like, I'm like, look, if I charged you what it costs to build one of these properly, I might as well have a ski mask on because you're gonna think I'm robbing you. <laughs> I'm like, well, it can't be too bad. And I'm like, legitimately, it'd be thirteen hundred dollars. Like, oh. Thirteen hundred dollars. Like we're probably gonna lose money at that too. Like, yeah, you know, uh, um, people contact us and they're like, "Hey, I'd like for you to install fuel tech." And like Laura will be like, "No, we don't do that." Well, I know that you said that you don't do that, but I'm happy to pay. Uh, you know, and, and she's like, "Well, you know, you can't afford it." You know, <laughs> for no amount of money. And then they get mad, right? And they're like, "Well, what do you mean I can't afford it?" And Laura's like, yep. "Well, it's, you really." You could not afford to pay Devin to do that. You couldn't afford it. He's not and, going uh, to want to do it. But, but right, but it, but we we stick to what we know. And um, I will admit on TV that I've been playing a lot with Haltech software. Yep, that's about it though, and <laughs> it's for a different reason than me wanting to own it. So, but Haltech software has got some pretty cool stuff in it. So. That's where you get. Sometimes you have to get ideas for what you want. I did a from bunch of hall tech cars this year, but they had running base maps. I'm in no way an expert, but I got to mess with it a bunch this year. With the Nexus? None of them were Nexus. No, unfortunately. Okay. Yeah. I just said to my cool. Aussie buddy, the, the skid factory the guys. What's that? I just said that to the Allen, a Turbo Yoda, and those guys. They run a radio show or they run a YouTube show called uh, The Skid Factory. They're Australians mm -hmm. and they do a bunch of cool car stuff. They're sponsored by Haltech and uh, mm -hmm. their latest build, they're putting an R3 in. And then Al, the last car that they built personally for Al uh, is a big block car with a Magnuson drop on big block uh, blower kit that they made and then that has a hall tech and drive by wire and all that cool stuff and that has an r5 in it so the whole car like tail lights and everything is all just the r5 right right i think i'm going to oh, yeah. get out I'm of your crazy. friends i'm not crazy about the idea of having a, uh, <laughs> a PDM. i'm not crazy about the idea of having the pdm built in the ecu oh yeah I'm yeah just, i've talked to that with like about. mike and other people are like all the high current should not be with sensors you know yeah i'm just not about it yet like i'm just not sold on it you know what i mean we're gonna salute well, cameron yeah Devin, i'll call you and talk about dongles sometime <laughs> yeah great ruin my night a different day <laughs> matt how's joe, your day going <laughs> pleasure chatting ruin. with you joe and everybody yeah. Take it easy. we'll see you guys all right see you yeah i gotta head out i gotta go to sleep yes uh, it's 1 30 so yep yeah, listen we had a great time um Good talking to you. Yeah. Everybody have a great night. And make sure you uh, read the instructions before you get a colonoscopy. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Read the instructions thoroughly, front to back, or back to front, whichever way you prefer. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, all right. I got to get out of here. See you guys. Yeah. Cool. All right, man. See you guys.